Hello and welcome to LN Audiobooks. Please subscribe and leave your suggestions and favorite novels on this channel. Thank you so much, and please enjoy the light novel. Volume 4 of Campfire Cooking in Another World with My Absurd Skill. Chapter 1, I Unlocked a Tenant in My Online Supermarket. As soon as we resurfaced from the dungeon and came back to Dolan, we were forcefully taken to the Adventurer's Guild. And since the conversation with Elrond ran long, we ended up missing lunch. The ones who raised the most fuss, the children in my party. All three of them raised a huge ruckus over their empty stomachs. Thus, mealtime would happen as soon as we got back to the inn. Since it would be properly filling and quick to make, I decided to go with Yakiniku rice bowls this time. It was perfect since I had just enough rice left, given how much fell and the others eat. First, I used my skill to buy the requisite Yakiniku tear and some daikon radish sprouts. Since there's a lot of different Yakiniku tear being sold these days it's fine to just pick your favorite. I've tried all kinds, but in the end this one was the one I liked the most. It's one that's been on sale for a long time, that I've gotten used to. The medium spicy one is best here, I think. I never get tired of the flavor, or rather, there's some kind of special thing to the sweetness of the sauce that makes Yakiniku bowls really delicious. Let's use this tear and quickly finish cooking these up. First, slice the bloody hornbull meat slightly thicker than normal. Oil up a heated frying pan and start grilling the bloody hornbull meat. Grill quickly, and once the color changes, add in the tear and keep cooking while mixing the tear in so it coats the meat. Then, mold the rice onto the deeper dishes, pile on the meat, garnish the center with daikon sprouts for color, and the food is done. It's really simple, but yeah, it definitely looks delicious. Here. As soon as I served the food to my three familiars, they all jumped on it and dug in, like they couldn't wait any longer. They must have been really hungry, it looked like they were hypnotized by the food. They'll probably finish up and ask for more right away at this rate, won't they? Next, I went with wyvern meat for the bowls. More. More, more. Just as I thought. I served them the wyvern meat yakiniku bowls. Mm. This one's meat is different. Yeah, the last one was bloody horn bowl. This one's wyvern. This tear really goes well with meat. Either one becomes incredibly delicious when paired with it. Just as I'd expect out of Fell the meat lover. He totally gets it. Of course the yakiniku tear would go well with meat. It doesn't matter how good the meat is, eating it with that tear makes it delicious, it really does. Hmm, <laughs> this must be tried with that, I think. Make the next one with earth dragon meat. Fell just told me to make the next bowl with earth dragon meat. What? You're using earth dragon meat? Then I'll take one, two Sui will eat two, yep, thought this would happen once earth dragon meat was mentioned. Everyone knows how good it is, after all. Even I want to know just how good the earth dragon meat would be mixed with some yakiniku tear. And so, I ended up making yakiniku bowls with the earth dragon meat. Here you go. When I served the earth dragon yakiniku bowls to them, they all scarfed it down. Even compared to Fel and Sui, Dora-chan, who eats very little, was keeping up with them even though he'd already had bowls with bloody hornbull and wyvern meat. But watching this is making me want to eat, too. I layered on lots of earth dragon meat coated with yakiniku tear on top of the glossy rice. It's even putting out an absolutely brutal smell, like it's just telling me to eat it, after all. A-H-H, it's no good. I can't stop my drool. I can't stop. Myself. I'm eating too. Surround some earth dragon meat with rice. Chomp, s so good. What the hell, this is way too delicious. Earth dragon yakiniku and rice are way too good together. Nope, I can't stop myself. I ended up finishing the entire bowl all at once. Ha, huh, man I sure ate. That was just the best. Truly, that might actually have been the best food I'd ever had. It was actually dangerous how good the collaboration between the Yakiniku tear and the Earth Dragon meat was. It seemed like Fel and Sui were both done in by the taste as well, and they had more portions one after the other. I still have about two thirds of the dragon meat left, but I really will have to be careful how I use it, won't I? After all, it seems like the meat will all get used up in an instant, even though it's so precious. Once everyone had eaten their fill, they immediately fell fast asleep. Leaving Fel and Dorachan in the shed, I took Sui up into my room with me. I gently placed Sui onto the futon I'd laid out on top of the bed. I still had something I needed to do. It's annoying as hell, but they'll be even more annoying if I'm late, those people, gods. Uh, can everyone hear me? When I called out to them like that, I was answered immediately. Oohh. We've been waiting, Yuri finally back.yo. I've been waiting. Food, quickly heya. 
We've been waiting for you, finally. Make with the alcohol, quickly, it looks like everyone was waiting for me while wringing their hands, doesn't it? Let's do this quickly. It's my turn. You. What the hell was that ice cream you ate in the dungeon? What are you planning, hiding something that delicious from me? I want to eat that, too. A-H-H, so the divine disappointment, Ninrir, was totally watching, huh? Well, I guess there's no way she'd let that go. A-H-H, fine, fine I get it. So the divine Ninrir wants sweets, and ice cream. Is among those. That's right. Also, the usual Dorayaki. Don't forget sure sure, I know. Opening my online supermarket, the first thing I did was cart some ice cream. Em, let's see, this and this should be good. I ended up picking a six-piece family pack of ice cream cups with three flavors in it, as well as another family pack of chocolate-coated ice cream bars. Other than that, I threw in some Dorayaki and a random assortment of candy. Next, please. I am next, this voice is Kisharl, yep. The cream from last time was worth every coin. So you know how you said that the price reflects the number of beauty components inside, right? So it's fine if it's expensive, this time, I'd like to ask for a facial lotion for ha ha ha. Just like my sister. As soon as you get hooked on this stuff you just start to look for more and more expensive things, right? Say whatever you want about beauty products and stuff, I won't get it at all. Well, it's true that there's probably better stuff inside to go along with the price, though. Opening up my online supermarket, I picked up the facial lotion from the same series that I got the cream from last time. This was also 3 silver. I guess this is still considered cute, compared to my sister. Although I can see her eventually saving up to spend it all on something really expensive. It's an online supermarket, so they've only got a certain level of price in stock, though. Next is. Yo, it's me. Of course, I want alcohol. Just like before, get me a lot of different varieties, I'm counting on you it's alcohol for Agni. Just like before I picked up a variety of alcohol from different makers for her. This time, I put more of an emphasis on foreign brands. Next. Food and sweets. I also want to eat ice cream AHH, it's Miss Ruka, huh? I don't have anything pre-made right now, so I guess I'll just buy some stuff from the online supermarket. Beef. Croquettes, ham cutlets, and also carriage, yakitori, chili shrimp, and macaroni gratin, right? Oh and also the usual white bread. And then I need to get ice cream, just like Ruka wants, right? I'll get the same as I got Ninrir. And let's just fill up the rest with some random sweets and candies. Next is the alcohol lovers combo, huh? So next is Hephaestos and Vahan, right? Yo, it's us, these two are gonna team up for alcohol, right? Just like before, fill me up with whiskey. And the war god wants vodka, I say. Vodka, yep. That alcohol, vodka, is really good stuff. It totally hits hard it's the best, these two really like their alcohol, huh? I can totally see them chugging down entire bottles of whiskey or vodka or whatever hard alcohol they want one after the other. I only sometimes enjoy alcohol and always end up going with beer or something similar, so I don't have it in me to drink the harder stuff like whiskey, though. I did try some once, but just a little already made me want to vomit. But it's probably irresistible to alcoholics. I put the whiskey and vodka the two of them wanted into the cart. This time I also made sure to pick three whiskeys from different makers and areas. As for the vodka, there aren't that many variations on it anyway, so for now I just picked up the first things I saw, one from Sweden, and the other from Russia. Good, this should do it. I checked out the cart. After sorting out what each god would get, I lined them all up on their cardboard altars. Ah, Ninrir, Miss Ruka, ice cream is a lot like ice, so if you don't keep it cool it will melt. Got it. Nod nod. Okay then. Please accept these offerings, all of you. The various items lined up on their cardboard altars all disappeared. I could hear the overjoyed voices of the gods and goddesses. Among those were some especially loud and obnoxious ones. Woohoo! It's alcohol, booze. War god, tonight's gonna be the first feast in a while, got it? I know already. Let's drink as much as we please tonight, gonna drink as soon as you get it. You guys. Just how hard were you waiting? Ha, huh, I feel so tired for some reason. Whatever, let's just sleep. Especially since I'll have to sort out all of the dungeon's drops tomorrow, too, so that's gonna be a lot of work. After having breakfast, I used appraisal on everyone since I wanted to check our statuses. They might have raised their levels quite a bit after all, 
since they destroyed so many dungeon bosses, that behemoth, and all those monsters in there. First is Fel, yeah? Name Fel age 1014 race Fenrir level 921 HP 10,003 MP 9,637 attack 9,275 defense 10,001 agility 9,839 skills wind magic, fire magic, water magic, earth magic, ice magic, lightning magic, holy magic, barrier magic, rending claws, body reinforcement, physical attack resistance, magic attack resistance, MP efficiency, appraisal, Battle Boost Blessings Blessing of the Goddess of Wind, Ninrir, Blessing of the God of War, Vahan H. Huh? I, I get the feeling that he's around 10 levels higher than when I last appraised him before the 26th floor boss. I heard from Fel that the higher you get in level, the harder it is to raise it. W. Well, the dungeon boss was a behemoth, so with that I guess it's not that unusual for his level to have raised by 10. His HP and defense have even gone past 10k. Is there even anyone left who can stand up to Fel? W. Well. I guess it's not a bad thing that he's stronger, for me, anyway. Next is Dora-chan. Name Dora-chan age 116 race pixie dragon level 160 HP 1092 MP 3223 attack 3115 defense 1057 agility 3893 skills fire magic, water magic, wind magic, earth magic, ice magic, lightning magic, healing magic, bombardment, battle boost blessings blessing of the god of war. Vahano? Dora-chan's level went up quite a bit. Probably around 30 levels. W was it really because of the behemoth? Next is Sui, and it seems like Sui should have grown the most. Name Sui age 2 months race big slime level 88 HP 1489 MP 1467 attack 1460 defense 1464 agility 1491 skills acid bullet, potion creation, cloning, water magic. Smithying Blessings Blessing of the Goddess of Water, Ruzalka, Blessing of the God of Blacksmithing, Hephaestos Oak. I it leveled up a whole lot, somehow. This has got to be because of the behemoth. All of them were S-ranked, after all. Especially the dungeon boss, the behemoth. It was stronger than Dora-chan and Sui, too. Since they defeated it, it makes sense that their levels rose a lot. Everyone's so awesome. Ahem I guess. I should take a look at my level too, just in case. I always have my status open when I use my online supermarket, but I don't really look at it, after all. Especially yesterday, since I was so busy because everyone was so hungry. I confirmed my own status. Name Makota, Tsuyoshi Makota, age 27 job victim from another world level 20 HP 280 MP 273 attack 254 defense 252 agility 232 skills appraisal, item box, fire magic, earth magic. Perfect Defense, Familiars, Contracted Magic Beasts Fenrir, Big Slime, Pixie Dragon Unique Skill Online Supermarket, Plus One, Blessings Blessing of the Goddess of Wind, Ninrir, Small, Blessing of the Goddess of Fire, Agni, Small, Blessing of the Goddess of Earth, Kisharl, Small, My Level's Gone. Up to, but as I thought it's not as much as everyone else's. W well, I basically did nothing during the behemoth fight, after all. It really couldn't be helped, I guess. I it's not like I was expecting anything, okay? KHH. Okay, it was a lie. I was actually pretty hopeful, ha ha ha. I mean, I went down to the bottom floor of the dungeon, too, so shouldn't it be fine to hope a little? Sadly, the gap between me and everyone else is just widening. As I thought, it really is best to just leave combat to everyone else, yeah. Wait, huh? What the hell? I didn't notice this yesterday. When I checked my status, I noticed that my unique skill had become, online supermarket, plus one, dot. When I touched the, plus one. You have unlocked a tenant for the unique skill, online supermarket please choose from the following WC Donald slash Fumi Yawa. W what's this? WW what the hell? By TT tenants, does that mean the stores that are inside supermarkets? I I do remember a. WC Donald's in a Fumi Ya. Gulp which one should I pick? W.C. Donald's, huh? I might want some junk food, it's been a while, but, the cake's from Fumi Ya. I looked over at Sui, who was bouncing all around me. Sui loves sweet things, doesn't it? Hey, Sui, you like sweet things, right? Sweet like pudding and cake, right? Yeah, Sui Lu of sweet things. Right, let's go with Fumi Ya. My sweet Sui's saying this, so the only choice has gotta be Fumi Ya. I touched the display on Fumi Ya.
Contract with Fumiya is your tenant, yes slash no a contract, huh? Okay, yes. You have contracted with Fumiya you will unlock your next tenant at level 40 we will be waiting to be of service again after that, the screen returned to the usual status screen. It said that the next tenant would be unlocked at level 40, but does that mean that the online supermarket leveled up, since I made a tenant contract this time? I thought it would stay the same this entire time, since it didn't seem like there'd be any real way for it to change. Tenants, huh? And I'll be able to choose more stores when I get to level 40, haha. <laughs> w well, for now I just need to confirm this. Open the online supermarket. Fumiya, Fumiya. Ah, there it is. It's right there in the menu. When I picked it. Uh. All lined up were cakes and candy packs and stuff, I was looking at everything I would see in a Fumiya store. I have something I want to ask Sui to do after this, so let's just buy a cake from Fumiya now as a reward. Fell, Dora-chan, I'll be going back to my room to sort out all the dropped items now. Understood. Do not forget lunch. Right, right. Don't forget our lunch, got it, I know already. Sui, I have something I want to ask you to do, so can you come with me? Got it. I wanted to get Sui to make that before I sorted through all the dungeon drops. I used it too much, it's already pretty much broken. It's not like I can't get it from my online supermarket, but it seems like it'll be a lot hardier if I get Sui to make it out of Mithril. And if I get Sui to make it a little bigger, I'll be able to do a lot more stuff. First, I need to get back to my room. I want to show one to Sui and find out if it's doable. I get the feeling that it's possible for Sui, though. Hey, hey, master what did you want to ask Sui? Yeah, you see, I brought my mincer out of my item box. I'd been using it heavily to make humongous amounts of ground meat, so it was already falling apart. It hadn't been that long since I'd bought it, but I was using it so much, after all. I want you to make one of these. I handed the mincer over to Sui as I said that. MMMNN, wait a little Sui enveloped the mincer, inspecting it. So, you see, I'd like it if you made one bigger than that. I used my hands to indicate something about one and a half times the size of the mincer I handed over to Sui. Bigger, huh? It's hard, but Sui will try, it seemed like it would be a challenge since there were a lot of moving parts, but Sui would do its best. Okay then, please. Handing the mithril ore over to Sui, it absorbed the ore into its body. The mincer was actually the one cooking tool I wanted Sui to make the most. It'd be nice if it turned out well. It'd definitely be hardy enough if it were made out of mithril, and more than anything, if Sui was the one making it, it should have a great cutting edge. A mithril knife would be so sharp, it would likely cut my finger straight off if I made a mistake, and the chopping board probably wouldn't be able to stand it either, so I gave up on that, but a mincer wouldn't have any downside to being that sharp. Other than that, as for cooking tools, I was considering asking Sui to make a larger frying pan as well. Currently, there were no problems, but I was thinking that it would be nice to have a slightly bigger one. I also thought a little about a pot, but if it were to get any bigger I'd have problems stirring it unless the stove got magically shorter. So with that in mind, the current half-sized cylindrical pots I had were both the perfect size and I had enough of them that there wasn't any need for me to get Sui to make. Any more. For now, it would be the mincer, and next would be a frying pan. After that, whenever I need something, I'll just have Sui make it. Still though, Sui is so skilled on top of being the absolute cutest. Let's give it lots of the Fumi Ya cakes as a reward. Now then, I need to sort out these drops. Hmm, <laughs> there's so much, though. Let's start from the skins and pelts, which I have the most of. Far Orc skins, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 123, 124, 125. Well, there were a huge number of them around. Next, I had 63 lizardmen hides. There were also over 100 ogre hides 102, to be exact. There was also a large amount of troll hides, numbering 113 pieces. Continuing like that, I continued to sort out the dropped items. Master Sui is hungry da da, sorry, sorry. Lunch, huh? Let's head over to Fel and Dora-chan. UMM, it's not done yet, ah, that's fine, totally fine. You can finish it after we eat. Got it. Okay then, Sui will start again after food along with Sui, I headed for the shed where Fel and Dora-chan were waiting. You are late. You are late, it seemed like both Fel and Dora-chan had been waiting a while, as they were both a little unhappy. Sorry, sorry. I'll make you what you want, so forgive me. Oh, if that is the case then that earth dragon dish you made yesterday would be good. Yeah, I like that idea. 
That was really good the Yakiniku bowl using earth dragon meat from yesterday, huh? They did all like that a lot. It's true that it was really good, too. I did say that I'd make what they wanted, so I guess I have no choice here. It seemed like Fel and Dora-chan were satisfied with the Earth Dragon Yakiniku bowls I'd made for lunch, and they were both currently taking an afternoon nap. After fitting in lunch, Sui and I went back to our work, me, sorting drop items, and Sui making a mincer. Still though, there really is quite a lot when I sort it all out like this, I had a dizzying amount of dropped items. Well, everyone did do their best and defeated a whole lot of different monsters. I want to finish this today, so let's work hard. Yeah, it's finally over. After continuing with the drop sorting, I'd finally finished, and this was the tally. Monster Materials Venom Tarantula Venom Sax X3, Orc Meat X56, Orc Testes X31, Orc Skins X125, Lizard Menhides X63, Ogre Skins X102, Ogre Magic Stones, Very Small, X21, Troll Skins X113, Trolls Poison Claws X48, Troll Magic Stones, Small, X23, Minotaur Meat X42, Minotaur Horns X49, Minotaur Hides X88, Minotaur's Iron Axes X15, Minotaur Magic Stones, Small, X20, Orc King Testes X1, Red Ogre Magic Stone, Medium, X1, Spriggan Magic Stones, Large, X5, Giant Killer Mantis Scythes X38, Giant. Killer Mantis Magic Stones, Small, X7, Murder Grizzly Pelts X21, Murder Grizzly Magic Stones, Large, X3, Cockatrice Meat X10, Cockatrice Feathers X7, Rockbird Meat X6, Rockbird Beaks X10, Rockbird Feathers X13, Paralyze Butterfly Paralyzing Poison Scales X42, Giant Dodo Meat X3, Giant Dodo Feathers X9, Giant Centipede Shells X3, Giant Centipede Magic Stones, Large, X2, Wild Ape Pelts X61, Killer Hornet Poison Stingers X286, Killer Hornets Royal Jelly X1, Vaja Key Fangs X1, Vaja Key Hide X1, Vaja Key Magic Stone, Very Large, X1, Manticore Fur X1, Manticore Poison Barb X1, Manticore Magic Stone, Very Large, X1, Gustav Hide X1, Gustav Fangs X1, Gustav Spine X1, Gustav Magic Stone, Very Large, X1, Giant Sand Scorpion Poison Stingers X6, Giant Sand Scorpion Magic Stones, Medium, X3, Sand Worm Teeth X8, Sand Worm Magic Stones, Large, X4, Death Sidewinder Skins X7, Death Sidewinder Venom Sacks X5, Death Sidewinder Magic Stones, Large, X3, Giant Sand Golem Magic Stone, Very Large, X1. Behemoth Hide X1, Behemoth Magic Stone, Extremely Large, X1, Behemothes, Dungeon Boss, Treasure Chest X1, Mimic Treasure Chest, Small, X1, Mimic Treasure Chests, Large, X2. Gems and the like. Ruby, Small, X1, Emerald, Small, X1, Aquamarine, Small, X1, Garnet, Small, X1, Amethysts, Small, X2, Peridot, Small, X1, Gold Ingot X1, Imperial Topaz, Medium, X1, Sapphire, Medium, X1, Alexandrite, Medium, X1, Diamond, Large, X1, Diamonds, Medium, X2, Diamonds, Small, X2, Yellow Diamond, Large, X1, Diamond Ring X1, Tanzanite Necklace X1. Magic Items Magic Bag, Small, X1, Magic Bag, Medium, X1, Ring of Magic Recovery X1, Necklace of Antidotes X1, Magic Sword Caledbulg X1. Even I was surprised once I'd finished sorting all of it. I didn't think that I actually had this much. The three of them were defeating monsters left and right, though. I basically devoted myself to collecting the dropped items, too. Man, it's like, what should I do with all this, really? Elrond did say that he'd take all of my skins and hides and stuff, but with this much. And there were more gems and stuff than I thought I had, too. Well, I can just consult with Elrond about that stuff. For now, I'm done sorting out all the dropped items. Master it's finished, oh. It is. I took the mincer from Sui. Oh, this is pretty good. I decided to immediately try it out. Let's start with some orc meat. Uh, uh. This is great. It's the same motion of putting in the meat and turning the handle to get ground meat, but the handle is so light, just so light. And it's bigger than the last one too so I can grind so much meat at once. I decided to try the bloody hornbull meat next. This one grinds easily, too. After a while just mindlessly spinning the handle. By the time I'd realized, I'd already made a huge amount of ground meat. Master how is it, A-H-H, sorry, I lost track of myself. Sui, the one you made is really good. 
just as I'd expect out of you, Sui. Thanks. Yufufufu, Sui was praised. So happy, Sui happily bounced around. Yeah, we should go have dinner soon or Fel and Dora-chan will be mad. Sui, let's go. Yeah, ah, Sui, I'll give you a good reward for making this after we eat. Look forward to it. Something good? What, it's for after we eat. Got it. Sorry we took so long. You are late. You are late, again. Sorry, sorry. I'll finish cooking soon so don't be so mad. Let's make something using the ground meat I just made, since I made so much of it. What should it be? Something that uses ground meat that I can make easily. Ah, let's make omelets with lots of ground meat in them, along with an eggplant and ground meat cheese bake. What I'll need from the online supermarket are, onions and eggplants, right? And also eggs, cheese, cans of meat sauce, ketchup, and also several large-ish heat-resistant plates and dishes. For now, let's start with the omelets, I guess. Mince the onions first. Then, oil up a heated frying pan and cook the onions. Once they've turned clear, throw in the orc general and bloody hornbowl mixed ground meat and continue cooking. Season lightly with salt and pepper, and flavor with some soy sauce and sugar. Once the juices have cooked out, put the food onto a plate and let it cool. Melt some butter in the hot frying pan and scramble some eggs into it. It will turn half cooked after it's been mixed a few times, and once that happens, add in lots of the ground meat and onions on top. Then, cover the frying pan with the plate and flip the whole thing over, and the extra large omelet is complete. W well, this should do it. Let's just say that the slightly broken egg layer adds character. After making three of them, I threw ketchup on each one before serving the extra large omelets with ground meat to my familiars. For now, eat this. The magic stove is really convenient in times like these since it has four burners and it can pump out some pretty strong heat. Well, I only used two of them, though. Thanks to that, I was able to cook a huge amount of ground meat. Eggs and meat, huh? This one is pretty good for what it is. Yeah, the eggs are gooey, which makes the whole thing taste great the eggs and meat are delicious it's great that they seemed to like the omelets. While everyone was busy enjoying the omelets, it was time to start on the ground meat and eggplant cheese bake. Cut the eggplants into half moon shapes, leaving the skin on. Then, oil up a heated frying pan, and start cooking the orc general and bloody hornbowl mixed ground meat, lightly sprinkling it with salt and pepper. Once the meat changes color, add in the eggplant, and once the water in the eggplants cooked out some, throw in the meat sauce. The meat sauce has a strong flavor, so watch out for that and adjust the amount that's added. Continue cooking while stirring the contents so that the meat sauce coats everything, and once the eggplant is thoroughly cooked through, place the contents of the pan onto a heat-resistant dish. Throw lots of cheese for melting on top of it, then bake the whole thing in the oven until the cheese is melted and is browned a little on top. Once that's done, the ground meat and eggplant cheese bake is finished. Here you go. It's hot, so be careful. Ho oh dash. Oh wow. Whoa. KH. This is good, Dora-chan was eating while desperately blowing on it to try and cool the food down. I thought I felt a breeze, and it turned out that Fel was using wind magic. To cool down his food. Hmm, <laughs> this should be fine. Let me see. Ho oh dash. It is still a little hot, but it is quite delicious. Sui must have been fine with the heat, as it enveloped the heat-resistant plate, too. It's good, especially since it has this gooey stuff on it. Also, it's got a lot of meat. It's so tasty, Sui really does love cheese, after all. A-H-H, this isn't the time to be appreciative I need to go make the next round of omelets. After making several helpings of both dishes, everyone was finally done with dinner. While I was leisurely eating my own dinner by myself. Hey, hey, master where is Sui's reward, A-H-H, right? Wait a second. M-N. What reward? Yeah, what reward? Fel and Dorachan were listening in on us with sharp ears. A-H-H, that's. Fel and Dorachan moved really close to my face. What is the reward? Yeah, what is it? No, um, hey you guys are really close. Just calm down. You see, I had Sui make me a cooking tool earlier. So it's a reward for that. I'll give you guys the same thing too, don't worry. And? What is the reward? What is it? Cake. By cake, do you mean the white fluffy sweet stuff that you have been offering to Lady Ninrir? Oh yeah, I gave Fel some cake before. And Fel liked sweet stuff more than I expected him to. He even scarfed down the red bean buns. That's right. Uh, you guys know that I have a skill that lets me buy stuff from my world, right? 
To tell you the truth, it leveled up, so I can buy more delicious cakes than what I gave you before. What? Is that true? Yeah. Sui likes sweet things, so I was going to give it to it as a reward for the cooking tool. Of course, I have some for you and Dora-chan too, so. Don't worry. <laughs> I was not worried at all. Haha, <laughs> he's acting tough even though he was so worried that he wouldn't get any. I guess I'll have to back up my words here with some delicious cake. There are even more variations than there were in the regular supermarket. Now then, what's good? Opening the menu for Fumiya through my online supermarket. Uh, let's see. You really have to go orthodox here, can't miss out on the strawberry shortcake, right? And then? Oh, they're having a match affair. But Sui doesn't like bitter tastes, so I guess that's out. Oh, this white chocolate cake and this blueberry tart look good. And I have to include Fumi Ya's custard pudding. Looking at the cakes, I ended up wanting to eat one myself, so I got a matcha shortcake for myself as well. Good, this should be it. As soon as I checked out, a cardboard box appeared, just like always. When I opened it, inside were some takeout boxes. When I opened those, I found the cakes and puddings I'd ordered, all packaged nicely with some cooling packs. Removing the wrappers and stuff from the cakes, I plated them nicely. I let some air into the container of the pudding, and that allowed it to pop onto a plate. W well, it did break a little, but that shouldn't change the taste. Here. Okay. Oh. So this is cake. Let's see. Yeah I. Everyone quickly dug in. Yes, as I remembered, this white one with the red fruit on top is the best one. So Fell likes the strawberry shortcake, huh? WW what the hell is this? This jiggly thing is amazingly delicious. Hey, give me more. Ah, Dora-chan seems like he really loves that pudding. But you should hold back from seconds, you know? Three slices of cake in a pudding is a bit too much food for Dora-chan. The cake is sweet and yummy. Sui wants to eat more and Emory, yeah, Sui really does love sweetness. You might be able to eat more, but... More than this is no good, okay? Now then, as for my choice of matcha cake, the best thing for this has gotta be black coffee. But for black coffee, the non-instant kind would be... Ah. I opened my online supermarket, found what I was looking for, and bought it. It really is nice to have a convenient skill in times like this. I bought some drip bag coffee. Just by pouring in some hot water, one can enjoy some real coffee with this. Just set it up with a cup, there. Ah, now that I think about it, when I felt like drinking some good coffee and bought a huge pack of drip bag coffee, there was something with a good way to make the coffee written on it. If I remember right, start with trickling in the hot water to first soak the entire bag in water, then slowly pour in the rest of it, right? Using some hot water I'd had saved in my item box, I followed the half-remembered instructions to make the coffee. The smell of coffee started gently wafting into the surroundings. MMNN, what a nice smell. Let's take a sip. AHH, it really is different from the instant stuff. Let's have a bit of this matcha cake now. This slightly bittersweet taste feels really adult, this is nice. And then another gulp of the coffee. AHH, so good. Coffee and cake really do go together. Hey, hey I said. Give me more of this jiggly stuff. Master Sui wants more an emory of this cake, yeah, Dora-chan, Sui, if you two could just be quiet now? Seems like Dora-chan's addicted to the pudding, and Sui's got the sugar in it and now it's all hyped up. Speaking of hype, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Ah, the divine disappointment. Ah that person, God, is totally going to demand all of their catalog, isn't she? Could I keep Fumi Yaya S.E.C.R. No, that won't fly. She's probably peeking in right now, after all. Ha, huh, so annoying. He I. This jiggly stuff, more an MO cake, ha. Huh. <laughs> Chapter 2, Sui's Special Elixir, Degraded Edition. After breakfast, Dorachan once again expressed his desire for pudding. Hey, won't you give me that jiggly stuff? I wanna eat that he must be really fond of pudding. Sui also wants to eat cake, Sui too, huh? It really does love sweet stuff. It'd be easy to just give it to Sui but if I don't properly set limits it'll just want more and more. Eating too much would be bad for its health, too. Hmm, <laughs> then I can give some to you, but I'm limiting pudding, cake, and other sweet stuff to two a day. This goes for all three of you. What, only two? Give me more, come on, only two, huh, both Dora-chan and Sui looked a little unsatisfied. But I'll have to steal my heart here, draw a line in the sand. I can bring it down to one. No, no, two is fine. Yeah, two. 
Sui is also fine with too. Good, then it's settled. I want to eat some of that jiggly stuff now what should Sui do? Hmm, <laughs> Sui wants one, too. A different cake from yesterday would be nice, give me the white one with that red fruit on top. Ah, so everyone already wants one, huh? Actually wow, fell just casually slipped in here. Well, whatever. I opened my online supermarket and picked out some custard pudding and a strawberry shortcake, as well as a strawberry mousse cake for Sui. Here you are. Duh. The jiggly stuff, Dora-chan scarfed down his desired pudding, not caring how messy the sides of his mouth got. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Fell just ate the whole slice in one bite. Yai yai. It's one Sui hasn't eaten. Ah, this is sweet and a little sour it's delicious, thank goodness the strawberry mousse cake matched Sui's tastes. Now then, since everyone's had their after meal dessert, let's go to the Adventurer's Guild. We had just arrived at the Adventurer's Guild. When we entered the building, it seemed that one of the employees had contacted him about it, as Elrond came flying over. Now, now, let's go to my room. Taken along by Elrond, we came to the usual guildmaster's room. So, is this about having us buy what you gathered from the dungeon? Yes. But you see, there was more than I originally thought there would be. Ha, huh, that much, huh? By the way, what kind of things do you have? I'll be deciding on what to buy depending on that, after all. It was just as Elrond said. Buying everything would be impossible, and even just buying all the hides and skins that Elrond wanted would be difficult for him, since there was a limit to the amount of money the guild could spend. On the other hand, I might be able to get him to buy some gemstones or magic items. I did take a memo of the results of my sorting yesterday. Ah, found it. While looking at the memo, I read out loud the entire results of our foray into the dungeon. Uh, let's see. Venom Tarantula Venom Sack X3, Orc Meat X56, Orc Testes X31, Orc Hide X125, Lizardman Skin X63, Ogre Hide X102, Ogre Magic Stone, Very Small, X21, Troll Hide X113. And such, and so on. And a necklace of antidotes X1. I was wearing the Ring of Magic Recovery, so I left it out. Also, given that the magical sword Kaladbulg is what it is, I decided to try and hide it, and only answer if asked. It was such a long list that, around halfway through, Elrin's mouth started to hang open as he took on a stunned expression. Looking at the beautiful elf's gobsmacked face, I found it a little funny. W what an incredible amount. Yeah. Everyone's really strong. They were all happily beating every monster into the ground, so I ended up picking up heaps of items. I looked back on the events inside the dungeon. You know, my party also cleared down to the 29th floor of that dungeon, and amassed a pretty sizable number of drops and magic items, too. But that doesn't even begin to reach your feet, Makota. Man, rather than me, it's more my familiars, you see. I basically just ran around collecting drops the entire time. Sadly, that's the truth. Yeah, but I did fight a little. Just a little. I totally wanted to see it. Dora Chan's gallant fighting figure. TCH. If it wasn't for that sub guildmaster, I totally would have chased after you. Ag. TCH. Elrond. It's just troubling for you to chase after me, you know? Dolan's sub guildmaster really does have his work cut out for him. Well, leaving that aside, buying everything really will be impossible, as you suspect. Thought so, given the amount. However, the demand for dungeon spawn hides is high, so we'll be buying as many as we can. I want to get all of your orc, lizardmen, and ogre hides. I also want the troll hides. Hmm, <laughs> it seems like I'll have to consult with the sub guildmaster about what we will buy. He's already mad at me since I used too much of our budget, he finished, whispering to himself. Ah, so he really did get yelled at. I know I took the money, but I did feel like this guy was using up way too much of it for his own desires. Mainly in the dragon department. I don't mind that. Ah, about that list, please ignore the meat, because I'll be using that myself. Ah, also. I took out the, small, and, medium, magic bags out of my item box. Hey, Fell. What's up with time in these magic bags? Do you know with your appraisal? After thinking about it for a while, I had the idea that the bags could be useful for cooking if time passed normally in them. My item box doesn't allow time to pass, so that's really convenient in terms of preservation, but there are some cases in cooking where that would be a bad thing. When cooking, there are times when you need to let flavors marinate, or cases where the dish would become tastier after resting for a night. Usually. To let flavors soak into meat, 
I'd poke holes in the meat with a fork to allow that to happen in a shorter time, and if letting things rest for a night would make it tastier, I would leave it on a table while I slept, so depending on whether or not a magic bag allows the passage of time, it could have quite some use for cooking. For example, I could ferment lots of miso in a bag, and once it's nice and ripe, I could move it to my item box. It would have a lot of uses. My item box was like a special ability for other world earths, so it was pretty strong, in my opinion. Thinking like that, magic bags allowing the passage of time seemed plenty possible. But since I couldn't tell with my level of appraisal, I asked Fell. Let me see, I will look at it for you. Hmm. <laughs> Both of them have time pass inside them as normal. Essentially, they are just bags that are really large. I see, so both of them allow the passage of time unchanged, huh? If that's the case, let's keep the, medium, one and sell off the, small, one. Elrond, wait, what's wrong? Looking at Elrond, I noticed that both his eyes were opened wide. You um, it can't be, but, does that Fenrir, have appraisal? Ah, I see. Wasn't it that the appraisal skill is something that basically only happens in fairy tales, that heroes summoned from other worlds get? But you know, Fel is. Ah you see, he looks like this, but he is in fact a legendary beast. Mn, what do you mean by that? I mean, you know I've seen and heard a lot, right? Fel totally became my familiar because of my food, and I know how gluttonous you are. Ah, yes, now that you mention it, you're right. He is a legendary Fenrir, something that normally no one would even get to see in their lifetimes. Right, right. So Elrin's gotten used to this sight too, huh? This backdrop of there being a Fenrir and a pixie dragon in a special slime around. So okay then, could you also ignore the magic bag, medium, from my list too? The meat and the magic bag, medium, right? Can I think of everything else as something for sale? Yes, that's fine. If this is how it is, it might be okay to talk to him about that, too. Uh, also, there's something I didn't include in that list, but being what it is, I'm kind of troubled over what to do with it, I decided to consult with him about that. You see. Hup. I brought out a heavy sword from inside my item box. When we defeated the dungeon boss, the behemoth, I got this. The magic sword, Kaladbulg. B P P H H F F F B B T T T. The beautiful elf, Elrond, did a spit take. He totally did, with water and everything. M Mama Magic Sword. If Elrond's this surprised by it, then it really is something dangerous. Still, a magic sword. I did think it might be possible, since this dungeon is on the harder side, so if you cleared it. Listening to Elrond, it seemed that there were only four confirmed magic swords in the world. The first one was from 700 years ago, when a hero chosen by the gods was said to have come back from a dungeon with it, the Magic Sword Joyuse. And, it was currently being held under rigorous security in the head church of the Rubinov faith, in the holy kingdom of Rubinov. The second was being held by the Geisler Empire, the Magic Sword Bloodgong. This sword was apparently found about 400 years ago from a dungeon in the Geisler Empire, and it seemed that, in order to get it, the Empire threw around 30,000 soldiers at the dungeon. The third is owned by the Kingdom of Marvale, the Magic Sword Balisarda. This one was said to have been brought back to the Kingdom of Marvale from some dungeon somewhere by one of their S-ranked adventurers at the time, this was 300 years ago. And so, it was said that the Kingdom of Marvale bought it off of him, and it was also rumored that the price of it was equal to the current kingdom's entire national budget. The fourth is owned by this country, the Kingdom of Leonhardt, the Magical Sword Arendite. Apparently, it was something that this country's first king brought back from a dungeon within the kingdom, not from Dolan. I wondered just what kind of person that first king was, to be able to bring back a magic sword from a dungeon, so I decided to look that up whenever I was free. And so, the magic sword Kaladbulg that I brought back would be the fifth, but I wondered something. Um, so from what you said, all four magic swords are owned by countries, from Elrin's explanation, what I was most concerned about was the fact that each one was owned by such and such country. Well, of course. When it comes to magic swords, which are said to be symbols of power, of course they would be preciously safeguarded by the country itself. What? Does that mean I have something normally entire countries would own? You um, the price. There's no way I could use it, it was too heavy, and besides, I didn't want to keep hold of something a whole country would normally safeguard. At this rate, the only choice was to have it sleep in my item box forever, though. Don't even joke. Of course I wouldn't be able to buy a magic sword when its price equals an entire country's national budget, Elrond said, exasperated. Yes, you're totally right. Sorry for asking for the impossible. 
You know you can try using it yourself, instead of trying to sell it. Fur swordsman, using a magic sword is like a dream among dreams. Man, but I'm not a swordsman, you know? And before that, just by having this, it'll become a whole thing. Um, this sword is too heavy. I could never use it. Huh? Really? Can I try picking it up? In response to Elrin's request, I said yes, and Elrin took Kaladbulg out of its scabbard and took a stance with it. You're right, it's got quite the substantial heft. Although it's not like I can't swing it. Elrond stood up and lightly swung Kaladbulg. So you'd try swinging it, Elrond. As expected of a former S-ranked adventurer. Even though it's so hard for me just to pick it up. Also, it seems like it's made of adamantite. BPPPHHBBT. Uh. Elrond did another spit take. AAA adamantite. Apparently, that's what appraisal says. So, adamantite is something to be surprised over. I had thought that adamantite was probably a rarish expensive metal, a lot like mithril, since that one exists in nature too. Adamantite is a legendary metal, said to be unable to be damaged by anything, ah, so it's like this here, huh? Damn, I really should have let this sleep for eternity in my item box. W well, it's not like I can use it, so I'll just leave it in my item box for a while. That might be for the best. Taking Kaladbulg from Elrond, I shut it in my item box. Yep, it's decided. The magic sword Kaladbulg sleeps in my item box forever. W well, I might decide what to do with it eventually. I have no idea when that'll be, though. Ah, right. There's something I need to tell you. Makota, you've risen to A rank. Wha? Eh? Huh? Wasn't I C ranked? Why am I suddenly A ranked? Huh? A rank. Yes. There's no way we can let you, who conquered a dungeon, stay at C rank, after all. So it was. Thus, my silver C ranked card that I'd been using until now was confiscated by Elrond. Without having any input in the matter, a shining golden A rank card was pushed into my hands. They say that I conquered it, but I didn't really fight at all, I just let everyone else do all the work. So, when will you decide what to buy? I'll be consulting with the sub guild master, so I want to have it decided by around the day after tomorrow. I'll have to hurry and report this to the main adventurer's guild branch in this country, as well as the palace itself, after all. So much work. Elrond, your real feelings are showing. All over the place. Apparently, he had to give a detailed explanation on how the dungeon was conquered. Normally, it would be best for the adventurer who conquered the dungeon to come with me, but, after saying that, Elrond shot me a quick, furtive glance. No, um, I'm not great with that stuff. If possible, I'd like to refrain from going. Hard pass on having to meet higher UPS from the guild, much less. Going to the royal palace. I'll just get worn out from meeting them. Also, I don't want them to pry with any weird questions and find out that I'm from another world. Thought so. I heard that you don't really want to be forced into anything, and then a message came from the palace saying not to force you. Thank you, oh thank you, lord. Really, it's great that this country's king is so quick on the uptake. Oh well. I guess I'll just be going to the capital by myself. If you were with me, Makota, that would mean that Dorachan would be with me as well, so the trip would have been fun, though. Really, I'd rather take a long holiday or something, and tag along with you, Makota, but... When I submitted my request for a break, the sub-guildmaster went and ripped it up. Don't you think that's just cruel? And he said, if you're going to keep doing whatever you want, guildmaster, I'll boycott this job, got it. He's totally threatening me. No, I mean, you're the cruel one for not doing your job. No matter how you think about it. Sub-guildmaster, I feel your pain. W well, there's still the matter of buying your dropped items and stuff, so I'll still be in town, and if I get any more dragons, I'll bring them here, so. When I said that, Elrond banged his hands on the table and shot towards me. You're not lying, are you? W wait. You're too close. Of course not. Or rather... This is basically the only place that'll butcher a dragon. I don't know if I'll ever get any more, but if I do I'll totally shut it in my item box and bring it over. It's a promise, got it. Elrond had a firm grip on my shoulders as he said that, and I nodded fervently, many times in response. Th then, I'll be back the day after tomorrow, when you've decided what to buy. Leaving those words behind, I put the Adventurer's Guild behind me. It was starting to feel like if I stayed any longer, I'd get dragged into a long spiel about dragons by Elrond, after all. After leaving the Adventurer's Guild, I had Fel take me outside the city to somewhere with no people. 
Okay then, I'll start brushing. We had come to take the bath that we couldn't indulge in the entire time we were in the dungeon. I also decided to clean Fell up along the way, since he also got quite dirty in the dungeon. In order to prepare for that, I had to first give Fell a thorough brushing. Does this have to happen? Fell asked, while I carefully teased out all of his tangled fur. No matter what. You know, the dungeon had swamps and deserts and stuff, so you're really dirty right now. Amen. I do not think I am that filthy, but... No no, you're filthy. Just touching you feels dusty, and see? Your feet are caked in mud and it's all in your fur, I said, while brushing him down to his toes. In response, Fell put on an unhappy face. So he hates being washed that much, huh? But he's all dusty, and I think it'd feel good to get clean. Good, the brushing's done, I thought, after paying special attention to the matted fur on Fell's feet. Suey, I'll make the hot water, so can you make some cold water? Got it dot mn, there is no need for hot water. Cold water is fine, hurry up. I was going to prepare hot water, but apparently Fell was impatient to get it over with. But the water will be cold, won't you catch something? The weather was currently neither hot nor cold, but with water in the mix. You fool. What do you take me for? As if that would happen just by soaking in some water. Also, I have the goddess Ninrir's blessing. I will not get sick. More importantly, if you are going to do this anyway, at least make it fast. A-H-H, so he's saying that since he's bad with water, and if it's going to happen anyway, at least don't use up time and do it fast, huh? If that's the case, let's just get this over with using cold water. What, you're using cold water? Even though hot water feels so good. Well, if Fell finishes up fast, that just means we can get in earlier, though that was Dora-chan. It seemed like Dora-chan took to baths like a fish to water. Right? Would finishing faster not be good for you, too? Since that is the case, hurry up and finish this. Fine, fine. Then I'll just use water to wash you. Very well. Sui, can you spray water on Fell? Are you sure? Indeed. Sui, do it. Got it, Sui sprayed water at Fell. After washing off the filth and muck, I had Sui stop spraying water once Fell was thoroughly soaked. Then, just like when I washed Fell before, I still had some of the same shampoo left over, so I used that. First, start with the back. Hey, use more power. Sure, sure. I put more power into it and washed Fell vigorously. Use a little more power there, as well. Fine, fine. So it's itchy here, too, huh? I scrubbed and scrubbed, powerfully washing Fell. Keep going there for a little. Ah fine, fine. A little longer here, right? Scrub 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 although he said to do it quickly, as soon as I started, he's been saying things like, a little longer here, or, a little more power there, a lot. Following those instructions, I thoroughly scrubbed every nook and cranny. Good, this is fine. Sui, start spraying fell again. Oka why, Sui once again sprayed water at fell. The foam and bubbles that had lathered up on Fell were washed away. Fell, we're washing your face, too. MNN, do it fast. Sui, lower the power a little and spray it like rain on Fell's face. Can you do it? Yeah, got it. A gentler shower of water rained down on Fell's face. Now then, let's clean off Fell's face. Good, Fell, you're fine. Mua, finally. Fell, W, wait a second. At least wait to do that until we're out of range. Fell looked like he was about to start shaking himself, so I barely managed to stop him in time. Dora-chan, Sui, and I all evacuated from Fell's vicinity. Okay, it's fine. As soon as I said that, Fell started shaking furiously. Just like that, after shaking off the water, Fell produced a warm wind and dried his body. Well then, let's take a bath. Yeah. Yeah, while I was preparing the bath, Fell, who had already completely dried himself, talked to me. I will be going hunting while you all take a bath. Hmm? That's fine, but I just washed you, so be careful not to get too dirty. Mn, I know already. If you're going hunting, birds, like rock birds, and cockatrices, would be good. I don't have much of that meat left. Okay then. Ah, also, this. I produced the magic bag, medium, from my item box. It was shaped like a shoulder bag, so it'd probably be easy for Fell to carry. A magic bag? Yeah. It'd be more convenient for you to carry around if you catch a lot, right? Hmm, <laughs> that is true. Then I will borrow it. After saying so, Fell quickly ran off. Of course, I didn't forget to have him put up a barrier. Hui, <laughs> this feels good. Yeah, this is the best. 
So go OD after quickly finishing the preparations for a bath, Dora-chan, Sui, and I were all having a good soak. Dora-chan and Sui were floating in the water, relaxing. I was also stretched out in the tub, relaxing. For the first time in a while, both my body and head were cleanly washed and feeling refreshed, baths really are great. As a reward for clearing the dungeon, I put in a slightly expensive bath powder that was mixed with carbon dioxide, and it somehow feels like it's gradually heating up my body, taking away all the exhaustion. It smells good, too. Dora-chan and Sui leisurely enjoyed their bath time for a while. I guess it's about time to get out now. Yeah dot. Fiany after getting out of the bath and changing, I gave Dora-chan and Sui some fruit-flavored milk, while I drank some coffee milk, and then, we rested. He, LP me. Yeah. <laughs> I heard children's voices, they were getting closer and closer. I saw the owners of those voices. They were a boy and a girl, around 10 years of age. Iris, run away by yourself. No. Not without you, big bro. There were five orcs chasing after the boy and girl. Dora-chan. Sui. Sure. Leave it to me. Sui will do it. Dora-chan flew off immediately, and Sui set up its tentacles like a rifle. DZSSHH 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 BOOBOO Dora-chan, clad in fire magic, pierced through three orcs, while Sui used acid bullets to bring down the other two. He why, are you two alright? When I ran and approached the two children, I found them staring dumbfounded at the defeated orcs. Huff, huff. The orcs are already dead, you're safe. Rather, where did you two come from? Setting aside that this was a forest near the city, this place specifically was pretty remote, so it was odd for children to be wandering around here. Could it be that there was an adult with them? When that thought came to my head, the children started crying. It must have been a really scary experience, getting chased down by orcs. Ugh. Sniff, the wahoo. Ugh. You. You eat. While I was panicking, wondering what I should do, Fell returned. What is with these brats? Looking at Fell, the children started crying all over again. Ah, eh ah, you know this one is my familiar, so it won't do anything. You're safe. Hey. What do you mean by this one? Huh. When Fell shouted a little, the two of them gave a start, crying even harder. Ah oh, jeez, stop with that loud voice. Just shut up a while, Fell. In order to calm down the two crying children, I kept repeating things like, You're safe now and, Fell and the others are my familiars, so they won't do anything. After somehow finally managing to calm them down, I listened to their story. What are your names? Sniff, I'm Daryl, and this is my younger sister, Iris, said Daryl, sniffing. He was an intelligent looking boy with brown eyes and hair. Daryl's little sister, Iris, who had brown hair just like her brother, worn in braids, and who seemed a little shy, was still clinging onto her brother's arm. How old are you two? I'm ten years old, and Iris is eight. Just as I thought, they're around ten. Why are children like them here? Did you come here with an adult? In response, Daryl shook his head no. What? Just you two. When I asked that, Daryl nodded. You came by yourselves? From where? Dolan. What? All the way from Dolan. I had completely taken to the idea that they were from a nearby village, so I was honestly surprised. Especially since it would take around three hours to get here from Dolan on foot. And when it comes to children's legs, it would no doubt take even longer. Looks like there's some sort of reason, here. Why did you come all this way into the forest by yourselves? Did you have some sort of reason? Please, tell me. If you'll give me one of those orc bodies, I'll talk. Since Daryl said that, of course I agreed, and he started talking. Right now, Daryl and Iris were living with their mother and Dolan as a family of three. Their father was an adventurer, but when Daryl was six, he dove into the dungeon and never returned. Apparently, their mother was a skilled seamstress, so thanks to that they were able to live as a family. However, around two weeks ago, their mother collapsed. After having her looked at by a temple priest, they also had him give her healing magic. Thanks to that, she became better for a time, but after a while, she once again fell ill. According to the boy, the priest said, the only things we can heal here are light, non-serious illnesses, and if her sickness is this powerful then you can't hope for recovery unless you go to the capital and have her healed by a high-ranking priest. Since they'd heard that, in order to have that happen, they would have to offer an appropriately large sum of money, the two became desperate to earn some, and started gathering what herbs they could, coming to this forest. Sniff, I made sure the two children wouldn't be able to see me when I sniffled. So brave, what good children this Daryl and Iris are. 
I'm super weak to this kind of thing. What were you two doing for food? We did chores in the city, and somehow got food with that. Chores wouldn't pay that much at all, and these two are good children who think of their mother, so these two would probably use even that pocket change for her. So that would mean they may or may not have food to eat on a given day, huh? You guys are hungry, right? We'll be eating food in a little bit, so let's eat together. Food, huh? Good timing, I am just about hungry. I was getting hungry, too. Suey too, ah, I wasn't talking to you guys, though. Well, I'll make your portions too, though. What would be good for Daryl and Iris? Rather than unfamiliar rice, using bread which they'd eat regularly would be better, right? If that's the case. Let's make that. I would be using teriyaki to make some teriyaki burgers. With this dish, I'd have enough ingredients just in my item box, so I wouldn't have to use my online supermarket in front of those two, either. With that decided, the first step is to bring out the magic stove. When I brought out the magic stove from my item box, both Daryl and Iris widened their eyes in surprise. I have an item box too, but I wouldn't be able to fit something that big, Daryl whispered. Oh, so Daryl has an item box. If that's the case, won't he have a lot of job options when he grows up? Iris doesn't have one. Sounds nice, said Iris, who was sulking a little. Yeah, honest children like this really are the cutest. Well then, let's get to cooking. First, grill the dungeon spawned cockatrice meat until its skin is crispy, then wipe off any excess fat from the frying pan using kitchen paper. Once that's done, use the store-bought teriyaki sauce on the meat, and after simmering it for a while and mixing the sauce so it coats the meat evenly, the chicken teriyaki is done. Have some black bread, and load up one side with a bed of shredded cabbage and some mayonnaise. Lay the cockatrice teriyaki on top of that, and close the burger to finish the dish. Along with that, I poured some orange juice into a cup and served it to Daryl and Iris. Here you go. They hesitated at first, but when I said, if you don't eat, I'll have my familiars eat you, they started scarfing down the food. They must have been quite hungry. So good. Big bro, this is delicious. This drink is also sweet and good. Yep yep, eat as much as you want. Now then, I've still got food to cook. After cooking up a huge portion of teriyaki burgers for my three familiars, I served it to them. Seeing that, Daryl and Iris were surprised. Why, everyone eats so much. Yeah. All of them are big eaters. More importantly, are you two done already? I have more, I asked them, but it seemed that the two of them were. Full. Hamburgers using black bread is really filling, after all. If that's the case, what about drinks? Iris must have taken a liking to the orange juice, and seemed like she wanted more. However, she hesitated, trying to decide if it was okay to ask for more. Here, don't hold back you two keep drinking. Having said that, I poured more orange juice into their wooden cups, and the two children happily started drinking it down. After giving Fel and Sui several more helpings, the meal was finally over. And with that, Daryl and Iris once again shrank into themselves and started to act formal. Thanks, mister. Mister, thanks. M.M. mister, huh? I'm a mister. What is this? It's like I'm happy to be thanked, but also not happy at all. And correcting these two right now would be. Mister, huh? From what I'd seen of this world, it seemed like once a person reaches 20, they'd probably already have one or two children. Thinking like that, I guess being 27 would count as a mister. K.H.H. That's a little sad. B.B.F.F. Seems like you are a mister, too, BBFF. Hey, Fell. Don't laugh. Actually, huh. So he was holding a grudge. Well, at the very least, you don't seem like a big bro or anything Dora-chan, are you saying that I'm old and decrepit? I'll have to talk to you about that later, then. Mister. Master is master dot. Yeah, Sui, only you can be my healing. Mister, you're an adventurer, right? Daryl asked. Why yeah? Kind of. Being called a mister, it just kind of stings. How much money is an orc body? Will we be able to go to the capital to see a priest with it? Ah, this is about getting a high-ranking priest from the capital to come over, huh? I feel a little sorry for them, but no matter how you think about it, one orc won't be nearly enough money. Just one orc would be, a little impossible. Then, how much would it be? Would all five of those be enough? If that's the case I'll do anything, so give them to me. Saying so, Daryl bowed his head. When he did that, Iris followed suit. If handing over five orcs would actually help them, I'd happily do it, 
but I don't think five orcs would be enough to get a high-ranking priest to come over from the capital at all. Just, this might be hypocrisy, but if I can save them, I want to. It wasn't like I thought I could save anyone and everyone, but it must have been some sort of fate to have met Daryl and Iris here, too. I want to save them, but what should I do? I thought about giving them one of Sui's potions, but when I gave it some more thought, I remembered that the only things it worked on were wounds. Given that, and the fact that I hadn't tested it against illnesses. When I asked Daryl and Iris how their mother was doing, it seemed that her condition was bad enough that she couldn't get out of bed. If the sickness is that bad, then I feel like it won't work unless it's an elixir or something. Hmm, what should I do? Ah. Daryl, Iris, I haven't introduced you to my familiars yet, have I? This fluffy one here is called Fel. And, this one is Dorachan the pixie dragon, and this slime is Sui. Can you get along with everyone? They won't get angry if we touch them. Daryl fearfully asked. They won't. Right. As if I would get angry over something like being touched by those whelps. There you go. Fel can talk, so if you have something you want to ask you can talk to him. Dora-chan, you're fine too, right? When I said that, Dora-chan landed himself in front of the two. Daryl fearfully reached out and touched Dora-chan, who was in front of him. As soon as he realized nothing would happen, Daryl started stroking Dora-chan over and over from his head to his back. Iris seemed to have taken a liking to Fel, as she was poking at Fel's back. When she realized it was okay, she started stroking Fel's soft fur. Fel's fur is fluffy and smells nice. Iris seemed to be enjoying Fel's fur a lot. While watching this happen, I quickly started a telepathic conversation with my three familiars. Fel, Dora-chan. I have something to do with Sui, so keep Daryl and... Iris occupied. I don't think it'll take that long. Sui, I have something I want you to do, so can I have you come with me, good, let's leave this to Fel and Dora-chan. Along with Sui, I separated from everyone a little and came to a different spot in the forest. Sui, can I get you to do something for me? What, you see, I took out two things from my item box. The first one was some earth dragon blood. The second was the earth dragon's liver. From what I remember Elrin saying before, a dragon's blood and liver can be made into a panacea of sorts. With that in mind, I thought that it might be possible. I was hoping that, by having Sui take in the dragon's blood and liver, and adding its own special potion on top of that, Sui could make some sort of new medicine. Of course, making an elixir would be a dream among dreams, but I had a hunch that it would at least make some sort of potion that would work on illnesses, too. You see, this is the earth dragon's blood and liver. These can make medicines that work on a lot of illnesses and wounds. So Sui, can you use this with your ability to make medicine to make something that will cure illnesses? What do you think? Hmm Sui doesn't know, but Sui will try I see, I see. You'll try, huh? Thanks, Sui. Okay then, here, take this and this. Yeah, I handed Sui a bottle of the Earth Dragon's blood and some of the Earth Dragon's liver. Half the liver was bought by the Adventurer's Guild, but even so, it was quite large, so I cut it into four pieces and handed one over to Sui. Sui, taking in the Earth Dragon's blood and part of its liver, said um, hmm, while it was doing something inside its body. I waited patiently, watching Sui work. After about five minutes, Sui raised its voice. It's done. I handed over one of the empty bottles that I had left over in my item box. To Sui. Well then, can you put it in here? Yeah, got it. From the tip of Sui's tentacle dripped a clear, reddish-purple solution into the bottle. Yeah, once you fill the bottle, it's fine. Master there's still around two bottles left. Sui, having just filled a bottle, told me that much. Then can you put it in here, too? I handed Sui another two bottles. Just like that, I got three bottles filled with a clear, reddish-purple liquid. For now, I should just appraise it, right? Sui's special elixir, degraded, Sui's special elixir, degraded. Since it is degraded, it will not extend one's life. Works on all illnesses. BBPPHHFF. Cough 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 hmm? Master, are you alright? Seeing me choke in surprise, Sui approached, worried. Cough, I I am fine. I'm fine, I said like I was trying to convince myself, while I stroked Sui. It made an elixir. Sui, wow. It's degraded, but it's still an elixir. It even says it works on all illnesses. It said, it's degraded, so it won't extend one's lifespan, but does that mean that a real elixir would do that? W what amazing medicines, elixirs are. I never thought that I'd be able to make one. W well, there's no doubt that it cures illnesses. F for now, we've succeeded. 
Good, now Daryl and Iris's mother will be fine. Right, since she's recovering from an illness, let's make that for her, too. By that, I meant an easy on the stomach egg porridge. Egg porridge would use only stuff bought from the other world, but... It will be fine if it's to cheer up Daryl's and Iris' mom, who will just be recovering from an illness, I thought. Suey, can you wait a little? I want to make something for Daryl and Iris' mom to eat. Yeah, sure dot I have the seasonings, and I should have some rice left over. Good, this should be enough for a portion for Daryl, Iris, and their mom. All I need to do is buy eggs with my skill, good. Put in a large than normal amount of water and the rice into a pot, and boil until the pot burbles. Then, add in some granulated dashi, and some soy dashi. At this point, add in some beaten eggs and stir a couple times before turning off the heat. Then, taste it, and if the taste is too thin, feel free to adjust it with more soy dashi or salt. Rather than rice porridge, which uses more water, I tried making it more like rice gruel, since that was my preference. Good, this should be fine. The pot is something I used before, so I can just hand it over to Daryl as is. Daryl did say that he has an item box, after all. Let's tell them to heat it up and eat it if his item box allows the passage of time, and it cools down. So let's go back after I put this magic stove away. Sorry for making you wait dot. You relay ought. Mn, finally, huh. Oh my. Daryl and Iris must have gotten tired, as they were napping while leaning on fell. Dora Chan was circling above them. I guess it makes sense, since after walking all this way, they then got chased by orcs too. Well then, let's go back. Indeed. Yeah dot. Sui, get inside. Yeah, when I opened my bag, Sui slipped inside. I didn't want to wake the two up, but if we didn't return soon, it would get dark. Daryl, Iris, sorry for waking you up. We're going back to town. I gently shook their shoulders to wake them up. I have to hand over the finished Sui's elixir and the egg porridge I made, too. MNN. NNN, Daryl and Iris rubbed their eyes, still sleepy. Daryl, Iris, I have some medicine to make your mother better. When I said that, the two opened their eyes wide. Mister, is that true? Mister, mom will get better. They desperately clung to me. The two of them must love their mother so much. Yeah, I remembered that I should have something like a medicine for illnesses, so I tried looking around my item box, and I found it. When I said that, the two jumped up, overjoyed. But, I won't give it to you for free. When I said that, the two of them froze in place. Iris looked like she was about to wilt to the ground and cry. Daryl, you have an orc right now, right? Ah, yeah. Earlier, I handed an orc corpse over to Daryl so he'd talk, so right now he would have one. Want to trade it? The orc for the medicine. That's right. How about it? When I said that, Daryl suddenly grew a bright smile as he replied, Yeah, of course. Okay then, here's the medicine. I think it'll work on your mother's illness. Give it to her as soon as you get home, okay? Also, here's something extra. I think it'll be easier for your mom to eat, since she'll just be recovering from a sickness. I made some for you two, too, so eat it together. Saying so, I handed Daryl the bottle of Sui's special elixir along with the pot I made the egg porridge in. Mom will get better with this, right? Yeah. She will. When I said that, Daryl's eyes watered up. It was probably a mix of happiness since his mother would get better, and also remembering how hard it was until now. Daryl. You have an item box, right? If that's the case, make sure to put these inside. Daryl nodded with a teary face, and he obediently put both of them into his item box. If the food gets cold, heat it up a little before eating it. It's in the item box, so it won't get that cold. It's fine. I replied, I see. And Daryl wiped his eyes on his sleeves and said, Thanks, mister, in a small voice. I messed with Daryl's hair in order to hide my happiness. Big bro, will mom get better? Having watched the exchange between Daryl and I with a confused and worried face, Iris asked her brother a question. Yeah, she will. I got a medicine to fix her sickness from this mister here. Really? Yeah. So mom will be happy like before. Thanks, mister. Iris bounced around, looking truly happy. Okay then, the two of you, let's go back to Dolan. Fell, can you give all of us a ride? <laughs> Nothing will change just by adding those two whelps on top of you. Yeah, yeah, is that so? Well then, I'm counting on you. I climbed up on Fell's back first, and I placed Iris in front of me, while Daryl got on behind me. Daryl and Iris were both excited to be riding Fell. Iris, make sure you hang on to Fell properly, okay? 
Daryl, make sure to hang on to me so you don't fall off. In response, the two of them said that they got it. Fell, go slower than usual, okay. I know already. Then, Fell started moving towards Dolan quite a bit slower than normal. Even so, we reached Dolan a good sight faster than if we had walked. I showed the guard my adventurer's guild card, while Daryl and Iris showed their citizenship cards for the town of Dolan, and we were let in. Daryl, Iris, where's your house? It's not that far from here. It's close to the wall. Near the wall? So we're all the poor live, then. Should I see you there? No, it's fine since it's so close. I see. After a while, Daryl spoke, looking straight at me. Mister, I'm not gonna become an adventurer. Rather than an adventurer that can't steadily make money, I'm going to be a merchant that can. When I become 13, I'm gonna go to the merchant's guild and become an apprentice to a merchant in town. I have an item box, so I think I'll be able to go anywhere. So, one day I'm definitely gonna open my own store. And then, I'm definitely, definitely, going to make my mom and Iris happy. Mister, one day I'm going to repay this favor. Will you wait until then? It was a declaration of determination from Daryl, who was only 10 years old. Even though he was bawling his eyes out from being chased by orcs, now he was looking a little more like a man. Sniffle, why yeah, I'll wait, as long as you like. A 10-year-old kid just said that he'd definitely make his mom and little sister happy. Oh this is no good, I'm super weak to this kind of thing. Mister, really, thanks, said Daryl. Thanks, mister. Iris said the same. Then, the two walked towards their house, hand in hand. Do your best, Daryl. You too, Iris. I whispered to the backs of those two. Sniffle, ugh. Ha, huh, what are you even crying about? Sneeaflee, I'm not crying. I just have dust in my eye. The hell are you saying, Fell? This is, you know, dust in my eye. That's all. Jeez, don't cry. You know, men shouldn't cry unless it's something really big Dora-chan, didn't I just say that I just have dust in my eye? Sniff look at you breaking down like that. I can't believe you're trying to pass this off as dust in your eye shut up, Dora-chan. You should have some humanity at times like this and just leave it at that, right? Hmm? Dora-chan's not a human. It should be Drago Nighty? Well, whatever, at any rate he should read the atmosphere here and leave things alone. Daryl, you make sure you become a great man and support your family, you hear? Man, Daryl, and Iris were such good children. Filled with warm and fluffy feelings, I returned to the inn along with Fell and the others. Gossip, Daryl and Iris, after the fact. We're back. Dot. Mom was asleep when we got home. Even though when she first got sick there were times when she was awake, Recently she was asleep all the time. Big bro, hurry up with the medicine. Yeah. I called out to my sleeping mom. Mom, I have medicine. Open your mouth and drink it. My words reached mom, and she opened her mouth just a little. I poured in the medicine that I got from that man little by little so she could drink it. After getting her to drink the entire bottle full of medicine, mom's body started shining white. Big bro. Iris, surprised, grabbed onto me. It's fine, it's gotta be. I didn't know why, but I trusted the medicine that man gave us. If it's his medicine, it'll definitely work. While hugging onto Iris, we waited for the shining to stop. M.N. Daryl? Iris. Mom. Mom woke up. Daryl, Iris, sorry for not helping. Sniff, M. Mom. The wah. Iris must have been really relieved to see her mom awaken, since she hugged onto her and started crying. And as soon as she got tired, she fell asleep. Today, we walked quite a ways away from town into the forest, and got chased by orcs, so she must have been really exhausted. Oh my, Iris is already asleep. Mom, how are you? Yes, I'm fine already. I still feel a little sluggish, but other than that there's nothing wrong. It seems like I'll be able to go to work again by tomorrow. You're still recovering, so you have to keep resting tomorrow. Oh, right, can you eat? Yes, I'm actually feeling kind of hungry. I put some of the food that that man gave me into a bowl and handed it over to mom. Oh my, such a nice smell. What is this? The person who helped me today gave it to me. Eat it before it goes cold. Mom ate slowly, but did finish the entire bowl. The last time I saw her eat so much was a long time ago. If she can eat like this, she's probably fine. I felt relief from the bottom of my heart. Iris and I will eat later. You stay in bed mom, you're still recovering. After tucking my mom in, I picked up the sleeping Iris and carried her to her bed. Mom got, better. That's great, really. 
SNRF she was so relieved she started tearing up. Mom, who got sick and lost her appetite, just finished off a bowl cleanly. If she can eat that much, she's already fine. It's all thanks to that man. Since he gave us that medicine, Mom got better. Even like this, I wasn't stupid. I knew just how amazing that medicine that man gave us was, since it was enough to heal my mom, who was that sick, in one shot. Even though we were told that only a big shot priest from the capital would be able to do it. He also saved Iris and I, who were being chased around by orcs. Even so, I. I was desperate, so I said some rude things to him. Still, he even treated Iris and I to some food. He was a strange man with a huge wolf and a small dragon and a slime, but he was really kind. That was why I wouldn't tell anyone about the medicine. And I'd tell Iris to keep it a secret, too. And mom didn't seem to remember drinking the medicine, since she was barely awake at the time. I would keep quiet about the fact that that man gave me medicine. After all, that medicine was amazing, and probably really, really expensive. That man is kind, and gave it to us for free because we needed it. But what if everyone knows that that man has an expensive medicine? There might be people who attack him to try and take the medicine by force. I know there are those kinds of bad guys out in the world. My friend Stefan's dad found a treasure in the dungeon and turned it into money at the Adventurer's Guild, and when he was going back home, some of those bad people attacked him and he died. I've also heard other similar stories. That's why I won't tell anyone about that man. I don't want any bad people to go for him, after all. Just like I said to that man, I'd definitely repay the debt myself. Someday, I'd definitely have my own store, and then I'd definitely, definitely make mom and Iris happy. And then, I'd also pay back that man. Thanks, mister. Really, really, thanks. Chapter 3 the strongest sub-guildmaster. The next day, we had come to the Adventurer's Guild. I went in order to have them butcher the five orcs from yesterday, as well as what Fell had caught when he went hunting. The employees must have contacted him, because Elrond came over immediately. Makota, we're still discussing what we're going to buy. I'll try to finish it by tomorrow somehow. Ah, that's not it. I came here for something different. Yesterday, Fell hunted some more monsters, so I came to have them butchered. Inside the magic bag that I'd handed Fell yesterday were four cockatrices, a rock bird, and also some huge ostrich-like monster named a giant tailpo. I definitely need to stock up on more bird-type monster meat, since all I have on me are the drops from the dungeon. A-H-H, I see. If that's the case, I'll take you there. No, no, it'll all fit in the window here, so it's fine. No, no, don't feel like you have to hold back on me. Now now, this way. With those words, I was led to the usual storehouse by Elrond. I mean, it's not like I have that many things to sell, and it's just orcs and cockatrices and stuff, so it's not really special either, the sales counter would have been fine. Unlike with the Earth Dragon, there were several butchers inside the storehouse. Under the circumstances, he probably did shoo away any other people at that time. Now, what did you get? Show me. Elrond said, patting the top of the workstation. Huh? Guildmaster, is something the matter? A butcher that seemed to be around 30 called out to us. Hey, Marcel. Sorry for barging in. I was just showing in Makota here. When Elrin said that, the butcher Marcel gave me a puzzled look. Most likely, he was thinking that I didn't look important enough for the guild master to show me here himself. I probably shouldn't be saying this about myself, but I would probably think the same thing in his position. You see, Marcel, Makota is the most talked about person in Dolan right now. You should know too if you work here, right? That the dungeon was recently conquered. And Makota here is the one that did it. Marcel looked at me, and then shifted his gaze to Fel and Dorachan behind me, and everything seemed to click, as he went, A-H-H in a small voice. If it was just me, I wouldn't make much of an impression, but with Fel and Dorachan, I stand out quite a bit, after all. Even when I just got out of the dungeon, everyone was looking at us, so I guess they'd give it away. Since that's the case, of course I'd be showing him here. No, not at all, there is no of course anywhere here. Just using the trades counter in front would have been fine. I did say that already, you know? My intuition here says that Makota has something unusual. When Elrin said that, Marcel replied with a, really, and proceeded to stay there, full of interest. Since that's the case, now, why don't you show us what you have? You say that, but I have no idea what the case is. Elrond once again patted the table, gesturing me to hurry up. You want me to show you, but Elrond, what about your job? It's fine, it's fine. As long as the sub-guildmasters around everything will work just fine, 
even if I'm not around. No, no, it's not fine. Do your job, Elrond, come on. Actually, wait, won't the sub guildmaster get mad just by us shooting the shit here? I take no responsibility for this. Now. Now, now. Hurry up. Wow, if you're that insistent I'll do it, but don't turn to me if you get yelled at. I took out the monsters from my item box and laid them out on the workstation. Uh, I'd like the meat back as usual, and I'd like to sell the rest. It's five orcs, four cockatrices, a rock bird, and also a giant tailbow. A giant tailbow. As I thought, my intuition is on the mark. What? Is this ostrich really that unusual? W wow. This is the first time I've seen a giant tailbow, Marcel muttered as well. Ha, huh, so this ostrich is rare. But, where did you find one? Elrond asked, so I looked over at Fell. Mn. That? I caught it in a field past the forest south of this place. So he says. There, huh? If I remember correctly, there was talk about one being sighted there four or five years ago, so it really was there. Well, even if it's confirmed, it's not like they're easy to catch. From what I'd heard from them, giant tailpos were flightless, but incredibly fast. That was just like ostriches, but it seemed that their speed was no joke. Finishing off a tailpo that's running away for real is impossible. To catch a giant tailpo, you'd need an earth magic user, and a damn good one at that, to surround and trap it straight away, and then finish it off inside. That's the tactic. I see. When I inquired further, it seemed that since one would either need a good earth magic user already in the party, or to hire one and on top of that, they'd need to make some careful preparations giant tailpos were rarely, if ever, caught. Fell, just how did you get this one? There is no way it would be able to get away from me if I got even a little bit serious, right? Is that so? It's already obvious, but Fell's far too powerful. Hey, that's a tailpo, right? It's the first time I've seen one. Me too. Isn't this the first tailpo any guild's seen in a couple years? Yeah. It'd definitely be the subject of rumors if one ever came in, and I haven't heard any talk. The butchers other than Marcel had all crowded around us at some point. Yeah, this is perfect. Everyone, please get to work on these orcs, cockatrices, and this rock bird first. It'll be good practice, so after that, let's take this giant tailpo apart. When Elrin said that, the other butchers all gave an excited shout and got to work. Right in front of my eyes, the orcs were taken apart. I don't handle gore very well, so I made sure not to look as much as was possible. Looks like everyone's finished. Okay then, let's start butchering this tailpo. As our representative, Marcel, you start us off. Okay. Marcel started butchering the tailpo, while the other butchers looked on with serious eyes. Elrond was giving various bits of advice, saying things like, here, you go like this, or, no, this is better. As expected of someone of his years, he knew a lot, and seemed to have experience with butchering tailpos. Of course, I left the butchering to them, and didn't really watch any of it. And it's just about like that. These don't come around very often, but this should have been a good experience. When Elrond said that, all the butchers replied in the affirmative. Well then, let's get to the calculations. Ah, Makota, there won't be any charge for the butchering. Guildmaster. So you were wasting your time here. The person who came plodding in was the slightly pudgy, sparse of hair old man that was the sub-guildmaster. You Ugle. W-Y-R-U. So the sub-guildmaster's name is Ugle. Don't you why me? When I came because one of the employees told me Sir Makota was here. What do you think you're doing when it's so busy? What are you doing Elrond? See, I knew you'd get yelled at. Ah, Sir Mukota, I am this guild's sub-guild master, Ugle. Thanks to you, Sir Mukota, this guild is prospering greatly. Thank you, truly. Ugle put on a smile as he said that, his earlier threatening attitude disappearing like a morning fog, and I replied with a, nice to meet you. Guild master, thanks to Sir Mukota, now is the most profitable time for the guild since its inception. We're drowning in requests to buy that thing, from all the other guilds and even some nobles. The work just doesn't end and I'd already accept even a cat's help, so please do your work properly. We also have to decide what to buy from Sir Mukota's drops from the dungeon, and there's requests from the merchant's guild about that, too. It's all things we have to do everywhere we look, so don't think you'll be going home today, got it? And no, you see, I'm not great with that kind of work. So, it would be better to leave it to you. What are you saying? Are you telling me to do all of your work for you? If that's the case then we don't need you anymore, Guildmaster. I'm busy with my own job, so at the very least you can do work that needs the input of a Guildmaster properly, 
please. If not, I'll sell off that thing you stare at so dreamily every morning. Wadash. And no, you can't do that. Anything but that. Why you agreed to that too, didn't you, that if we made that a sword it would draw people to the guild? So I'm going to make that into a sword and decorate the guild with it, just as planned. Yes, I agreed, I did. However, thinking about profits, of course selling it off would be best. If you don't do your job, I'll sell it, got it? If you don't want that to happen, do your job. Because if you do your job properly, I won't have to sell it. Do you get it? If you do, hurry on back to your room. A-H-H, Marcel, I'll leave things here to you. Also, make sure to waive any butchering fees for Sir Mokota here while he's in Dolan. Leaving those words behind, Boogle dragged away Elrond, who'd completely lost all his earlier vigor. That sub-guildmaster, no, Boogle, is to be feared. From having to deal with Elrond every day, he knows very well how to handle him. And that thing must be the Earth Dragon's fang. What the hell are you doing with your life, Elrond, staring at that thing every morning? Actually, isn't he totally just treating it like his possession now? Well then, I'll calculate the total. Marcel, you. Actually, it looks like all of the butchers hurriedly retreated the second Ugal came in. Judging from those quick movements, it doesn't seem like that's a rare sight around here. Elrond just doesn't learn, after all. Having gotten back the meat, I had Marcel calculate the total sale price for everything else. All in all, it turned into 85 gold. Thanks to everyone's efforts, I had stopped being surprised at this amount at all recently. Taking the money from Marcel, we left the Adventurer's Guild. It's about time for everyone to complain that they're hungry, so it's time for food once we get back to the inn. Now then, time to cook. Of course, today I'd be using the giant tailpo meat. Truthfully, I'd already eaten ostrich meat once before. I saw that there was ostrich on the menu of an izakaya or something, and ordered it out of curiosity. It was a red meat that didn't have any funkiness to it, so I remember it as being good. I was thinking of trying to recreate that. I would be making ostrich cutlets and ostrich tataki. Apparently, ostrich meat can actually be eaten raw. This was noted on the menu of the izakaya I ordered it, and there was also ostrich yukho and ostrich carpaccio as well as the ostrich tataki I ordered. I remembered having trouble deciding which one to go with. By the way, though, both of these recipes went well with beer. First though, I have to get the ingredients. I was thinking of enjoying the tataka with ponzu, so I stocked up. As for the cutlets, I was planning to make them like Milano-style cutlets. Since that was the case, I already had flour and herb salt, so what I needed were eggs, panko breadcrumbs, cheese powder. Oh, and adding olive oil and lemon juice to taste as good on it, so I'll want lemons, too. Oh, and can't forget the beer. Let's get started on the tataka first. It's fine if I just leave it in my item box when it's done, after all. Oh, right. If that's the case, I'll need to ask Fel. Fel, you can use ice magic, right? Hmm? Ice magic? Yes, I can. Can it be used for cooking? It will be trivial to do so. Then, make some ice here, will you? I pointed to a huge bowl that became more and more necessary as I started having to cook more for everyone. Understood. Here. The ice made a sound as it fell into the bowl. S so big. If it's like this, I'll have to buy an ice pick and chip it down. When I said that, Fell replied with, is that too big? And when I said yes to that, the ice suddenly broke down into dust. While I was struck dumb, Fell said, is this fine, and I reflexively nodded over and over. It might be magic, but having it suddenly break like that is scary as hell. Alright, let's regroup and get to making this giant tail potataki. First, season a lump of the giant tailpo's meat with salt and pepper. Then, quickly sear the meat on an oiled frying pan until the surface of the meat changes color. Immediately cool the meat in Fell's ice water. After that, use some kitchen paper to absorb some of the excess moisture out of the meat lump, and cut it into slices around 5 mm thick. Line them up on a plate, add ponzu on top, and the dish is finished. I taste tested an edge piece. Oh. I can't resist this soft and chewy texture. A giant tailpo was basically a huge ostrich, so I thought it would be basically the same as the ostrich I tasted before, but it seemed that I was wrong. I felt like it was closer to a cow's red meat, but at any rate, the meat didn't have any funk to it, and it was easy to eat. It went really well with the ponzu. In any case, it was a refreshing red meat with almost no fat in it, so it might be good fried. Looks like I can look forward to the cutlet. When I was about to store it in my item box for now. Hey, why are you putting it away? 
Give it here. A.H.H., looks like the hunger brigade won't wait. I'm planning to make another dish, so I was going to serve them together. Do you want this now? Give it. Fine, fine. I placed the plate of giant tail potataki in front of Fel, Dora-chan, and Sui. Oh. I can't resist this texture. You totally get it, Fel. It's so chewy since the inside is raw, right? This meat is so clean and refreshing, I can't get enough of it, so Dora-chan likes it too. It really does go well with Ponzu. Master wears the rest. So fast. So Sui's already done. After quickly making another round of ostrich tatake, I started on the cutlets. First, put the panko in a vinyl bag and pound it until the consistency is fine, then put it in a mixing bowl and whisk it with the powdered cheese and herb salt. Then, pound the giant tailpo meat so it's thin and stretched, before seasoning it with salt and pepper. Coat the meat in flour and then a beaten egg, before coating it with the mixture of cheese, herb salt, and panko. Create about a 1 cm deep pool of olive oil in a frying pan, heat it, and start frying the breaded giant tailpo meat. Once it's well browned, it's finished. Since the breading itself is flavored with powdered cheese and herb salt, it's fine even on its own. It's also a good idea to add lemon to taste. After pumping out more and more cutlets, I served three each to Fel and Sui, and one to Dora. It's fine on its own, but it's also good with some lemon juice to add a bit of sourness. How do you guys want it? Add the lemon on the next serving. I am fine like this. And I'll probably be full after eating this at the sourness on the next one too for Sui. Sure thing. After cooking up another serving of giant tail po cutlets for Fel and Sui, I started eating the tataki and Milano style cutlets I'd saved for myself. And also, this. PSSHHHHT glug glug. AAAA, beer's great. After a bite of some chewy, refreshing ostrich tataki, I took a draft of beer. So nice. This combo might be the best in hot weather, I think. As for the cutlet, I had a bite of it as it was. It's so crispy, it's delicious. Also, I can totally taste the cheese in this breading, wow. It was a pretty refreshing type of meat already, so even fried, I felt like I could eat as many as I wanted. A-H-H, beer. I need some beer. Glug 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 paha I wonder why fried stuff and beer go so well together. Whoops, I need to try it with some lemon juice. I tried putting lemon juice on the remaining cutlets. With the acidity of the lemon juice, it's even more refreshing. Yep yep, it's great. More. More. I served Fel and Sui another round of cutlets with lemon juice on them. It didn't look like they hated it, but it did seem like both Fel and Sui preferred it without the lemon juice. After having another round of the cutlets without lemon juice, it seemed like Fel and Sui were finally satisfied. It occurred to me that the giant tailpo cutlets would do well with bread as well, like it would be good with some ketchup and some cabbage or lettuce in between two buns. And so, I made some extra giant tailpo cutlets. Storing them for later in my item box. After that, I laid out the futons for Fel in the kennel and returned to my room with Sui. Sui fell asleep since it was full, but I still had something I needed to do. In order to test the abilities of the magic bag, I was going to try marinating something. I would be making the standard miso marinade. This time, I wasn't using just orc meat, but also bloody hornbull meat. After repeating the cycle of cutting the meat and adding it into pickle, I ended up with several extra large vinyl zip up bags of pickling meat. And into the magic bag they go. Let's make some miso pickled bowls tomorrow. I also wanted to make some more ground meat, since the mincer sui made for me was so nice. The handle turned easily, so I'd probably be able to make a lot of ground meat quickly. After grinding out a large amount of orc and bloody hornbull meat, I went to sleep. We had arrived at the Adventurer's Guild. Elrond will probably come down for me due to a report from an employee, even if I don't talk to anyone. My business today was the sale of my drops from the dungeon. I wonder if Elrond and Ugal are done deciding? Well, if they haven't, I can just come back tomorrow, though. By the way, I made miso-flavored bloody hornbull bowls for breakfast this morning, and the pickling was just right, so it was a winner. It was about time to leave for the next town, though, since I'd already been through the dungeon. No matter what, it'll have to be after I make this sale, though. And I want to pre-make some food for the journey, as well. Makota, welcome. Now now, this way. Today, I will be joining you. You're here, Elrond. And I see Ugal is here today, too. Well, he's probably just here to keep an eye on Elrond. Since he's got a, history. The three of us headed for the familiar guildmaster's room on the second floor. We'll be buying all of your orc hides, lizardman skins, ogre hides, troll hides, minotaur pelts, ogre magic stones, 
very small, troll magic stones, small, minotaur magic stones, small, and giant killer mantis magic stones, small. Other than that, we'd also like to buy 15 of your paralyzed butterfly paralyzing scales, 20 of your wild ape furs, and also your magic bag, small, since it's for sale. So said the sub guild master, Google. Apparently, materials for leather armor were needed everywhere. Because such materials from the dungeon were especially tough, they were popular so they wanted to acquire as much as they could. As for the magic stones, those would be useful no matter how many they had, and they wanted as many of the popular small ones as they could get. However, there was one person who went against Ugle's wishes. And no you see, Ugle, all the stuff you said earlier is fine and all, but you know, why not some more rare stuff? Ugle reacted to Elrin's statement with a powerful glare. Guildmaster, after that Luung talk we had yesterday about this, are you still going on about that? Ugle asked, glaring but Elrin didn't back down. W well yeah, I know that all the stuff you just said will bring this guild a lot of profit. But you know, I think the job of adventurer has a lot of dreams in it. In order to show off that dream of getting rich quick, we should get something like, say, the Vaja Key Fangs or Hide on this list, or the Manticore Hide or Venom Stinger, or Gustav's Hide or Fangs or Spine would all be good, I think. By the way, my recommendation would be the Vaja Key Fangs, the Manticore Venom Stinger, and Gustav's Fangs and Spine. Ahh, it might also be a good idea to splurge and get the Behemoth Hide, too, said the beautiful elf, smiling from ear to ear. A woman might have been tricked in one shot by that, but his opponent was Ugal Ugal, who held Elrin's reins firmly, would never have been taken in by that. Humph. <laughs> you say stuff like getting rich quick, but all the materials you just talked about, like the Vaja Key Fangs or Gustav's Spine are all materials for a sword, right? You're just trying to fit in your own hobbies. Elrin started acting suspiciously in response to Ugal's accusation. And then no no no, th that's wrong, okay? Th there's no way I would do that. No, Elrin. You're stuttering way too much to be believable. That's basically like saying, yes, you're right, you know? You probably just want to make another sword and put it up with the Earth Dragon Sword you're going to make from what you just bought from Sir Makota here, right? Wait? No way. I thought that, but Elrond reacted with a start and stiffened up, saying, how did you, wa? Really? For that dumbass reason? My god, you are. You know, just how much do you think each of those things you wanted are? Each one is worth about half of the entire list I just gave to Sir Makota here, right? And not only did you spout that nonsense, you even said something as ridiculous as going for the behemoth as hide. For that, not only would half not be enough, it's worth more than the entire list I just said. Bang. Ugle, clearly agitated, banged on the table. Whoa, Ugle's super mad. W well, I totally get it, though. See come on, Ugle, you don't have to be that mad. I just wanted to float the idea. No no no, you didn't float anything, weren't you thinking you'd actually be able to get one? Ha, huh, whatever. Just shut up, guild master. Oh my, he was told to shut up. Excuse us for our miserable behavior, Sir Mukoda. The list of things we're going to buy is just as I said earlier, is that okay? Yes, of course. About the goods, what should I do, take them out here. Given the amount, please do that in the storehouse. I will calculate the amount owed after inspecting the items, so we will be paying you tomorrow. Well, that makes sense, I guess. Since he has to check the items and stuff, too. Oh, also, I want to talk to you about something before you head to the storehouse. In short, Google wanted to ask me if I would consider selling the items I got from the dungeon to the merchant's guild. Normally, anything an adventurer gets and wants to sell goes through the adventurer's guild, but this time the rewards I got from the dungeon were too numerous, so the adventurer's guild couldn't pay for everything. It seemed like the Merchant's Guild knew that as well, and requested to be able to buy some items, even if it was after the Adventurer's Guild was already done. As you know, the Adventurer's Guild buys items from adventurers in order to protect them, since it would be pretty tough for an adventurer to square off against a sly old fox of a merchant. It wouldn't be surprising for people to get tricked and get their items bought at a much lower price than their actual value. So this is in order to prevent that and protect adventurers, but there are times when it's accepted, like when it's a small amount, or in times like this. I see. A small transaction, just like what I did with Lambert before. Now that I think about it, Lambert did say, buying without going through the guilds is something that gets you marked by both of them, but if it's a small transaction then they'll close their eyes to it. So this is one of those times, since the Adventurer's Guild can't buy it all, I see. The last time this happened, 
the guild master's party who had stopped just short of conquering the dungeon came back with a lot of gemstones and the like, so it seems like the merchant's guild is looking forward to that kind of thing. I see. I do have a lot of gemstones and stuff. I don't have to sell them off right away, but honestly I don't have any interest in gems or anything. If they'll buy it, I don't mind at all. So, if you have time, I'd like you to come with me to the merchant's guild after this, or even tomorrow. There is no need to hurry, but there've been several messages from the merchant's guild already. If that's the case, I'm fine to go after this. Really? That's really helpful, thank you. Well then, after going to the storehouse, I will show you to the merchant's guild. After that proclamation by Ogle, Elrond, who'd been silent up until now, chimed in. Wait a second. I'll show Makota to the merchant's guild. It would be better for the guild master to do it. Elrin said that like it was a matter of course, but Ugal didn't even bat an eye. What are you talking about? Are you trying to make up excuses to avoid doing your work again? I won't let you do that, you know? Guild master, you stay here and do your job. Also, how are your preparations for going to the... Capital? I told you to do that, right? In response to Ugal's question, Elrin suspiciously averted his eyes. Oh no, he totally hasn't done it. Ha, huh, so you haven't. You have some gall to be saying you'll guide him, then. No, after all. I really don't want to go at all, you know? It's so much trouble. Don't just say it's trouble and leak out your real thoughts like that. You know you're a guild master, right? At least in title. Oh, actually, I had something I wanted to ask him. Elrond, if you're going to the capital, does that mean you'll meet the king? Yes. I'll be having an audience with him. If that's the case, I took something from the dungeon out from my item box. Please give this to the king. He's been treating me really well, after all. It's thanks to him that fell, the others, and I can all be this free, and we're not bothered by any nobles. I'm really thankful. Please tell him thanks, and to please keep taking care of me from now on. I thought of this since Elrin said that he'd be going to the capital and to the royal palace. It was thanks to the king's decision that I was able to live this free, without any strange interference from any nobles, either. I was really thankful to him, also, I wanted to imply a message of, please keep treating me well. Well, in short, it's an investment. If I'm able to secure my continued freedom like this, then it's a small price to pay. Yes, that's fine. This is. Elrond asked, looking at what I handed him. A-H-H, that's something I got from a treasure chest in the dungeon, a necklace of antidotes. When I said that, both Elrond and Ugal were surprised. This is a magic item. Are you sure? I think it would be better for the king to have this. In a lot of ways. When someone is in a position as high up as a king, assassinations from poison seem like a possibility. Well, it would be an item that those in the palace would pay an arm and a leg for. Are you really sure? If you sold it, you'd get quite a lot of money, you know. Of course. Please give it to the king. Thanks to Fel and the others, I was completely set for money, after all. Also, honestly, since we all had blessings from gods, something like a necklace of antidotes was completely useless to us. All hail nullifying status effects, and all that. See, guild master, not only do you have to give a report, you now have an important job. Now you have to take care of a wonderful item like this and give it to the king. It'll be trouble if you take shortcuts. Now please focus and get your preparations ready, got it? Ugal put the nail in Elrin's coffin. Now then, let's get to the storehouse. After waking up Fel and Dorachan, who'd completely fallen asleep behind my chair, I went to the storehouse with Ugal. By the way, Sui was still inside the usual bag. Now then, can you bring it all out? Yes. First will be the orc hides, okay? Then, the lizardman skins, ogre hides, troll hides, and so it went. And fifteen of the paralyzed butterfly paralyzing scales. Um, what else was there? The list was too long, so I forgot. Twenty of the wild ape pelts, and your magic bag, small, dot. A-H-H, right right. I produced the twenty wild ape pelts and the magic bag, small. I think this is all of it, but please make sure. When I said that, Ugal, Marcel, who was also in the storehouse, and the other butchers that were free all helped to confirm the items. Looks like that is fine. And that too. Sir Makota, I confirm that we have received everything. We will hurry with our assessment and make the payment tomorrow. Yeah, finally, I managed to get rid of some of the stuff from the dungeon. But there's still quite a bit left. Now then, I will show you to the Merchant's Guild. That's right. I still have to go to the Merchant's Guild after this. 
Following after Eagle, we headed for the Merchants Guild. The Merchants Guild in Dolan was quite a splendid building facing the main street. When I followed Eagle into that building, a man in his late forties, with a good build that looked like the perfect image of a merchant, was waiting. We've been waiting. Now now, this way. Um, is it all right for Fell and the others to come along, too? Seeing me hesitate a little, he said, your familiars are fine to come, too. As expected of a merchant, he really pays attention to the details. We were lead to a room behind the reception counter of the guild. There was another room off to the side, and seeing some merchant-like men enter, it seemed like a room for making deals. Just barely, Fell managed to make it into the room. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am the guild master for the Merchants Guild branch here in Dolan. My name is Adriano. Pleased to meet you. It felt like that was what would happen. So the guild master himself came all the way to greet me, huh? I'm Makota. The pleasure is ours. Since I'm a member of the Merchants Guild at least in name, I should be polite here. Sorry for all the repeated requests, Mr. Eagle. No no, I completely understand. Well then, why don't we get down to business, can I get you to show me the goods? From what I heard from Eagle, you're looking for gems and the like is my understanding correct? Yes, please. Now that the subject was on me showing my gems, Adriano said that he'd like to call in an employee to appraise them, to which I agreed. The person that came in was an old man in his mid-60s with sharp eyes that gave off the impression that he was a veteran appraiser that had been in the field for more than 10 years. Well then, I'll bring them out. I produced the gems and similar items that I'd gotten from the dungeon out onto a soft cloth that had been spread out on the table. First are these rubies. The old man appraiser brought out a magnifying glass and stared into the small ruby I gave him. Wait, so this world had lenses for magnifying glasses and stuff? Oh yeah, I have been seeing glasses every once in a while, haven't I? Well, they've all been people that seemed like they had money, so they're probably quite expensive. It's small, but a brilliant red. As expected of something from the dungeon. Thank goodness, it matched up to the old appraiser's standards. Um, is it alright to keep bringing things out? Rather than bringing them out one at a time, would it be better to just reveal it all at once? No, these are the first gemstones from the dungeon in a while, after all. We'll have to carefully appraise each one. It would be best for you to take them out one at a time for us so we can take our time. I see. I did as the old appraiser asked, and brought out the goods one by one. Emerald, aquamarine, garnets, I produced gemstones one after the other. This is an imperial topaz. When I said that and produced the imperial topaz, the old appraiser threw his eyes open wide. An imperial topaz. How many decades has it been since I've seen this golden color? This is incredible. There are no flaws, and it's larger than the ones I've seen before this, said the old appraiser excitedly, getting closer to the imperial topaz with his magnifying glass. For Ruslan to get this excited, is it that good? Adriano asked the old appraiser. So the old man is named Ruslan, huh? Indeed. This is wonderful. More than anything else, imperial topazes are rare it's a very precious gemstone. Only those people in the know would get this gemstone, but those who do know of the imperial topaz's worth will definitely want it. Also, this coloring is a slightly reddish gold. Gold is a color of good port ants, so even if they don't know of imperial topaz, there will be a lot of people who will want to buy it, I think. Certainly. This clear golden color is very attractive, Adriano said, nodding at Ruslan's explanation. I'm not too familiar with the prices of gemstones, but it seems that the imperial topaz is pretty expensive. Wait, if we stop here, this'll end up taking even longer. There's still a lot more, so I'll keep bringing them out. Um, can I keep going? Oh, sorry. Next, please. I brought out the sapphires, alexandrites, and diamonds. Ruslan raised a cry for each new gem I brought out. Whoa. As I thought, the gems from the dungeon are of a different level of quality. Are they that different? Yes. First of all, they have almost no flaws at all, and have clear, pure colors, without any cloudiness in them. Each and every one of them is a prime specimen. Ha, huh, so that's what dungeon-produced gems are like? I did think that they'd sell for a lot since they were gemstones. So, they're all high quality, huh? Next is a diamond ring I got from a treasure chest. Oh ha, huh, so this has been made into a ring from the beginning I see. The design is a little dated, but the diamond is wonderful. It seems like the dungeon doesn't keep up with the latest designs, huh? Next is a tanzanite necklace. This also came from a treasure chest. The design of this one is just a little behind the times as well, but tanzanite is a rare and valuable gemstone. 
It has a slightly different color from sapphires, which are also blue, as tanzanite tends to be a little purplish. How exquisite. So the design of this one has some problems too, huh? But it looks like the stone itself is rare and valuable. And the last one. Personally, I feel like this one is the most valuable. It came from a treasure chest on the 29th floor, and it's the largest one, even someone as disinterested in gems as I am thinks it's pretty. And this one is the last. A yellow diamond that came out of a treasure chest on the 29th floor. I showed the large yellow diamond that had been cut into a teardrop shape to Ruslan. Th this is, Ruslan reverentially took the yellow diamond into his hands, and carefully looked it over. Our Ruslan. In response to Adriano, who called out to Ruslan in surprise, I also looked over at the old man. And of all things, he was crying. I feel so incredibly moved right now. Now, with most of my life behind. Me, to think that I would be able to lay my eyes on something like this, in response to Ruslan's words, someone gave an audible gulp. First is the rarity of a colored diamond. Diamonds with colors are truly rare. Not only that, but this strong yellow color with this transparency is excellent. Since golden colors are auspicious, just like the imperial topaz, it will probably have crowds of people after it. Also, this size is also magnificent. You'll only rarely find diamonds of this size. Not only that, but it's colored, so I shouldn't have to tell you more about that. Also, this cut can only be described as beautiful. It's not inferior to ones cut by the most skilled craftsmen. In conclusion, I've been looking at gemstones for a long time, but I have never seen one as wonderful as this one. It wouldn't be too far to call this the pinnacle of gemstones, in the entire world. I will guarantee this one's quality, the peak. Th that good, huh? I glanced quickly towards Adriano and Ugal, and the two of them were wide-eyed in surprise at Ruslan's words. W well then, we will be discussing what to buy, so please wait for a little while, said Adriano, managing to regroup from the shock and taking Ruslan out of the room. While we were waiting, an employee from the Merchant's Guild came in and served some tea. This tea is great. It's like Darjeeling tea, but it's not like a cheap one from a tea bag, but a high-quality one that's bought as a souvenir. As expected, after showing them something like that, of course the Merchant's Guild would put out the best tea, said Ugal, taking a gulp out of the tea. Huh? This is the highest quality of tea. Yes. It's called Dalrin tea, since it can only be found in a province named Dalrin in the Kingdom of Ermin. Oh, I see. We waited for a while, drinking down the highest quality Dalrin tea. Sorry for keeping you waiting. With those words, Adriano and Ruslan stepped into the room. Well then, as for what we want to buy, summarizing what Adriano wanted to buy, it was a ruby, small, emerald. Small, aquamarine, small, garnet, small, amethyst, small, x2, peridot, small, a gold ingot, imperial topaz, medium, diamond, large, diamond, medium, x2, diamond, small, x2, and the diamond ring. There were a lot of diamonds in the list, so it seemed like diamonds were popular in this world too. Even so, it looks like they didn't reach for the yellow diamond, huh? We want to buy the items we just listed, is that all right? When I answered in the affirmative, Adriano started explaining the prices. The ruby, small, is 180 gold coins, the emerald, small, will be 170, the aquamarine, small, 140, the garnet, small, 120, the two amethysts, small, are 80 gold each and will total 160 gold, the peridot, small, is 110 gold, the gold ingot is worth 300 gold, the imperial topaz, medium, is worth 1600 gold, the diamond, large, 1500 gold, the two diamonds, medium, are 750 gold each for 1500 gold total, the two diamonds, small, will be 500 gold each, totaling 1000 gold, and the diamond ring will be 680 gold. The total for all of this is 7,460 gold coins. These are my prices, are they to your satisfaction, G-gems sure are amazing. They're this expensive in this world, too. He said 7,460 gold. Amazing. Yes, it's Phi Dash, please wait a minute. When I tried to give my assent, Ugal cut in. About your prices, the price for the Imperial Topaz and the Diamonds are clearly far too low. I am, in fact, working as the sub-guildmaster at the Adventurer's Guild, after all. In order to expand my knowledge base, I've made sure to see and listen to a lot of different subjects. The Imperial Topaz is one of those subjects, believe it or not. The Imperial Topaz has another name, the Phantom Gem. Among gemstone enthusiasts, it's an extremely rare, highly esteemed object, right? 
and everyone knows that for gems, the larger it is, the more valuable. And this size, isn't only 1600 gold for the phantom gem a little strange. The same goes for the diamonds. Diamonds are an extremely popular gem, and there's a shortage of stock everywhere. You'll have to put some more flavor on that price. Not only that, but the price is even too low for something not taken from the dungeon. Especially the large diamond, that one is the most undervalued. I've seen a diamond about this big that didn't come from the dungeon priced at 1,500 gold before. With that in mind, paying 1,500 gold for a large diamond that came from the dungeon is just strange. These prices make a mockery of negotiations. Oh oh, are really? Wow, good thing Ogle is with me. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but if it was Elrond, he probably wouldn't have noticed. I had no idea about the values of gems, so if it wasn't for Ogle, I would have totally just said okay. Makota, you don't really need to sell these gems right now, do you? Ugal turned the subject of the conversation towards me, and I nodded. I'm not exactly troubled for money at the moment. So it's not like I really need money right now or anything. If that's the case, you can also sell these at an adventurer's guild in a different town. You're an adventurer, after all, Sir Makota. This should have been the case in the first place, so wouldn't it be fine if you did that? He's right, that might be the way to go. Wait a second please. You say that Sir Makota is an adventurer, but isn't he also registered at the Merchants Guild? So argued Adriano. Ugal was a little surprised hearing that I was registered to the Merchants Guild. But you know, Adriano, so what if I'm registered at the Merchants Guild? Could you possibly be saying that since I'm registered to this guild, I should just let you buy them as is? Isn't that asking just a little too much? I'm not troubled for money, but after hearing Ugal's explanation, I'm feeling like I'm being tricked here. It's true that I'm registered at the Merchants Guild, but I'm only iron ranked. I'm pretty okay at cooking, so I registered, thinking it would be nice to set up a stand or something. But now I've got more familiars, so I'm acting mainly as an adventurer nowadays. It could be that I might not renew my membership at the Merchants Guild. It wasn't much, but I tried supporting Ugal. In reality, thanks to Fell and the others, I've basically been solely an adventurer. And in any case, of the two, I've mostly been in the care of the Adventurers Guild, too. There you have it. If you keep treating our adventurers this way, we'll have to think up our own countermeasures, you see, Ugal said, an unfriendly smile showing on his face, glaring for a while at the similarly smiling Adriano. It was almost as if there were some invisible sparks jumping in between the two. However, this time Adriano was at a slight disadvantage. Adriano said, please wait a little while, and started whispering with Ruslan. Ahem. Excuse us. About our previously stated price, we're thinking of revising it a little bit. The new price for the Imperial Topaz will be 2,100 gold. Pieces, the diamond, large, 2,000 gold, the two diamonds, medium, will be 1,000 each for a total of 2,000, the two diamonds, small, will be 700 each for a total of 1,400, and the diamond ring will now be 800 gold. This changes the total to 9,480 gold pieces, how about it? Oh, it jumped quite a bit. Somehow. Is this fine? Shooting a glance at Ugal, I saw him nod firmly. Great, this looks fine, then. Yes, please. When I said that, Adriano breathed a sigh of relief. Well then, as for the payment, given the price, would it be alright to pay in white gold and large gold coins? Yes, that'll be fine. When I agreed, Adriano stood up. Now that I think about it, this'll be the first time I've seen a white gold coin. When Adriano returned, he was carrying some coinage that glowed blue-white on a tray. Well then, with 94 white gold coins and 8 large gold coins, the total is 9,480 gold. Please confirm the amount. Looks like white gold is made my mixing mithril with gold, huh? And there's 94 of them, along with 8 large gold coins. Yes, the amount is correct. Well then, here it is, I took the money, and handed over the gems. Yes, this is also correct. Ruslan took the gems and left the room. How quick. We've done some good business. Thank you very much said Adriano. The pleasure was ours. I said that, and tried to return with Ugal, but I was stopped by Adriano. Sir Makota, you're registered to the Merchants Guild, and you say you're pretty good at cooking, so I have something I'd like to borrow your knowledge for. Huh? What could it be? It seemed that Adriano was hoping to hear about a new recipe. His problem was that, currently, he only had food that could basically be found at any restaurant. I guess it should be expected of the guild master of the merchant's guild. 
Even if you fall, you won't get up for free, is it? Adriano? Well, they did raise the price of the sale by quite a bit, though that was probably thanks to Ugal pointing things out, from now on, they'd probably offer me much better deals, so if it was just thinking of a dish, I could do it. Listening to our conversation, Ugal understood that it had nothing to do with the Adventurer's Guild and quickly excused himself. Cooking is just boiling or grilling, so it can't really be helped that everything turns out the same, though, on top of that, for seasoning there was basically just salt and a little bit of pepper, and some herbs, so it might have been inevitable that every place ended up with the same food. It doesn't seem like you're from this country, Sir Makota, so since you can cook, I'd be thankful if you could teach me something new. This place has a lot of adventurers, so something that pairs well with alcohol would be even better. Hmm, <laughs> if I could use the seasonings I get from my online supermarket, then I could bring out any number of good dishes, but... I can't. Just salt and pepper for seasoning. From what he said, it seems like I should avoid expensive ingredients as much as possible, so pepper might actually be impossible. I get not using expensive ingredients, since normal restaurants don't use them, either. But something that pairs well with alcohol. This is hard. Ah. Oh yeah, Adriano did just say that, cooking is just boiling or grilling, didn't he? If that's the case. Mr. Adriano, what about frying? Frying? What kind of cooking is that? You fry food in oil. Uh, it's like boiling in oil, I guess. Frying in oil, boiling. Hmm, I don't really get it. Oh, looks like there really isn't any knowledge of frying here. If that's the case, then I've thought of the perfect dish. The most common oil in this world was olive oil. Apparently, there was a huge area that produced it which was thriving, so the price wasn't that high. As for salt, since this country was bordered by the sea, it wasn't that expensive, either. Thinking like that, the dish I thought of wouldn't be that pricey. And it went well with alcohol. I even think it'd be perfect with the ale that was so common in this world. I did think of a dish, so should I try making it? Oh. That would be great. Everyone will probably want to know about this new dish, so shall I call people over? That would be fine, but, it's a little embarrassing to be watched by people, but I guess there's nothing for it. More importantly, I need a large space to bring out the magic stove. When I asked about that, for some reason, the result was that I would be doing my demonstration on the large space in front of the reception desk of the guild. When I told him that I'd need olive oil and salt, he immediately procured it. Well then, let's get cooking, I guess. First, let's get this magic stove out in the open. When I did so, the gallery cried in surprise. After that, I could hear people saying things like, that's a pretty huge item box, huh, or, that's the newest model of magic stove. I'm just gonna have to ignore them. This time, I'd be making French fries. If it's fries, the cooking will be simple, and the cost of the ingredients won't be that high, and it's perfect for a snack with alcohol. First up is the potatoes, right? I still had the potatoes I bought before I went into the dungeon, so I picked some that hadn't sprouted yet and washed them. If I remember right, they're still called potatoes here, I think. Um, after though are oofly washing the potatoes and wiping them, cut them like this. If it's properly washed, you can even leave the skin on. This time I'll be cutting the potatoes like this, but you can cut them thinner or thicker as you like to change how it feels to eat. Please try experimenting on your own for that. Also, since you all use potatoes a lot you should already know, but if the potato has eyes, cut them out, and peel the skin deeper than normal, okay. With those words, I left the skin on the potatoes and started cutting them. Although the price of the ingredients wasn't high, it would probably be a good idea to not use that much oil, so it'd take a while to cook. I guess I'll just fry them in a pan. Then, put the potatoes in a frying pan and pour oil in it until it lightly submerges your potatoes. Once that's done, put it on medium heat. And let the heat slowly warm up the pan. The magic stove lit with a sound. Now let's just leave things like this for a while. Once the oil starts bubbling like this and the potatoes start to float, Turn the heat to high and fry until the surface is crunchy and the food starts to smell good. Once that's done, take it out and make sure to get rid of any excess oil. Then, sprinkle on some salt, and it's done. If you're worried that the insides aren't properly cooked, then once the potatoes start to float, you can take one out, split it open, and check. However, doing things this way will take some time, so preheating the oiled pan is also a way to do it. For oil, I used olive oil just now, but animal fat works as well. I think it'd be great to experiment with that along with ways to cut them. Ah, it uses oil, so be careful of fires. The method I just used was really only for home cooking, after all. 
If you were making it for a restaurant, then you'd need to make a larger amount, and the cutting style and oil all made for different textures and flavors. At least, that's what I think. In my opinion, testing that stuff out for oneself would be best. Well then, please try some. When I served up the freshly fried potatoes, the gallery all gathered around. It's hot, so be careful. Everyone was trying out the freshly made fries while blowing through their mouths. Oh. The outside is crispy, but the inside is nice and fluffy it's great. The salt works well, and I can't stop my hand from just reaching out for more. This really does seem like it'd go great with ale. More than anything, the ingredients don't cost much, which is nice. Not only that, but it's simple, so we can even put them on the menu today, if we wanted. Looks like it's generally going over well. Well, it's not like I've ever heard of anyone who hates fries. All that's left is to change how you cut it like I said before, but they'll have to do that part by themselves. Maan, Sir Makota, thank you, truly. I'm in awe at your idea to fry things in oil. Not only that, but the ingredients aren't too expensive, and it goes well with alcohol. For you to teach us of such a wonderful dish, I'm truly grateful, Adriano said after approaching me. Looking at those smiling faces that continue from beginning to end, it looks like the fries are good. I did think that it was a little too simple, but this was the only thing that came to mind for something that was easy to make and only used ingredients available here. If they were this happy over me teaching them how to make fries, then I'm happy too. It's not much, but my guild will pay for your renewal fees for the next year. Really? That's great. Just for teaching them how to make fries, my next renewal was made free. That was lucky. Well then, my business here is done, so I guess I should clean up, wake up the familiars, and leave. All three of them got bored and took a nap. Now then, once we're back I'll have to cook for them too, huh? Well then, I'll take my leave. Thank you very much. Saying my goodbyes to Adriano, we left the merchant's guild. First up is everyone's food, huh? I had made a lot of ground meat out of orcs and bloody horn bowls yesterday, so I was thinking of using that. I would be making meatloaf. When I mulled over what to make, I figured that meatloaf would be a good idea since I already had the ground meat. And since meatloaf uses the oven, I can use the burners for something else. I was thinking of using them to steam rice, as well as make some minced meat with soy sauce for storage. It'd be convenient to have some made, after all. It's tasty, and goes great with rice. You can make it into a rice bowl, or even pack the meat into a rice ball. Well then, let's get cooking. The meatloaf I'd be making was a simple one using only store-bought ingredients. As long as you could get stuff from the supermarket, it was easy to make. I already had onions, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, red wine, and panko, but I had to buy everything else. That means I ended up with bacon, frozen mixed vegetables, packs of hard-boiled quail eggs, chicken eggs, butter, and also a pound cake mold. After washing the rice and while I was letting it soak, I started making the meatloaf. After pouring some panko into a bowl, add some milk and let it soak. Meanwhile, mince some onions, melt some butter in a frying pan, and start cooking the minced onions. Once the onions go a little clear, add in the frozen mixed vegetables while they're still frozen, and cook until the vegetables thaw. Add in the orc and bloody hornbull mixed ground meat along with the cooked minced onions and mixed vegetables, as well as some eggs, salt and pepper, and also nutmeg, if I remember the recipe correctly, and mix together until the result becomes sticky. This part is basically the same as if you were making a Hamburg steak. Just about the only thing that's different is the presence of the mixed vegetables. Once the base of the meatloaf is done, spread some bacon into the pound cake mold. Then, pack in about half of the meatloaf base tightly into the mold, so as to push out any bits of air trapped inside. With that done, line up two quail eggs each in the middle of the pound cake mold and push in the rest of the meatloaf mix. I used quail eggs this time, but of course regular boiled eggs would be just fine. Fold in any pieces of bacon that have been pushed outside of the mold, cover the top with aluminum foil, and start baking in the oven. Around 30 minutes at 200 degrees would be best, but there was no way the oven in this magic stove would have a temperature setting, so the only choice was to watch it and see how it does. Whoops, I need to get to cooking the rice. While cooking the rice on a burner on top, the meatloaf was baking in the oven on the bottom. Since it was big, I could make quite a lot of meatloaf all at once. It should be just about done. I opened the oven and tried sticking a skewer into the meatloaf. I only see clear meat juice here, so this is done. After that, I just needed to put on the sauce. I moved the built up extra meat juice from the pound cake mold to a pot. There, I added in butter and some ketchup, chino sauce, and red wine. After boiling it all together for a while, the sauce was done too. 
I started cutting the meatloaf. Fel and Sui would get three portions of the pound cake molded meatloaf, and Dora Chan would get two, I kept the end pieces for myself, though. After lining them up in dishes, I put on the sauce and they were finished. Hey, I'm done. When I served up the dishes with the meatloaf in them, everyone quickly started eating. Mn, there are vegetables in this. Well, it is not inedible, and the taste is, all right. Just how much of a meat supremacist is Fel? Wow. Sure there's mixed vegetables in there, but they're all chopped to bits. Come on, just eat it. Wait, he's complaining but he sure is eating a whole lot anyway. This thick tear is good. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty damn tasty, Dora Chan's tongue has gotten pretty sharp lately. The thick sauce is perfect, right? I also think sauce with about this consistency is best for ground meat. Wow. There's something in the middle. Is it an egg? You know, Sui loves eggs so Sui is happy there's both meat and eggs oh, I see I see. So you love it when there's eggs, huh? It might be a good idea to make scotch eggs for Sui next time. I wasn't sure how it would turn out since it'd been a while since I made one, but in the end, Fel and Dora Chan were both wolfing the food down, and Sui was entranced by it, so it seems like the meatloaf was a success. Now let's see, I should eat too. It looked good. The surface of the cut showed the two lined up quail eggs, and it was putting on a somewhat fancy air. Now just wipe up some sauce and, nom. Oh, the sauce is great. The butter and red wine make for a thick and rich sauce, and it pairs perfectly with the meatloaf. It's the same with Hamburg steaks, but thick sauces like this really do make me think that they go best with ground meat. The vegetable medley mixed in adds a lot of texture, which is also great. The quail eggs are also a real treat in here. It would be fine even without them but the eggs really do bring out a luxurious feel to the dish. Also, the bacon surrounding it adds saltiness and flavor. More. More. Both Fel and Sui wanted more, huh? It looked like Dora Chan was satisfied with what he had, and was lying face up, saying something like, Man, I sure ate. But I was fully prepared. The oven was large, so I could make a whole lot at once. This magic stove was super convenient. It was great that I bought it, really. After that, Fel and Sui had two more servings and were full, but Dora Chan asked for the jiggly stuff, so using that opportunity, it was now time for dessert. Of course Dora Chan had the pudding, Fel had his favorite strawberry shortcake, and Sui wanted something different again, so I went. With a milk crepe this time. They must all be part of the, sweets go into a different stomach, Kemp since it looked like they were enjoying the desserts immensely. Even though everyone was finished eating, I still had lots to do. I needed to steam rice, and also make the minced meat with soy sauce for storage. I used the burner next to the one I was using to steam rice to make it. After putting some oil in a pot and heating it up, add in the minced orc meat and cook it until it starts forming distinct clumps. Then, throw in soy sauce, mirin, cooking sake, and grated ginger, the kind that comes in tubes is okay, and cook until all the liquid is gone, and it's complete. All that's left is to cool it down and preserve it in an appropriately sized container. Not only was it really simple, it was perfect for a small side dish, so making some beforehand was really convenient. And for the meat, mixed meat, beef, or even chicken worked just fine. I'd personally been saved by this meal a lot in the days just before payday. Mwah, this much should be fine for today. Ah. Mr. Ugle. Mr. Ugle really treated me well today. If he wasn't around, then I would have ended up selling the gems for too low a price. Personally, I'm not in need of money thanks to Fell, and I don't have a lot of knowledge on gems at all, so if Ugle hadn't spoken up, I would have just been fine with the first price they gave. Most likely, it would have been the same if Elrond was the one with me instead, since he seems useless for anything other than dragons. If someone asked me whether or not I was angry at the Merchant's Guild at all for that, I'd have to say that I was. But, from their perspective, of course they'd definitely want to get it all for as cheap as possible, so with that in mind, I can't really say that the price they first gave was really wrong, either. It's not like I thought that they were trying to totally rip people off. However, I'd painfully experienced just how much of a difference some knowledge makes, if I had known as much as Ugle did, I'd be able to fight back. But that kind of knowledge didn't just come immediately, so if I wanted to sell things off at a proper price, it'd probably be best to stick to selling to adventurers guilds from now on. Well, leaving that aside for now, I really was treated well by Mr. Ugle today so I was thinking of a way to thank him. Yeah, the only thing that comes straight to my mind for these sorts of things really is just sweets. I did hear in passing that Ugle had both a wife and child, so something that he can share with his family would probably make him even happier. But still, it's not like I can just straight up hand him a cake or something from Fumiya. 
so it have to be handmade, but even though I cook quite a bit, I still haven't really touched pastries or confections much. As I kept thinking on it, I happened to look over at the pound cake mold I used to make meatloaf. Ah. Right, I did somehow manage to make a pound cake before, didn't I? Hehe, <laughs> don't you dare underestimate my history part-timing in restaurants. I worked part-time at a cafe while I was a student, and that place was pretty famous for having really delicious coffee. There, the most popular cake set was delicious coffee paired with either a pound cake, chiffon cake, or rare cheesecake. These cake sets weren't just popular with the girls, old men were also fans of it. I was, too. Coffee also pairs great with simple handmade cakes. At any rate, I did make the cakes there before, so I do at least some would have skill in making pound cakes, chiffon cakes, and rare cheesecakes. It was quite a long while ago, but I still remembered the steps. And I already have a pound cake mold, so let's just try making one. The only thing I was worried about was that the ingredients would all end up being from my world, bought through my skill, so he'd end up being affected by it and have his stats buffed. But, from my experience cooking food like this before, it shouldn't be that pronounced, I think. It'll be fine if I just appraise the finished product, and quit while I'm ahead if it's way too much. So, for now. I decided to just try making one. What I needed was unsalted butter, sugar, low viscosity wheat flour and eggs, and also baking powder and vanilla essence. I already had eggs, but everything else I had to buy using my skill. I also picked up a whisk and a rubber spatula. I used a hand mixer in the store, but that wouldn't be possible here. The basic ingredients of a pound cake were flour, butter, eggs, and sugar. And the basic way to cook it was just to mix them all together equally. It was really simple, so it was easy to memorize. In the store, we also added baking powder to give it a lighter and airier feel. Also, we added vanilla essence for fragrance. I was planning to faithfully recreate that place's pound cake. First are the preparations. Warm the unsalted butter and eggs to room temperature, sieve some flour and baking powder together, and lay a baking sheet in the pound cake mold. Once all that's done, put some warmed unsalted butter into a bowl and whisk until it forms a white, creamy consistency. Next, take the whitened butter and mix with sugar until it becomes fluffy and airy. At that point, take the warmed beaten eggs and add it in and repeat mixing before also adding in a little vanilla essence. Once the eggs are added, if it starts separating the whole thing will become a mess, so be careful. Then, add in the sieved powder mixture, and quickly mix it all together with the rubber spatula. Once it stops being powdery, you're fine. Pour the completed dough into the pound cake mold, and poke a dent into the middle before tapping on the sides of the mold to try to get rid of any trapped air. Bake it at around 170 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. After around 10 minutes in the oven, score it with a knife. Doing so will make it look better when it's done. I kept watch on it while it was cooking in the magic stove, and once I thought it was done I poked a skewer inside to check. Yep, looks done. Once it was done, I popped it out of the mold and cooled it off before wrapping it and putting it in storage. When handing it over to Mr. Oogle, I'd remove the wrap and put it on a plate. Oh yeah, it might be nice to buy a basket with a lid to put it in and just hand that over, huh? Even with Elrond being Elrond, he did also help me, so I made a portion for him, too. If he was like Mr. Oogle and had a wife or children, he might have been happy for the sweets, but Elrond was said to be a broken-hearted single. Ah, right. I need to appraise it. Pound cake a pound cake made out of ingredients from another world. Raises magic power by 1% for 5 minutes. 1% for 5 minutes, huh? This much won't really be a problem, it should be fine. Now, I have to go to the Adventurer's Guild tomorrow to get my money, so I'll just hand these over then. And it would be fine to just buy a lidded basket on the way there if there happened to be a store that had one. We were walking down the road toward the Adventurer's Guild. MM. I smell cooking meat. Fell said. His nose twitching. He's right Dora-chan, who was flying, also had his nose twitching. Following the trail of the smell, we found it coming from a stall outside the store I was going to stop by on the way to the Adventurer's Guild. Fell and Dora-chan naturally made their way towards the stall. Whoa. The man running the stall was surprised at the sudden appearance of Fell, the huge wolf, and Dora-chan, the tiny dragon. Ah, sorry. They're my familiars, it's okay. Calling out to him. I saw the obviously relieved face the guy was making. Oh, I see. It scared me, I thought that some monsters appeared in the middle of town. Ha ha ha. Fell and Dora Chan's eyes were nailed onto the skewers that were being grilled in the stall. Lured by the smell, even Sui jumped out of the bag. Sui's a slime, but it looks like it can smell just fine, huh? It was a mystery how Sui did it, 
but Sui was already a ridiculous kind of slime anyway. After all, Sui could make medicine and blacksmith too. At this point, I'm pretty sure Sui could just about do anything. Still though, all three of them were paying too much attention to those skewers. Even though I properly gave them breakfast in the morning. A.H.H., want some? I tried asking the three of them, as they were basically camped out in formation in front of the stall, staring at the meat. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Came everyone's telepathic responses. How many? I can do 30. Hmm. <laughs> I can do about 15. Sui can also eat 30. Damn, you all really eat a lot. Excuse me, can I get 76 skewers? That was enough for all three of them, with one for me. I got done in by the smell of the charcoal grill too. The skewers here had a little extra meat on them, with three pieces each, and were seven iron coins a skewer. Including an annoyance fee for Fell and the others crowding the stall, I handed over six silver to the man running it. You can keep the change. Really? Thanks, man. Then I'll just hand over what's finished now, and I'll grill the rest. Saying so, the guy handed over the fifty skewers that were already finished. I produced some dishes from my item box, and I separated the meat from their skewers and onto the plates. For now, I gave Fel and Sui 20 each and Dora Chan 10. Here you go. Everyone immediately jumped on the food. This is horn rabbit meat, I see. There is a world of difference compared to your cooking, but well it is not like this is inedible. What do you even mean not inedible? Weren't you the one that got lured here by the smell? Don't you feel sorry for that guy comparing this cooking to his? It's a little hard and there's only salt, but it hasn't been that long since it's been grilled, so it's not like I can't eat it you say that too. Dora Chan, but you were also drawn here by the smell. The meat master cooks is the most delicious. But this, the meat is a little hard, but it's savory in its own way and good, thanks, Sui. The charcoal grill is its selling point, huh? It does make the whole thing smell and thus taste better. I was wondering what meat it was, so this is horn rabbit, huh? According to the guy manning the grill, horn rabbit was a pretty popular meat. Apparently for stalls selling skewers, this was the most common. After hearing more, it seemed that the guy had just recently moved to Dolan, and just started his stall business today. Selling this much on my first day bodes well, said the guy, happily. All of these guys eat tons, after all. In the end, I bought a lot. Here you go, it's done. Taking the finished skewers from the guy, I added another ten each to Fells and Sui's dishes, and another five to Dora Chan's. It's hot, so be careful. Now then, I should try this myself. Chomp the only seasoning here was salt, but since it was grilled with charcoal, the fragrance was great and it was pretty good. It's tougher than the meat we usually eat, but this is certainly appealing in its own right. More than anything, the smell from the charcoal grilling was irresistible. Charcoal grilled meat is tasty. I wonder how good it would be if I charcoal grilled orc meat, or bloody hornbull meat, or wyvern meat. If I make full use of the seasonings I can get with my skill, I should be able to make it even better, too. Ah, I want to have a barbecue. Meat is good, but a seafood barbecue would be nice too. And right now we're heading for the fishing town of Berlin too. Hmm. I might want a barbecue grill. If my online supermarket has the same barbecue grill that I saw in the home center I'd buy it immediately, but they probably don't. I tried looking around, and I didn't see anything, after all. Well, even if they did, I probably couldn't hope for one that was large enough. Fell and the others were around, so if I didn't have a large one, it wouldn't be of much use. Could I get Sui to make one for me? No, that's no good. Every time I had Sui make something for me, I did so after showing it an example of what I wanted and asking if it could do it, but I didn't have an example on me. I remembered the shape of the barbecue grill I saw before, so I could draw it and try explaining it to Sui, but that'd probably be too hard a hurdle. Hmm, <laughs> I want a barbecue grill but I guess I'll just have to give up on that. It's too bad, though. Now then, looks like Fell and the others are done eating. After cleaning up the plates, let's stop by the store to pick up a basket before heading to the Adventurer's Guild. Gossip, three heroes escaped from the kingdom. Recently, Rio had been acting strange. She didn't really listen to us at all. I didn't like admitting this, but between the three of us, Rio was the one who was usually the most reasonable. And even so, recently she'd been at Leonard's beck and call. Rio was in love with Leonard, and I knew that people liked to align themselves with the people they liked but it was still kind of strange. How should I put it, rather than it being like interacting with the person you love, it's more like, right, like a master and servant. I couldn't shake that feeling. I tried telling this to Kanan too, 
and it seemed that she felt the same way, but she said, maidens in love are just like that, and didn't pay it any mind. However, with what happened recently, even Kanan couldn't just explain it away anymore. As for what happened, it occurred while we were out on a routine monster hunting quest in order to raise our levels. The request we'd accepted from the Adventurer's Guild was to exterminate a band of orcs that had infested a village near the capital. Our methods involved Leonard coming up with a plan, telling us about it, and then we would go out to hunt the monsters. But this time, things didn't go as planned. Kanan came forward a little late. In the end, we managed to exterminate the orcs, but thanks to Kanan being late, we had a little more trouble than we should have. Kanan got reprimanded by the knights and told to exercise more caution. Kanan herself knew that it was her own fault, so she accepted it honestly. Kanan even said herself, today was my fault. I'll have to do better next time. She was reflecting on it seriously. Even so. As soon as it became just us three Kanan, Rio, and Irio started blaming Kanan. Why didn't you do as Leonard said? Are you stupid, Kanan? Starting with those words, she threw around other words like fool as well. Angry like a raging fire, Rio laid into Kanan with the dirtiest words she could muster. Kanan and I were simply confused by how far she was taking it. Rio wasn't the type to do this kind of thing. At the very least, she wouldn't berate her friends like this. Thanks to that, Kanan finally recognized that Rio was being weird. When Kanan and I discussed why that happened, we couldn't think of any standout reason. I feel like it's got to be the stress. Yeah, that makes sense. We did just get thrown here straight from modern Japan, after all. But, if that's the case then we're the same. Yeah. For just Rio to become like that. The idea that the stress was the biggest reason for her behavior came up and was the best one we had, but neither of us were really convinced by that. In the end, neither of us could come up with a compelling reason and we spent our days in worry. It was at that time. I ended up hearing the knights talking. Rio's turning out well. Yes. She's loyal to what I say. It might be about time for us to put the dominance bracelet on either Kaito or Kanan now. If that's the case I'll put it on Kanan first. I want to hurry up and finish this annoying job after all. As long as I get this on her, she's all mine. After all, the only ones who can take these things off are us, the masters. Then next will be Kanan. And lastly, Kaito, right? If I can put the bracelet on Kaito I can get promoted too. I'll definitely get it done. I hid my breathing and listened in on Leonard, Aaron, and Louise's conversation. When the three of them finally left, I breathed out a sigh of relief. A dominance bracelet? From that name, it probably forces the wearer to comply to orders like a slave, right? And they put that kind of thing on Rio? I finally realized what this country was up to. They were trying to use us up like slaves. I immediately talked about it with Kanan. At first, she didn't believe me. But she finally did after appraising Rio's bracelet. When I tried using appraisal on the bracelet, it read, Dominance Bracelet. It was the same whether Kanan or I appraised it. It was probably because our levels were still low, but we were only able to read the name. But nothing good could come out of anything named something like a, Dominance Bracelet. At any rate, we need to leave this country as soon as possible. I think so too, but what about Rio? From what you said, Kaito, only the master can take it off, right? The master must be Leonard. And he'll probably never take that off. You're right. Anyway, we'll just have to think of a solution. But there might not be enough time. Because Aaron wants to put one of those on me, too, right? Yeah. If the situation ever goes that way, just put it off however you can. But I think it'll only work once. It's them we're talking about, so if you have to do it two or three times, they'll probably figure out that we know about the bracelets. If it comes to that, they'll try to immediately put it on us by force. Yes, you're probably right. If he ever tries to put the bracelet on me, I'll do whatever I can to put it off. A few days after that conversation, Aaron made an approach just like we were watching out for. Kanan somehow managed to get him to back off, but it seemed like there wouldn't be a next time. Kanan, this is going to be pretty harsh, but please think of just running away with me and leaving Rio behind. As for Rio's situation, no solution came to mind in the end. While feeling guilty and sorry for Rio, I could only figure out a way to run away just Kanan and I, leaving Rio behind, since we were the only ones with free will. Kanan must also have not come up with anything regarding Rio, as she only quietly replied, got it. With little time to spare, Kanan and I started discussing where to go even if we did leave the country. We did things like sneak into the library to look at maps, and after gathering as much information as we could, we figured that the neighboring country of Marvale was probably the best place to go. 
In reality I wanted to head for the kingdom of Ermin or Leonhard, but both of those were too far. We were said to be heroes, but we weren't stupid enough to think that made us invincible. We knew that there were people and monsters that were stronger than we were. Assuming that we headed for either the kingdom of Ermin or Leonhard, it would all be over if we encountered a strong monster on the way. And even if we headed for Ermin or Leonhard from the kingdom of Ridzeger, any country on the way would be too close to here. When I thought of being caught on the way there and being made to go back, or being caught up to by people chasing us, we ended up deciding that it would be best to first head to a country where Ridzeger couldn't reach. Since that was the case, the neighboring kingdom of Marvale would be the fastest. Right now, the kingdoms of Ridzeger and Marvale were close to war. The opening of hostilities was only a matter of time. And in that state, there was no way Marvale would ever help Ridzeger. Even if it was found out that we were heroes, they probably wouldn't return us to Ridzeger anyway. At any rate, we decided to look for an opportunity to leave, and then head for the kingdom of Marvale. So we would be able to run at any time, we started to stockpile food and clothing. The only regret was that we'd be leaving Rio behind. Chapter 4, I Want a Barbecue Grill We had come to the Adventurer's Guild. I'd already put the pound cake in the basket I bought, and my preparations were complete. He was probably used to it, as even without saying anything, Elrond immediately came over. And I was once again led to the familiar guildmaster's room on the second floor. Bugle will be arriving too, so please wait a little. I did tell him I'd be fine by myself, though. But Ugle wouldn't listen, and kept saying he'd mediate, said Elrond, seeming a little unsatisfied. No, I get how Ugle feels. You always immediately try to skip work and stuff. Sorry for keeping you two waiting. I didn't have to wait that long for Ugle to come into the room. Well then, getting to it, I want to hurry and hand over the money we owe you for the purchases we made yesterday. M, the specifics are, it looked like parchment, but whatever it was, Ugle flipped through it as he confirmed the specifics of the sale. First are the 125 orc hides for 1000 gold, then the 63 lizardmen skins for 630 gold, the 102 ogre hides for 2040 gold, 113 troll hides for 2486 gold, 88 minotaur pelts for 1672 gold, 21 ogre magic stones, very small, for 315 gold, 23 troll magic stones, small, for 460 gold, 20 minotaur magic stones, small, for 380 gold, 7 giant killer mantis magic stones, small, for 147 gold, 15 bottles of the paralyzed butterflies paralyzing scales for 75 gold, 20 wild ape pelts for 160 gold, and a magic bag, small, for 280 gold makes for a total of 9,645 gold. The amount being what it is, we would like to emulate the merchant's guild here and pay you with white gold and large gold coins. Would that be acceptable? When I agreed to their suggestion, Mr. Eagle lined up 96 white gold coins, 4 large gold coins, and 5 gold coins on the table with a, well then. This is the money, please confirm the amount. The white gold coins number 1, 2, 3, 96, and there are 4 large gold and 5 gold coins. Yeah, this looks fine. Yes, there are no problems. This time, thanks to your efforts, Sir Mukota, we've been able to acquire a large amount of hides and magic stones. Truly, thank you for your contributions, said Ugle with a smile. It would have been better with the Vajaki fangs or the Manticore poison barb or Gustav's fangs or spine, though, Elrond whispered. Guildmaster, did you say something? No, not really. No, what are you doing playing dumb? You totally said something, whisper, and all. Well, whatever. I'll let it go this time. I really did want to just punch you when I heard that you'd bought Earth Dragon materials without consulting me, but in the end you were right and the blood and liver and stuff sold for more than I thought they would. Thanks to that, we're able to buy a lot of what Sir Mukota brought back from the dungeon like this. Yeah, yeah, right? Wasn't I right? I can do it when I try. So, I'm wondering, as a reward, if you could give me a budget to make the Earth Dragon's Fang into a sword right away. As soon as those words left Elrin's mouth, a vein popped on Ugle's forehead. A-H-H, you said something you shouldn't have. All this guy does is make Ugle mad. To an onlooker, he's just a good for nothing, but Ugle sure has it hard since he has to spend so much time with him. I pay respect to your hard work. Guildmaster, I did agree that you could make a sword out of the Earth Dragon's Fang and decorate the guild with it. Reluctantly, I must admit. However, consider the materials. Even if we were to order one, not just anyone would do. It doesn't seem like you understand, but we do have a limit to our budget. As a guild, 
nothing would be better than to be able to make this as cheap as possible. To that end, we'll have to have meetings and consultations in order to decide who we will be trusting with this task. And you're saying that you want to step all over that decision, and simply throw large amounts of money around to get it done right away? Given the materials, I'm sure it's possible if you just throw money around. By asking for funds right now, does that mean that you, as the guild master, want me to give you money that should be used to run the guild in order for you to satisfy your greed? Well, does it? Oof, he cornered Elrond with logic, there's no room to counter like this. And no, not especially. I didn't go that far. Elrond said, not meeting Ogle's gaze. Not that far, you say? That's what giving you funds right now means, you know. It's basically like an auction. I see. Ogle wants to entrust the task to the main blacksmithing workshop that offers the best conditions. You know Guildmaster, in the first place. Oof, Ogle started lecturing him. Elrond has a reluctant face on, he probably isn't listening at all. W well, Elrond never learns, I guess. For now, he's been treating me well too, so I guess I should help him out a bit. Um, Mr. Ogle. A-H-H. Excuse me, Sir Mukoda. The Guildmaster is so useless, I couldn't help myself. Ah, Ogle just called the Guildmaster useless right in front of him. No, it's fine. More importantly, I have something I want to give to the two of you. Um. I placed the basket with the pound cake in it before the two of them. Mr. Ogle, you treated me well the other day in the Merchant's Guild, and Elrond has been taking care of me ever since the Earth Dragon. So this is just a small token of my appreciation, something of a pastry. Please enjoy it. Eh, is it really all right? Yes, please. Oh, this is great. My wife and child love these kinds of things. And now Ugle was smiling too. It seemed like I wasn't wrong in choosing this, thank goodness. I'm also weak to sweet things, so I'm happy too. Let's enjoy this now with some tea. Surprisingly, it looked like Elrin liked sweets too. Guildmaster, what do you mean by that? You haven't even started on your work yet why are you taking time to enjoy tea? Once again, Google's forehead lit up with some twitching veins. And no, that's not it. Oh of course I'll do my work, don't be silly. Ha ha ha. Yeah, just do your work already, Elrond. You have to go to the capital too, so you have to make those preparations as well. Now then, it's about time to leave, I think. Wait, ah. Blacksmithing workshops came up earlier, and if I think about it couldn't I get them to make me a barbecue grill? When I asked Ugle, it seemed that since this was a dungeon city, almost all of the blacksmiths here specialized in weapons. So I can't get them to make me something that's not a weapon. There are a lot of stubborn ones amongst the blacksmiths, after all. I can't say what will happen until you talk to them. As I thought. For now, I guess I just have to go there and try negotiating, then. We left the Adventurers Guild, and headed for the area where all the blacksmithing workshops are. You idiot. Where do you think you are? Don't you dare show your face here again. I turned my back to the store I just got yelled out of. This was the fifth one. Coming here to the blacksmith workshops after leaving the Adventurers Guild was fine, but no place I went to would make me a barbecue grill. At first, they all said, what kind of weapon do you want? But when I replied with, no, it's not a weapon, I want something like this, and showed them an explanation I drew on paper, every single one of them flipped out in the middle. When I thought of blacksmiths, I imagined dwarves, and just like my imagination, all five of the places I'd went to were headed by dwarves. Just like their appearances suggested, they were stubborn old men, but they didn't have to yell that loudly. Dwarves have fuses as short as their stature, huh? Google did tell me that this place's blacksmiths were all stubborn and specialized in weapons, but I didn't think it'd be this bad. Why not just make it, you know? It's not like you can't make anything other than weapons. Still though, what to do? Ah, alcohol. All these blacksmiths are dwarves. And dwarves means alcohol. If I show them some booze I buy with my skill. Kiha, <laughs> this'll work. I can totally do this. Now that that was decided, it was time to buy some booze. Entering a back alley where no one would see me, I opened up my online supermarket. What would be good? It's gotta be something that's at least decently strong, right? If that's the case. Whiskey's pretty safe, isn't it? And speaking of whiskey, it's gotta be this. I don't really drink whiskey, but when I hear of it, I always think of this one. It's a square bottled whiskey from a certain Japanese maker. I bought a 700 ml bottle. It was alcohol from another world but I didn't think it was that different from anything that could be found here. For now, let's try appraising it. 
Whiskey Other World Whiskey. High in alcohol content. Will lower HP by 2% for 5 minutes. Oof, it's a debuff, not a buff. So it's not always a good thing to get something through my online supermarket, huh? 2% lower for 5 minutes, is it? Is that because it's alcohol? Is being drunk a status effect? I didn't really understand it, but it was good that I figured this out now. And it didn't seem like anything would change that dramatically with this whiskey. Good, then let's take this into the next place. Excuse me. Hmm? A customer, huh? What is it? When I entered the shop, there was a short, squat, but solidly built old man dwarf with a scruffy beard in a stubborn seeming manner. Great, just like I expected. This might work. Um, I want to order something. Sure. What weapon do you want? As I thought, orders basically equal weapons for these people, huh? Uh, I don't want to order a weapon. Can I just get you to listen to my request anyway? The old dwarf's eyebrows wrinkled together as soon as I mentioned it wasn't a weapon. Not a weapon, you say? Yes. Putting aside whether or not you'll make it, I'd appreciate if you'd at least listen to me. Well, I'm free right now so I'll at least listen. I'll decide whether or not I'll actually do it after that though. Yes, that's completely fine. I explained what I wanted while drawing on a piece of parchment that I'd bought from a store beforehand. Around this large, and this drawer here would be for putting coal in. And you see on this side, you could put a net over it, but I'd like you to make a hole here. Doing that will help the coal that you put in the drawer burn better. Also, I'd like you to make the netting on top here removable, as I'm going to be grilling meat on it. There was also fell and the others to consider, but I was also thinking that it'd be nice to open a stall with this in the future, so I asked for a bigger size. Ha, huh, just go home. You're lucky I'm gentle for a dwarf. You know, if you were talking to any of the other bosses around here they'd blow you away. Well, they didn't go quite that far, but... I've already been yelled out of several places. What? So you've been to other places already? Then you understand, right? There's no workshop here that'll take your order. Hmm, <laughs> so the workshops here are completely devoted to weapons, huh? But you know, I understood that already after being told no so many times. This time, though, I have an anti-dwarf secret weapon with me. Will you still refuse? Changing the subject, do you like alcohol, boss? You can tell just by looking at me, right? I'm a dwarf, you know? There's no way I'd hate alcohol. The old man was making a face like I'd just asked the extremely obvious. So dwarves loving alcohol doesn't even need to be said at this point, huh? To tell you the truth, I have one of these, I took a cup and the bottle of whiskey out of my item box and showed them to the dwarf. This is a really rare type of alcohol, and it's strong, so I think it'll match your dwarven tastes. Looking at the bottle of whiskey I had in my hands, the dwarven boss swallowed with an audible gulp. Feel free to try a cup. I opened up the whiskey and filled the cup. The scent of alcohol mixed with something sweet started wafting around. I proffered the cup filled with the amber-colored liquid to the dwarf. When the boss accepted the cup in hand, drawn to it, he took a swig after taking in the scent of the amber liquid. KKKHHH. So good. What the hell is this? This is the first time I've ever tasted alcohol this good. Kiha, looks like the secret weapon works just fine. You see, this alcohol is made in small amounts in that group of small countries, so it's hard to get a hold of. I have a little of it, you know? If you take my order, I can hand over five of these along with the regular payment. How's this? Going from his reaction, it seems like he's taken quite a liking to whiskey. It looked like the old man was thinking my offer over. Ten bottles. If you hand over ten bottles along with the regular payment, I'll do it. Great. Looks like the whiskey worked wonders. Got it, I'll give you ten bottles. And this will be thanks for taking the order. When I handed over the bottle I'd just opened, the old dwarf happily poured some into a cup. Ha, huh, so good. So there was liquor like this around. Those words spilled out of the old dwarf's mouth while he drank. I said something random like, it was made in small amounts in a part of the group of small countries, but it was actually from another world. I didn't really drink whiskey, so I wasn't really informed about this, but this whiskey had been popular for a really long time. And if it's been loved for that long, it's gotta be good, I think. How long will it take to finish? Let's see, three days. Come back in three days. How much will it be? It's pretty big, along with the payment for the materials, around 350 gold, I'd say. That much won't be a problem. Well then, I'll be back in three days, so I'm counting on you. Sure. 
Don't forget the alcohol, yourself. Not the money, but the alcohol, huh? Yep, he's a dwarf, all right. I forced a laugh, saying, yeah, got it, as I left the store. As soon as I was out, I saw Fel and the others asleep outside. And Sui was always asleep in my bag in the first place. He, we're going back I said to the sleeping Fel and Dora Chan through telepathy. Mn. Are you done? Huea, you're finally done, huh, I kept you waiting. I don't have anything else to do today, so let's go back to the inn I am hungry, too. When we go back, make food wondering if it was really that late already, I found that the sun had dipped quite a bit. It seemed like explaining and negotiating ate quite a bit of time. Now then, what should I do for today? I thought of the meat I had left in my item box. I'm running really low on orc general meat, right? I still have bloody hornbull and wyvern meat, though, as well as the orc meat from the dungeon. Also, I have about half of the giant tailpo that fell caught, and also all the cockatrice and rock bird meat he got, too. Since that's the case, I did want to try making that since the oven in the magic stove is so large. If it's this oven, it'll straight up fit. Right, let's do that. Now then, let's start making dinner. I would be making a simple whole roasted chicken stuffed with pilaf. I once tried making it for Christmas since I wanted to try eating one, and for some reason it started to become a tradition for me to make the roast chicken from then on for Christmas. Of course, I knew perfectly well how to make it. Hehe, <laughs> I've been planning to do this someday ever since I bought this magic stove. This time, I'd be using a whole cockatrice in my cooking. The cockatrice that had become just a lump of meat was about 1.5 meters in size, whole. As one might expect, roasting something like this whole should fill everyone up. Opening my online supermarket, I bought some herb salt and frozen pilaf, and also a brush to spread the oil. Well then, let's get to cooking. Since I basically despise difficult things, the roast chicken I make is easy and simple. All it took was stuffing the frozen pilaf into a roast chicken and baking it. Making the pilaf from scratch just added work, but it might be a good idea if one had the time. First, thoroughly rub some herb salt into the hole of the cockatrice. Make sure to do so for the inside as well. Once that's done, leave it alone for a while, and thaw the pilaf in the meantime. Truthfully, it'll be faster to just nuke it in a microwave, but as one might expect, it'll just be impossible to do that here, so I'll just cook it lightly in a pan to thaw it. I'll be baking it in the oven too, so just lightly is fine. Next, stuff the cockatrice's belly with the thawed pilaf. Once the stuffing is done, close the opening with a skewer, and tie the legs together with some kitchen twine to prevent it from losing shape. Use a brush to paint olive oil over the entirety of the cockatrice, then put it on top of a baking tray that you've covered with a cooking sheet. After that, just bake in a preheated oven. It'll take slightly less than an hour at 200 degrees, but I'll just have to eyeball it here. While it's baking, using the brush to baste the roast with its own melted fat will give it a good color and flavor, so I recommend it. Also, while it's cooking, turning it over so it's evenly browned will make the entire thing come out better as well. If you're worried about how it's cooking, stick a skewer in somewhere where the heat doesn't easily pass through, and if all you get out of it is clear fat, then you're good. Once it's well browned, remove any skewers and the string to complete the roast. A whole roast chicken even by itself just looks extravagant, doesn't it? On top of that, since it's a larger cockatrice, the effect is even greater. While I was looking at the finished roast chicken, I heard the voices of my hungry children. Looks good. Give it to us already. It's a huge chunk of meat. Sui wants to hurry up and eat it, everyone's eyes were glued to the roast chicken. I'm going to take the bones and separate the portions, so wait a little. While I deboned the roast, I also properly divided the meat and pilaf into everyone's dishes. Here. As soon as I served up their food, all of them started eating, entranced. MMM. This is incredible. Right? Right? It's good enough for even Fell to fall into a trance. Whole roasting it slowly in an oven really does make something completely different, huh? I love how the outside skin is so crisp. And this part has the flavor of that thing you call rice it tastes amazing oh ho, so you totally get it, huh, Dora-chan? You're completely correct. The crisp skin is irresistible, no? Also, the umami's thoroughly soaked into the pilaf, so that's great too. The skin is crispy, and the inside meat is soft and delicious, and all the meat juice just comes pouring out. This rice also tastes like the meat and is great, too, as expected of Sui the gourmand, it knows. Both the crispness of the skin and the bursting juiciness of the meat is thanks to roasting the thing whole. And since the pilaf was stuffed into the meat and is now soaked full of its juices and flavor, one would never think that it's just a frozen pilaf. 
looks like the roast chicken is a huge success. Now then, I should eat too. I probably shouldn't be saying this about something I made myself, but the melding of crispiness and juiciness is just too good. Being able to enjoy all the different parts of the chicken is one of the best parts of a whole roast, I think. Really, it's so satisfying. Fel and Sui both had another serving, and the roast chicken was cleanly finished off. All that was left were the bones. It looked like everyone enjoyed it, and they asked me to make it again. The dish was really simple, just stuffing and roasting it, so that might actually be a good idea. I am counting on you for the jiggly stuff, got it, Dora-chan, I already told you that the jiggly stuff is called pudding. Oh right. Give me some pudding. I haven't had any yet today, so I want two Dora-chan wants pudding, huh. And two at once, well he hasn't eaten any yet today. I also want some. The usual. By the usual, you mean strawberry shortcake, right? Do you want them both to be the same? Yes. So it's two of the usual strawberry shortcake for Fel I see. You know, Sui wants something Sui hasn't eaten yet, so Sui's looking for new flavors, huh? I fulfilled each of their wishes through Fumiya, two custard puddings, two strawberry shortcakes, and for Sui, an apple pie and strawberry roll cake. I gave each of them their treats, and they all scarfed them down, making it all seem absolutely delectable. Having had their after-meal dessert, all of them were acting satisfied. Personally, it's a bit too early for me to be sleeping. Ah, this is a good opportunity, so let's have Sui make that. The thing I've been wanting Sui to make for a while now, a mithril frying pan. Sui, I have something I want to ask of you. Wati, this is called a frying pan, you see. I want you to make one that's a little bigger, can you do it? As I showed Sui the frying pan, it touched the pan with its tentacle. Yeah, Sui can make this thing right away, if it's a frying pan, looks like Sui can make one easily and quickly, huh? I handed some mithril ore over to Sui. Uh, like this, and like this. Here, it's done dotto, so quick. I tried picking up the mithril frying pan that Sui made and handed over to me. How light. This is great. Let's try it out right now. I used the magic stove to heat up the mithril frying pan. Huh? No, it's too early to tell. Let's increase the heat. What's going on? This thing's not getting hot at all. Putting my hand on the frying pan, I couldn't feel any heat. Why? For now, I tried appraising the mithril frying pan. Mithril frying pan a frying pan made of mithril. Since it's mithril, it doesn't conduct heat. Doesn't conduct heat. What, it's useless. If it doesn't conduct heat there's no point in it being a frying pan, is there? I thought it was nice since it's so light, but like this, its usefulness is extremely limited. With that in mind, the mincer I had Sui make before was actually reasonable since, if it won't pass heat to the meat, you'd be able to grind it without damaging the meat. From now on, I'd have to remember the fact that it doesn't conduct heat for any cooking tools I wanted to make. At any rate, the frying pan is unusable, so I'll have to remake it into something else, huh? But what would be good? If it doesn't conduct heat, I wonder if that means it'll keep heat or cold inside. But thinking about Fel and the others, keeping heat might not be very necessary. It'll be a whole thing if they start eating things that are way too hot anyway. It'd be better to cool it to the perfect temperature. So that would mean keeping. The cold, huh? Let's remake it into a cup for me, and also some deep dishes for Fel and the others for drinks, I guess. Sui, it looks like this doesn't work for a frying pan, so can you remake it into one like this, and three like these? I showed Sui the cup and the deep dishes we always used, and had it remake the frying pan. Here, it's done dotto. Thanks. I quickly tried out the new mithril cup. Buying a bottle of iced coffee with my skill, I poured it into the mithril cup. Oh. Even without ice it's cool. Still though, I'd only just poured it in, so I decided to try it again after a while. Master Sui also wants to try some of the fizzy stuff seeing me drink some iced coffee, Sui also asked for some carbonated stuff. Mn. Then I want some too. Me too. Both Fel and Dorachan smoothly got on the bandwagon. Fine, fine, cola's all around, huh? I bought cola for everyone with my skill. Here, I tried having this made so you could drink out of it. It's mithril, so it'll keep what's inside cold. I poured cola into each of their deep dishes. Ha, huh, it is true that this is still cool. However, you are about the only one who would have the notion to do something as frivolous as to make something like this out of a precious material like mithril. Ahahaha. That's no joke. It's cold and fizzy and sweet. I love it. Say whatever you like. It's not like you can only make mithril into weapons, so I'll do whatever I like with it. 
it has a special attribute of not conducting heat, so it's a little bit of a waste to just force mithril into being weapons. I'll keep making cooking tools that seem like they'll be perfect in mithril. After finishing up the cola, Fel and Dorachan both let out a yawn before lying sideways. Sui was also sleeping in the bag. I guess I should go back to my room, too. By the way, the mithril cup kept the drinks perfectly cool, and the iced coffee I was drinking was as cold as it started until the end. After returning to my room, I started on my other job. It's about time for those people, gods, to get noisy if I don't talk to them. And there's the thing with the tenants, too. It's really annoying, but there's nothing I can do about it. If I take too long with it, they'll probably end up sending me an oracle, so I'll just hurry up and give the goddesses and the others their offerings. Can you hear me, everyone? When I called out to them, for some reason I got a bunch of noise and clamor back. You know I can't understand you all if you keep talking all at once like that? Um, if you all talk at once like that, I can't understand you at all. Please, one at a time. I once again heard a bunch of noise and clamor. Then, those voices stopped all at once. Looks like they reached an agreement. I am first. You. Th 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 that, that fumi ya. What the hell is it? Why isn't that the stuff of dreams? You did well in choosing that one. Good job. I give you my praise. Anyway, just give me all of Fumi Ya's cakes. Fumi Ya's cakes. Fumi Ya's cakes. Hand over all of Fumi Ya's cakes. Ninrir, you divine disappointment, calm down. Well, I did predict that it would turn out like this though. Still though, this was, a lot. Next is me. Why you, just so you know. We know that you got to pick a tenant because your unique skill leveled up. We know since we peeked in on your world there should be an alcohol store among those tenants, no, GRK. That voice must be Hephaestos. It did seem likely that there could be liquor stores among the tenants. You unlock your next tenant at level 40, right? Great. Hurry up and go level. And reach level 40 as fast as you can. And make the next tenant a liquor store, got it, no no no, what do you even mean, go level? My level won't raise that fast, you know? Actually, could you not just go demanding that of me? He's right. Go get to level 40 quickly. It's fine if you do it like you intend to die. And go and get a liquor store tenant. And that way we'll be able to get even more kinds of other world liquor. I'm tingling in excitement, wahahaha, and this would be Vahan. It's fine if I do it like I intend to die, was it? Of course that wouldn't be okay. I won't do it, there's no way, got it? I definitely wouldn't do anything just to level up. It wasn't like I was particularly inconvenienced right now, so I'd just level up incidentally while I lived my life as I would normally. Leave me alone. Next is level 40, huh? With just that much, it should be fine to just go to another dungeon. Go. Go now. And it's decided that your next tenant will be a liquor store Miss Agni. I won't go. I'll say it again, never. I won't go. What was she even saying? this goddess. I mean, she said the next one was decided to be a liquor store, but we didn't even know what choices would show up next. Wait a second, please don't just decide like that that the next tenant will be a liquor store. The next one's got to be a drug store. I also looked in on the other worlder boy's world. Drug stores have a lot of makeup and beauty products, so I'll be able to choose from a lot of those. The next one's got to be a drug store, okay, and this must be Kisharl, huh? You did some good research to know about drug stores. But we didn't even know if drug stores were an option in the first place. I didn't even know what choices I'd get when I reached level 40 and could pick a new tenant. Anyway, just go get to level 40, got it? Go. Okay. Right now. So everyone's gonna say that in harmony, huh? Please stop with this coercion. Doing it quickly is impossible. Utterly impossible. And it's not like I'm inconvenienced in any way as I am. I don't really need to level at all, I'm saying. Ahh everyone, you're telling me to hurry up to level 40, but I'm not really troubled as I am now, so I won't be doing that. Leaving leveling while living your life aside, who would ever do something like going to gain levels specifically? I won't do it, got it? Something like raising my level for tenants. What? Who knows when you'll get to level 40 if you say that? You're in a dungeon city already. Just go in again and get to level 40, right? Just go into the dungeon and hurry up to level 40. And no matter what, pick a liquor store for your tenant yeah, it's easy stuff since you have perfect defense and the ability to negate status ailments, right? Show us that you're a man right, right? 
Ignore the liquor, you should hurry up and get to level 40 so you can get a drugstore as a tenant. The gods Hephaestos, Vahan, Agni, and even Kisharl were all just saying whatever they liked. Um, I'm going to keep saying this, but I won't do something like going out of my way to level up. If you're going to force me into raising my level, I'll just stop giving you offerings altogether, and return your blessings. As soon as I said that, Hephaestos, Vahan, Agni, and Kisharl all started panicking. No. You can't do that. Definitely not. I'll stop telling you to raise your levels, all right. You don't have to force yourself to gain levels why yeah. You're fine without leveling why yes. After all, you'll probably gain those levels naturally eventually anyway good, seems like you all understand. Oh yes. In exchange for us not bothering you to raise your level anymore, it'd be nice if you about double our allowance from 3 silver. It looks like you're making lots of money, after all mm. Lady Kisharl, huh? How sharp. Oh. That's a great idea man, Kisharl, you sure come up with some good ideas sometimes. Really, I have few me ya, so I don't really care about tenants, but doubling our allowance is a great idea, double. Good all the gods were happy with Kisharl's suggestion. I shouldn't be saying this myself, but I think it's a great idea. Wait, Vahan, what did you mean by sometimes? I always have good ideas, well, Lady Kisharl, you said in exchange when there's nothing to exchange, though. Double of three silver. So six silver, huh? Hmm, <laughs> well I've been earning a lot of money recently, and even through all the quibbling, the gods have been giving me a lot, what with their blessings and skills and stuff. Understood. From now on, the allowance will be six silver. In exchange, no forcing me to raise my level, got it. After I made that announcement, I heard a bunch of cheers from their end. Okay, okay, quiet down. Now then, I'll be taking your orders. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Me. First is me. Fuel me yaw's cakes. They're cakes, I say. I want all of them. Ha, huh, that disappointment, Ninrir, did just say the same thing. Ninrir, six, silver is way too little for all of them. Hmm? Is that so? Ah. Then I will choose them, so let me see all of them, and now she wants to see, huh? It looked like she'd learned a bit about how my online supermarket worked. I guess she's gotten smarter. Oh, fine. There are people after you, so be quick about it, okay. All of the gods and goddesses in line after her agreed with me in loud voices. I know already. More importantly, hurry up and show me, I had no other choice, so I opened up the menu so that Ninrir could see, too. If you want to try all kinds of them, then this would be the best. I opened up the menu for cakes by the slice. Mahua. S so amazing. All of them look so good. They were all about 4 copper coins each, so that would be a total of 15 cakes. If you choose from this menu, each one is at most 4 copper coins, so you'll be able to get 15 of them. In response, Ninrir let out a loud, happy cheer. Is this goddess really fine? Still, with this much to choose from I'm starting to feel lost, then what about just choosing from top to bottom? Today you'll get the top 15, and then the next time you'll get the next 15, and so on. Oh. What a good idea. And just like that, I'll conquer all of Fumiya's products. Sure, sure. Whatever you like already. I loaded up Ninrir's cake slices into the cart. Who's next? Of course, next is me. Lady Kisharl, huh? I am starting to run out of shampoo and hair treatment, so I'd like more of those. I'd also like to see what you have available. Hmm, Kisharl wants to see, too? Really, everyone had just gotten a little smarter and they were all already a lot more trouble. I couldn't very well refuse to let Kisharl see when I allowed it for Ninrir, so I opened up the hair care page and let her see. When I did that, Kisharl started hitting me. With questions like, what kind of hair does this work best for, or, what kind of scent is this? A-H-H. They all look so good. Or rather, I never expected the other world to have so many kinds of shampoo and hair treatment. There's even all sorts of fragrances, what should I do, A-H-H, this is gonna take a while. It was the woman specific I like these own but this one is good too thing. This was the worst situation for people forced to carry their bags in the store or something. And if she takes too long. Hey. Hurry up, yeah. You're taking way too long. See? The liquor lovers are all annoyed. And yet, Lady Kisharl paid no heed to those voices. Really, I'm so lost. I can't just count out the ones I'm using now since I like their scent. Ah, 
what to do. If that's the case, what about a refill pack for the shampoo and hair treatment you're currently using, and then you can use your remaining allowance to buy two new bottles each for shampoo and hair treatment? That way, you can choose two of the series you're most interested in. Then, you'll be able to choose what to use depending on your mood. In response to my suggestion, Kisharl muttered something along the lines of, according to my mood, huh? That works. How about this new product here? When I tried calmly recommending a new product, Kisharl immediately latched on with a, new, you said. By new product, you mean new and not not used, right? Doesn't that mean it's better than the previous stuff? Well, since they're new, they probably do mix in some new components and nutrients to make it better, yes. I think that's most likely, then I'll take that. Hey, is there anything else new, M, there is. Looks like this one's new too, do you want it? Yes, please, then I'll be getting these three. I added the refills that Kisharl wanted, as well as the bottles of the new stuff. Next please. It's me, Agni. I want to get alcohol this time, too. I like beer the best, so I'd like to spend half on that. And use the second half on different stuff. I'm counting on you. You don't care to see the menu. I am good. It's more fun to anticipate how things will taste while you're drinking it I see, that does make some sense. Yeah, it'd be great if everyone was a little more like Agni. Alright then, let's get to picking some out. She's leaving it to me, and that's making me want to get her something good. First is the beer, and that's gotta be some of A Company's premium beer, 6 pack, and K Company's premium beer, 6 pack, right? Oh, also, why buy so beer, 6 pack? After that. Oh, there's this, too. There were some local beers too, so I chose those. A Takahara beer, 3 types of Ikago beer, and a beer from Yokohama. I also picked out an American whiskey, French rose wine, and an Italian red wine. Great, this should have Agni set. Next, Ruka. I want the same as Ninriro. Somehow, Ruka seems more aggressive than usual. You also want Fiumi Yaw's cakes today, Miss Ruka. Yes. Cake. Just like Ninrir, I want all different kinds so Ruka zeroed in on cakes this time too, huh? Seems like Ruka also likes sweet things, so I guess when she saw Fiumi Yaw's cakes. So I guess I'll just get the top 15, like with Ninrir. I put in a second set of the top 15 cake slices, just like with Ninrir. Good, this should be it. Next is, yo. We're next last is the liquor lovers combo, Hephaestos and Vahan, huh? We want whiskey and vodka, just like last time. But this time, we'll be choosing ourselves. So hurry up and show us fine, fine. I showed Hephaestos and Vahan the whiskeys that were on sale. These are the whiskeys they have. Oh so there were this many, I see. With this much, I understand being lost man, other world alcohol is amazing. Each one of these is different, right, yes. They're all whiskey, but they're all different makers from different places. M, they all differ slightly in taste according to people, it seems. I see. How amazing. I want to try all of them, but we're on a budget, yeah. So hey. Would you increase our budget a little? No. I've already doubled it. TCH, these two, did they just click their tongues at me? They totally did. By the way, out of these, which ones would you recommend? Hmm, I don't really drink whiskey. Ah, it'll be a little more expensive than the others, but I've heard quite a bit that this one is good. Also, I think it's ranked at the top of the whiskey world. Domestic whiskey from S Company. If I'm remembering right, they were on the news because they got ranked the world's number one whiskey. And I'd been hearing that they were good from all the liquor fanatics I knew, too. The world's best whiskey. Gulp gulp. Somehow, they achieved beautiful harmony there. And I even heard them swallowing some saliva after that. I want that world's best whiskey. Right war god, yeah, of course. As if we could pass up drinking the world's best whiskey yeah, yeah. So one, right? What about the rest? What do you think, blacksmithing god, hmm? <laughs> All of the alcohol from that world is good, but personally I like this black bottle here, by black bottle, do you mean this one? Indeed, that one Hephaestos pointed out a black bottle of whiskey from S Company. This one was famous, too. That one really was delicious. As for me, I liked this one with the art that looks like a bird like a bird, like a bird. Is this the one that Vahan was talking about? Do you mean this one? Yeah, yeah, that one it was an American whiskey. This one I s pretty popular too, I think. Then should I take these two bottles? That's fine you two have four silver left. What should I do? 
What about vodka? I opened up the vodka menu. There isn't a lot of vodka, that's right. The menu only had four types. When it came to vodka, the online supermarket's selection was extremely limited. You're right. It's very strong, and there's not as much interest in it as whiskey. Which ones did we have before, the last time, I gave you this one and this one. And before that was this one, so this is the only one you two haven't tried yet. After I said that, the liquor lovers combo started whispering amongst themselves. Then we'll take the one we haven't tried, and also this one with the blue letters blue letters? This one. Yes dot three whiskeys and two vodkas huh? M, they have one silver left. You have one silver left. What do you want to do? You won't be able to afford any vodka with it. There's several whiskeys you could get, though. Then make it a whiskey whiskey, huh? If that was the case, they could get this 700 ml bottle of scotch whiskey with the white horse label. Great, and this completes it. I lined up everyone's items on their own cardboard altars. Everyone, please take your offerings. As always, I started hearing the excited voices of the gods and goddesses. Fumiya. 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 With this, I can keep my beautiful hair. It's the world's best whiskey. Yahoo. Let's hurry and drink it, blacksmithing god, and so on and so forth. Ha, huh, so tired. And everyone kept telling me to show them, since they gained some cunning. Jeez. Let's just go to sleep already. At that time in the divine realm. Hey, blacksmithing god. What is it? The other worlder told us not to force him to level up, but I really think he should gain levels. Yeah. So you thought so too? I did. I mean, there were a lot of different kinds of alcohol there already, but what if we had a liquor store? Indeed. As ones who love alcohol, there is no option to let him get away now that we know that. Right? Just... If we start telling him to raise his level again, he'll just say that he's going to stop the offerings again. So, what about sneaking that skill in without telling him? He doesn't look at his status too often, after all. And even if he does notice, it doesn't seem like he'll get mad about it, since it won't get in his way or anything. That's a great idea, surely. By that skill, do you mean, that one? Yeah. If we give him that, he'll gain levels without even trying. Gahaha. Ahaha. Gahahahahaha. <laughs> I'm looking forward to when he reaches level 40. Yeah. And once that happens, of course the new tenant will be a liquor store. And thus, Makota gained a new skill out of nowhere. Double experience gain doubles gained experience. Obtaining this skill makes it easier to gain levels. I spent yesterday and the day before stocking up on pre-made food. We'd already conquered the dungeon, so I was thinking it was about time to leave town, after all. And part of the preparation for such a journey was pre-making food. Fell and the others said they wanted to go into the dungeon one more time, but of course I flat out denied that. If we were to do that, we'd end up wasting time. I made a lot of different food. From the fried foods that were fast becoming a staple, I made chicken carriage, as well as pork and hamburg steak cutlets. Of course, I also made versions stuffed with cheese. And also, there's wyvern and bloody horn bowl meat for rice bowls, right? And after that, beef stew and hamburg steaks. Of course, those also came in cheese stuffed versions. I also made some gyoza. Thanks to the mithril mincer, making ground meat was easy and really helped the cooking. Also, because it turned out great when I made it before, I made tanjiru and flavored soft boiled eggs. I also tried making some new stuff that I hadn't made before. A simple meat tofu recipe that only required sautéing and boiling, after sautéing some orc meat with onions thoroughly. Add in water, granulated dashi, mirin, soy sauce, and sugar before bringing it all to a boil. Then, add firm tofu and give it all a quick boil to finish. I also marinated things in the magic bag that would taste better with the flavors of the tanjiru or stewed pork soaked in it, like the soft boiled eggs. Since I had ground meat lying around, I also tried making meat stuffed peppers. Well, the meat is just the same Hamburg base, though. All I did was wash the peppers well, have them, and dig out the seeds before stuffing in the Hamburg steak meat. And after lightly sprinkling it with some wheat flour, I seared it with the meat facing down, and once it started showing some color, I mixed it into a solution of oyster sauce, soy sauce, and sugar dissolved into water and let it steam for a while to finish. And just like that, I spent two days yesterday and the day before that making food. Thanks to that, I've recovered quite a bit of pre-made stock, so I should be able to take it a little easy while we travel. And now, I was heading once again into the area where all the blacksmithing workshops were, in order to receive the barbecue grill I ordered. 
Of course, I'd already stocked up on 10 square bottles of the Japanese whiskey from S Company. I'm looking forward to see how well it turned out. Hello Dot. Heyo. It's just you. I finished what you ordered. It's over this way. The old dwarven head of this blacksmithing workshop led me with those words, and when we arrived, I saw the barbecue grill I had ordered placed snugly in a tight space. I got closer and checked how it had turned out. Oh. This is great. It's just as I ordered. It was just as big as I wanted, and the place to put in the charcoal was made into a drawer, too. And there was a hole next to the drawer just like I'd asked for, so the passage of air looked good. The net on top was able to be removed now too. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly what I asked for. It's really good. Of course it is, you lout. Who do you think I am? I'm one of the top five blacksmiths in this place. Eh, really. When I came before, I just started from whatever place was nearest, so I didn't really pay much attention to that kind of thing. Given how many workshops there are in this place, isn't that pretty amazing, to be among the top five? So this old dwarf was actually a really amazing. Blacksmith, huh? This old man's name was Alesh, right? So this workshop is called Alesh's blacksmithing workshop, huh? It was a coincidence, but I'm happy I asked him. He perfectly handled my request for a barbecue grill, after all. So, how are you planning on taking back something this big? Did you ask someone to help you carry it? A-H-H, I have an item box, so I'll be fine. I see. Okay then. But, did you bring that? He's talking about that, right? Of course. You're talking about this, right? I produced the square whiskey bottles from S Company from my item box. Yeah, that. Do you know just how much I was looking forward to this? The old dwarf, or Alesh, jumped at the whiskey I revealed. He's rubbing his cheeks on the bottle. Wow, he really does like the stuff. M, 10 bottles was the deal, yes. I took out the bottles one after the other and placed them in front of Alesh. Yahoo! I've got some great stuff. He was looking really happy. So, how much will it be? A-H-H, right. Well, it was my first time making this, so I estimated a little high at 350 gold, but with the materials, 300 gold will be fine. But, it's cheaper than what he told me. He's one of the five best blacksmiths in Dolan, so I was thinking he'd raise the price compared to before but I'm glad it's 300 gold. I took out a single bag with 300 gold in it from my item box. Well then, here it is. Sure. Without even confirming the bag I handed over contained the promised amount, he just took it and carried it to a separate room. Uh, do you not need to check what's inside? What? Are you trying to cheat me? No, no, I would never. That bag had 300 gold in it, and I hadn't touched it at all. It should undoubtedly have 300 gold coins in it. If there's not enough I'll just come over to your place and take what I'm owed. Aren't you that adventurer with the familiars that got famous for beating the dungeon here recently? Huh? Am I that well known? For some reason the Adventurer's Guild isn't making a big deal of it, so I only heard about you recently, though. A-H-H, because mouths, unlike doors, can't be locked. Yes, well, I am, I guess. I don't really want to become that big a deal myself, so if you could keep it quiet. Well, I get that. If you do something like conquer a dungeon, lots of folks will try to get closer, after all. Wait, doesn't that mean you have something that can become a sword? I shouldn't really be asking, though. Apparently amongst all weapons, Alesh is particularly good at crafting swords, so he couldn't help but be interested in it. Well, it's not like I don't. Like what? Uh, just some stuff I got near the deepest level. Near the deepest level, huh? If it's a material for swords, I can see it. I guess it really would be impossible for me to buy, Alesh said, disappointed. It probably would be, since most likely those would run in the thousands of gold coins. But. Um, Alesh, you're one of the five best blacksmiths here, right? Yeah. I don't know about claiming that myself, but I have been told that. If that's the case, putting aside whether they'll actually accept you, the Adventurers Guild should come knocking soon. Hmm? Did they buy something that would warrant that? I couldn't answer him either way. But, from how Eagle was talking about it, there were a limited number of people here who could render that into a sword, and they would be deciding who to ask for it after talking to each of them. And if Alesh really was one of the top five here, they should ask him as well. While I stayed silent, Alesh picked up what I was putting down, and said, I see. Ah, right, do you want to test that out now? Yes, that's what I'm planning. I wanted to try it out as soon as I could, 
So I was going to do a barbecue today. Then do it here. I have charcoal and everything. I'm confident in my work, but this is the first time I've made one, you know? If there's anything you don't like about it, I'll be able to fix it right away if you do it here. In exchange, let me use it a little too. Oh, that'd be great. I decided to take him up on his offer and test the grill then and there. We went through the store to the other side of the building. Apparently, this space was usually used to test the sharpness of swords or spears or whatever. It was decided to use this place to open up a barbecue with Alesh. Of course, Fel and Dora Chan, who were waiting outside, were here as well. I prepared orc and bloody hornbowl meat to use. When I tried to prepare vegetables too, both Fel and Dora Chan said that we don't need vegetables. So, with no other choice, we ended up with a meat-only barbecue. I was using the charcoal that was in the workshop. As soon as I laid the orc and bloody hornbowl meat onto the netting, the sizzling sounds of cooking meat started. Can I use it too? Yes, feel free. He asked me to use it earlier, too, what is he going to grill? These sausages are homemade. I was the one that made them, and I used salt, so they're pretty good, you know? This'll go great with the liquor. You can try some too. Oh, sausages, huh? He said it'll go well with alcohol, so that means that he intended to drink while testing this all along. Well, whatever. More importantly, he said that it was homemade. How did he do it? Did he order the meat and then pack it himself? When I asked, apparently, butchers just sold the meat normally. Apparently, Alesh was using innards from a sheep monster named, White Sheep. It seemed that for sausages, this kind of meat was most common. I see. If you can just buy innards, then all I would need is salt and pepper to make some herb fresh sausages. I learned something good today. Oh, the meat's just about ready. Please try this meat too, Alesh. This is a traditional sauce from my homeland that goes well with meat. Once the meat is done, please eat it with this. I used the long time selling yakiniku tear I was accustomed to and had in my item box. I put it in a container and handed it over to Alesh along with a fork. I feel bad for having you treat me. Ah, my sausages are also done. Here. He gave me four of his sausages. After plating both the orc and bloody hornbowl meat into dishes and adding the tear, I served them to my three familiars along with the sausages I was given. I also quickly tried Alesh's homemade sausages. When I bit into it, there was a small, neat sound of it bursting. He only used salt, but meat juices gushed out from the inside of the thin casing, and it was pretty. Delicious. KKHHH. This sausage really goes great with the stuff I got from you. Alesh wasted no time in downing some whiskey. Hmm, <laughs> does whiskey go with sausages? If you think of sausages, wouldn't that come to mind first? Please wait a second. I moved somewhere where Alesh wouldn't be able to see me and opened up my online supermarket. Canned beer is. A bottle would be less suspicious. I bought five bottles of S Company's premium bottled beer for now. The meat will pair better with this. Try some. I poured some of the premium beer into a cup and handed it over to Alesh. Mm. Ale? I don't hate it, but the one I got from you is far better. It's not even a contest. It's not ale. It's one of the special alcohols I carry with me. What? Then I'll try it. GLGLGGLGLG pfff. Good chug. So good. What the hell is this? It's like ale, but it's completely different. Why is all the stuff you have this great? Yeah, it's gotta be beer with barbecue, right? I'll be drinking too. GLGLGLG pfff. AHH, that hits the spot. In the end, it turned into a day for drinking and barbecuing. All three of my familiars thought the barbecue was delicious, and ate silently. We had come to the Adventurer's Guild. Tomorrow we were leaving Dolan, so we came to inform them of that. The plan was to say our goodbyes to Dolan tomorrow, and then head to Nijhoff. When I made that announcement, all three of my familiars wanted to go into the dungeon one more time, but of course I said no. I mean, we'd already conquered it. What need was there to go in again? Not to mention, if we did go in, who knew how long we'd be stuck in there? We have to move on to Nijhoff from here, and then from there to our destination, the seaside town of Berliand. Also, since I had asked for a wyvern skin mantle to be made from Lambert in Carolina, we'd have to wrap up this journey before it was finished and go back. With those things in mind, it was about time to move on. I got booed by all three of them, but I somehow managed to calm them down by saying that there wasn't any need to be attached to this specific dungeon, and that there were all sorts of dungeons in other places in the country to try out. And then, I promised that if we had a chance, we'd go to one. 
Well, there's no plans for any other dungeon at the moment, anyway. Welcome, Makoda. Elrond came over. And Mr. Ogle was next to him. Welcome, Sir Makoda. It looked like I was about to be taken to the Guildmaster's room on the second floor, but I said that I didn't have any real business and managed to get them to stay here. I was thinking of leaving this place behind tomorrow, so I came to tell you about that. What? You're leaving already. Come on, stay until I have to leave too. I want to be seen off by Dora Chan, Elrin said, sending hot gazes towards Dora Chan. Being stared at like that, Dora Chan used telepathy to say to me, Wow, this guy's kinda creeping me out, Dora Chan also hid behind me in an effort to not be in Elrin's line of sight. Ha, huh, just as I was wondering what you would spout out of that mouth next. You, Boogle even sighed. Sir Makoda, feel free to just ignore what the guild master says. More importantly, thank you for the treats you gave us last time. My wife and child enjoyed it very much. On top of that being the first time they'd seen something like this, with how rare it is to eat something sweet, both of them were very happy. Oh, that's great to hear. As I thought, nothing like pound cake exists here, huh? A-H-H, that stuff, huh? I also ate it after I went home, it was delicious. I'm weak to sweet stuff, you know? I finished it all in two days. You ate it all in two days, Elrond? That really is too much sugar. That's something made in a certain place in that group of small countries, so I get it occasionally. It's great that you liked it. I made it so that it came from the same place as my whiskey. Oh, is that so? It was good, so I was hoping for more if you had. Any, Elrin said, causing Ogle to put on an exasperated expression. Thank you for such a precious item. No, no, you've been treating me very well. Elrin was kind of strange, but he did well with the Earth Dragon. And Ogle didn't even need to be expounded upon. Well then, take care, you two. When I tried to leave since I was done, Elrond called out to me. Makoda, please don't forget about that case. What? What case? What, you already forgot? Didn't you promise to come back if you got more dragons? A-H-H, right. I think I promised him that because Elrin loves dragons. Or rather, Elrin's probably the only one who can butcher dragons. I know already. Ah, uh, oh yeah, I'm heading towards Berliand, and we're going to try and catch a sea serpent there. How about one of those? Was a sea serpent a type of dragon? Sea serpents? I've hunted sea serpents myself, so I'm fine without. Rather than that, go get a leviathan. I'll happily butcher one of those. Elrin said, looking at both Fel and I. Aren't leviathans like bosses of the sea? Seems impossible, but Fel's the one that's going to be hunting. Fel, can you get a leviathan? As if there would just be a leviathan lying around. Even I have only seen one about three times. Well, I did hunt one before, though. If we find one, I shall get it. So you did hunt one. W well, we're talking about fell, here. Really? Please, Pleas. I'm counting on you. After hearing fell's words, Elrond got really excited. W well, just like fell said, that's only if we find one. Please don't expect too much. I said that, but it didn't seem like Elrond was listening, his head was too full of thoughts of leviathans. MMR Ogle. Ha <laughs> ha, just leave that idiot alone. S sure. Okay then, you've been great to us. Thanks. Leaving the excited Elrond behind, we left the Adventurer's Guild. After leaving the Adventurer's Guild behind, we headed for the city gates. Part of the reason was because Fel said that he wanted to go hunting. It was true that we'd been cooped up in the city for the past several days, and so it was decided for us to go. While Fel was hunting, I'd be free, so I was planning to try out the method of making sausages that I'd heard from Alesh yesterday. Stopping at a butcher's on the way out, I picked up some salt-pickled white sheep just like I was told to buy Alesh. The price was pretty low, so I bought a lot. Now then, let us go. Yeah, we're off. This time, Dorachan would be accompanying Fel on his hunt. Apparently Dorachan needed some exercise. Well, he was a wild monster before we met him, at least in name. It seemed that, if he didn't move around enough, it caused him stress. Ah, wait a second. If you're both going, you should have this. I got the magic bag out of my item box, and hung it around Fel's neck. We're leaving Dolan tomorrow, so having them butchered into meat will have to wait until the next town. So you don't have to get that much. Or rather, make sure you guys control yourselves. Mn. Fine. What? But I wanted to hunt a lot to make up for all the exercise I need why are you guys so gung-ho about hunting? You know we don't need that much. 
Okay then, make sure you guys don't stay out too long. I know. I get it. With those words, Fel and Dorachan dashed off into the forest. Now then, let's start making these sausages. Truthfully, I'd actually made caseless sausages before. Those tasted great, so I did think that I wanted to someday try making real, cased sausages. And so, I looked up sites that taught methods for making cased sausages several times. I was planning on using those memories to make these sausages. Every site warned against letting the temperature get too high when kneading the ground meat. If the temperature got too high, the meat would dry out and refuse to come together, which would ruin the taste. Apparently the perfect temperature for kneading ground meat is lower than 10 degrees. I remembered that, and so that was why Sui was here. Hehe, <laughs> right now I can get any number of heat-resistant cooking tools. And so, do your best, Sui. Sui, can you make this? And also, I showed Sui the larger bowl I customarily used, and also drew plans for a metal mouthpiece to use for piping the sausages. I asked Sui to make several of the bowls. Got it. I didn't have a physical example of the clasp, but it was a simple thing, so Sui got it just from my explanation. When I handed over the mithril ore, Sui quickly finished a bowl and a metal mouthpiece for piping the sausages. Thanks, Sui. Now then, first I need to make the ground meat. I started running orc meat through the mithril mincer. The ground meat was being dumped into the mithril bowl that Sui had just made. Turning the handle, I ground out more and more meat. Yeah, this should be good enough. After this, I still need to buy some spices and more cooking tools through the online supermarket. I had salt, sugar, and lemon juice, bottled, so I bought coarsely ground black pepper, herb salt, and a piping bag to use when stuffing the intestines into the casing. This time, I was planning to make two flavors, coarsely ground black pepper flavor, and herb lemon flavor. First up is desalinating the white sheep intestines, right? After rinsing the intestines with water to wash off the salt, I let them soak in a bowl of water for a while. Meanwhile, I seasoned the ground meat and kneaded in the flavors. This is the most important part. The ice water is necessary to keep the temperature from going up, so I make it with more ice than water. The ice, which I had fell produce beforehand, was stored in my item box. First up is the coarsely ground black pepper flavor. Pour the ice water with the ice still inside into the mithril bowl. Put the ground meat inside along with some salt, sugar, and coarsely ground pepper and knead until it becomes sticky. It's surprising that you're supposed to put the ice water directly in the bowl, but it looks like that's in order to cool the meat. Of course, only a limited amount of water is used, just enough to coat the surface of the ice. All that's left is to cool your hands with the ice and knead the meat, apparently. It's a bit hard since it's so cold, but I power through it. It seems like the most important point of this step is to knead while not letting the meat's temperature rise. Throw away the rest of the ice, and temporarily store the ground meat into my item box while it's still cold. Using the same method, I make ground meat flavored with herb salt and lemon juice, for an herb lemon flavor. With this, I'm done preparing the ground meat. All that's left is to pack in the desalinated white sheep intestines. First, attach the metal mouthpiece that Sui made to the piping bag. Then, insert the mouthpiece into the end of the sheep's intestines, and reel the intestines in so that the mouthpiece is inserted completely. Fill the piping bag with the flavored ground meat while making sure that there are no pockets of air inside, and squirt out just a little bit through the mouthpiece and then cut off that section. Apparently, that's in order to make sure no air gets in when you're filling the intestines. Once that's done, pull on the intestines that are attached to the bag, and tie off the end again while being careful not to rip the intestines, and continue to fill the casings. Once the meat is packed in, add in a little bit of space to the end and tie it off at an appropriate length before spinning the sausage around several times. After cutting the spot where the casing is twisted, the sausage is complete. I repeated that process several times, and made a large amount of sausages in both flavors. For now, I put the finished sausages in a lidded plastic container before throwing it all in my item box. This sausage is pure fresh sausage that hasn't been boiled, if I remember correctly, cooking it in a pan might cause the casing to break so I should slowly cook it on a grill instead? Yeah, seems perfect for barbecue. If I'm using a barbecue grill, then just having sausages might seem kind of, dull. Let's prepare some other meat too, I guess. When we ate barbecue yesterday, we added the tear on top to eat, but... Maybe this time I'll marinate it in the tear. First, I need to buy the ingredients for the tear from my online supermarket. I already had soy sauce, sugar, and cooking sake, so I added garlic, onions, ground sesame seeds, in a pack, sesame oil, and 100% apple juice to the cart. This time, I'd be grating raw garlic. Because for pickling, 
Raw garlic is better. Then I minced the onions. Adding soy sauce, sugar, sake, grated garlic, minced onions, ground sesame, sesame oil, and apple juice as a secret ingredient in a bowl and mixing it all together completed the pickling tear. Then, add in the bloody horn bowl meat, lightly massage in the flavor, and wrap the bowl and let it soak for around 20 minutes. Do the same thing for orc meat. Hmm, <laughs> the sun's set pretty far now, so Fel and Dora Chan should be back before long. Guess I should start getting the barbecue grill ready. First I should get the charcoal. I bought the charcoal with my skill. Bringing out the order made barbecue grill from my item box, I put the charcoal into the drawer and lit it. I started slowly grilling the sausages I'd just made on the grill. The grilling sausages released an appetizing fragrance. Flipping them, I made sure to thoroughly grill all of the sausages. I felt my shoulder getting heavier. Sui had got on before I noticed. Smells good dot yeah. It does. The sear marks are looking nice, should be just about done. When I tried splitting one open, I found that the insides were cooked thoroughly it was finished. Let's see, a taste. Oh. Delicious. The meat was really juicy, and since I made sure the flavor was a bit stronger than usual, it could be served as it was. Aw oh man, Sui wants to eat too, here, try some. Picking one up with my tongs, I handed the sausage over to Sui. Wah. Delicious. The meat juice comes bursting out from inside this thin skin, it was the first time making cased sausages for me, it's great that it turned out well. A-H-H. Why are you guys eating first? M-N-N, I will not forgive you for eating without us. Oh, looks like Fel and Dorachan came back at the perfect time. No, I'm telling you, I just finished making this, so we were just taste testing it. More importantly, how were your results? We did moderately well. What did not fit in the magic bag, we left over there. Following Fell's line of sight, I saw two huge monsters on their side. Wah! I tried blinking rapidly several times before looking back at the scene, but as I thought, it didn't change. That's... a rhino and a saber-toothed tiger, right? When I tried appraising them, the rhino was a dim grey rhino, and the saber-toothed tiger was just the same, a saber-toothed tiger. Both of them were A-ranked monsters. I did tell you to keep it in moderation, right? No you know, it was there, so we just... It's fine, isn't it? I was the one that got the saber-toothed tiger. Aren't I great, Fell, don't just me. Also, Dora-chan, you don't have to act that smug. Ha, huh, well, let's just leave hearing about the rest of your success for after our meal. Let's eat first. Oh, that is a great idea. We're hungry after all that hunting, after all sure, sure. I'll be opening up that magic bag after, though. I plated the finished sausages, and served them to my three familiars. MM. This is delicious. I feel like I could eat an infinite number of these. Just snapping open the thin skin, the meat juices inside come flooding out. This is great, the meat juices just burst out, it's delicious. Sui loves this, oh man, these sausages are getting rave reviews. It's great that I went with these. I tried some more of the coarsely ground black pepper flavor I just ate, as well as the herb lemon flavor sausages. Oh. This one is great too. The smell of the herbs and the lemon passes through my sinuses. This one's got a refreshing sort of flavor. If one were to name a drink that would pair well with this, it's gotta be this. I bought some beer from the online supermarket. This time I chose a company's dry beer, black variety. After immediately cracking it open and gulping some down, I smoothly took another bite of the sausage. And then another draft. GLGLGLG Puerva. So good. Since it's a cleansing beer that goes down easily, it pairs great with the sausages. This is bad, it feels like I can keep eating this combo forever. And while I was absorbed in those thoughts, the demand for more came from the others. I plated more sausages for them. Let's start grilling the marinated bloody hornbull and orc meat next. As I laid the meat down on the grill, the fragrant smell of cooking meat tickled my nose. Ah, what a good smell. After flipping the meat and grilling it some more. It should be good now. Let's try a bit. Aye aye on down it goes. Ha, huh, yeah, this tear tastes great. I've made it several times, but the sweet and spicy flavor with the taste of the sesame works so well. It's great. After plating the finished bloody hornbull and orc meat on a different plate, I served them to my familiars. Here, the meat's done. Oh. This one also smells great. I can still keep going. Meat dot seems like they're all still going strong, judging by how they're chomping down on that meat. Yeah, yeah, charcoal grilling is great, right? I'll eat too. A-H-H, 
this one goes great with black beer, as well. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed the meat until they were full. With the meal finished and after the cleaning up of the grill and other stuff was done, it was time to open up the magic bag. What came out was a dim gray rhino and a black serpent, a giant dodo, and two cockatrices. This makes two dim gray rhinos, can you even eat rhinos? Hey, are these dim gray rhinos edible? When I asked, fell waffled, no, well. Pfff ha Dim gray rhino meat is tough, you can't eat it. And fell still got two of them, mn. If we talk about hunting inedible monsters, did you not also hunt one, Dora? The saber-toothed tiger's meat is too smelly to eat. Gh. Sigh, you know, I'd really like you two to keep it to monsters we can eat if you have to go hunting. Mnn, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Got it no, I mean, what with the dungeon, we already have more than enough money, so monsters that can only be sold for materials aren't of much use. Edible monsters are much more useful to us right now. I guess the dim gray rhinos and the saber-toothed tiger can just sleep in my item box for now. I'll turn the black serpent, giant dodo, and cockatrices into meat at the next town. Now then, it's about time we went back to town. We made our way through the dim streets of the evening back to town. It was finally time, tomorrow we would make our way to the town of Nijhoff. Gossip, three heroes escaped from the kingdom. Aaron had tried to put the dominance bracelet on Kanan. We managed to put it off this time, but there wouldn't be a next. Kanan and I stayed vigilant, aiming for a chance for us to run. After some time, that chance arrived. It happened while we were out hunting monsters in the name of leveling up, as usual. The request we'd taken from the Adventurer's Guild was to exterminate some ogres that had recently started showing up near a road leading to the capital. There was only one stray ogre that appeared, so the extermination concluded without any problems. It was during our return from that trip. On our way back, all of a sudden a huge wolf suddenly blocked our path. Grrrrrrrrrrrr. Ah, that's an A-ranked great wolf. Why is it here? A anyway, we have to defeat it. Leonard, Aaron, and Louise all readied their weapons. From their reactions, and the fact that it was an A-ranked monster, I could tell it was really dangerous. It was probably at the level where we would somehow be able to beat it if all of us worked together to fight. Kaito, Kanan, Ryo, your magic. Leonard raised his voice, and the three of us started chanting our magics. Oh blazing ball of fire burn mine enemies. As we started our chants, the great wolf came at us at a terrifying speed. The moment the great wolf jumped on us. Aaaaaah. I heard a shouting voice from beside me. When I looked that way, Ryo's left arm had disappeared, from the elbow down. The great wolf uses wind magic. Quickly, shoot your magic. I heard a voice shouting at us, it was most likely Aaron. The great wolf, hearing that voice, aimed for the three knights next. This was a chance for us. We can take Ryo, who lost the bracelet along with her arm, with us. Kanan, heal Ryo. I immediately started chanting magic. Oh blazing ball of fire, burn mine enemies to nothing. Fireball. Oh raging arrow of fire, pierce through mine enemies. Fire arrow. After unleashing a fireball, I also followed up with the strongest attack spell I had at the moment, a fire arrow. The spells exploded on the spot where the great wolf and the three knights were. Kanan, Ryo, let's run while we can. When I told them that, Ryo, who was unsteady on her feet, and Kanan, who was supporting Ryo, started forcing their way through the forest along with me. We just recklessly moved our feet to go forward. While we were running, I talked to Ryo. Ryo. Are you alright? Ryo's face was colored bluish-white, and it didn't seem like she could reply. However, her arm's bleeding was already stopped, and some new skin had already formed on the stump. I used one of our potions, and also a healing spell, and somehow managed to stop the bleeding. I don't think she'll die. Kanan was the one that replied. Kanan. At any rate we need to head west. We'll run west and into the kingdom of Marvale. Got it. The kingdom of Rajziger's capital was basically right in the middle of its territory. This was the road leading south of the capital. If we just head west from where we are, we should be able to make it to the kingdom of Marvale. I also snuck out a compass-like magic item out from the capital with us. At any rate, we went west. As we desperately moved our legs to go farther, Ryo's legs finally gave out and she fell without power. It seemed that she lost consciousness due to the loss of blood. I carried the unconscious Ryo on my back. Kanan, no matter what, we head west. Right now, we need to gain some distance, at all costs. Yes. Let's hurry. Wordlessly, we moved west through the forest. At that time, I shot my fireball and fire arrow at both the great wolf. 
and the three knights. The spells exploded where they landed, and the entire area was wreathed in fire. It was possible, that right there, I killed not only the great wolf, but all three of those knights. It'd just be an excuse, but I was desperate then. If we stayed in that country, both Canaan and I would also be treated like slaves. Surely, we would have been forced into wars, and made to fight right at the tip of the spear. That was clear from the way they only sought combat ability from heroes. I definitely didn't want to spend the rest of my life a slave like that. Kanan probably also knew what I just did, but she didn't say anything. That's just how desperate we were. I'll take a hard pass on being used by Rajzijer as they please. As if I'd ever accept being a slave. Kanan and I frantically moved west in a bid to escape. When it got dark, we decided to spend the night in the cavity of a large tree. Having had a dinner of some black bread and water out of the food stocks we'd accumulated in our item boxes, Kanan and I decided to trade off turns to be on guard. I'll be first. Make sure you rest when you can. I know. Wake me up when it's time to switch. I strained my eyes, staring into the darkness of the night. Every once in a while, I would hear the cry of some animal. I'll never allow us to be caught, my small voice echoed really loudly. And, I'll definitely protect you too. It was something like my determination. At first, I was going to abandon Rio, using the excuse that there was nothing we could do. However, the bracelet disappeared, and like that, we managed to run together. Rio lost her arm, but even that might go back to the way it was. There might be some kind of potion or magic to replace a lost arm. As long as we keep living past this point, we can just try to find something like that. Like this, we managed to run away, all three of us, together. I'll definitely protect these two. After a slightly longer than planned shift, I switched with Kanan and rested myself. The next morning, I woke up to find Rio also awake. Rio, are you alright? Yes, somehow. Do you remember what happened? When I asked, Rio said that she did, kind of. Apparently, after Leonard slipped the dominance bracelet on her, she started getting attacked by the feeling that she wasn't herself after about three days. She started readily saying things she'd normally never say, and she had this kind of weird hazy sense that she wasn't herself, like she was just watching a movie the whole time. The bracelet that you put on, Rio, apparently, that was a dominance bracelet. Once you put that on, you'll follow the orders of the person that's the master of the item, and it seems that only the master can take the bracelet off. I see. So that's why as soon as I put that bracelet on, I started listening to everything Leonard said. We won't become anything like slaves. Never. He's right. Kaito, Ryo, and I, all three of us will run away. As long as we get to the Kingdom of Marvale, we'll be able to make things work. Yeah, because the Kingdom of Marvale is just about to go to war with this country. Even if it's found out that we're heroes summoned from another world, I don't think they'd send us back to this country. But, I'm missing an arm. I'll just drag you guys down with me. What are you saying? As if that would ever be the case. You're great at magic, right, Ryo? Do you need your arm to use magic? You can fight just fine without your arm, right? Also, you're by far the best at healing magic, aren't you? Ryo. Right. It'll be no good if you aren't around to use healing magic, Ryo. We're going to the Kingdom of Marvale together. Kaito, Kanan. SNFF. Let's all get to the Kingdom of Marvale, no matter what. Yes. Yeah. We swore to each other to get to the Kingdom of Marvale together, no. Matter what. Chapter 5, Arrival at the Town of Nijhoff I was riding on Fell's back as we made our way down the road. This morning, we left Dolan. For some reason Elrond was waiting at the gates making trouble by saying things like, Dora-chan, and, you know what, I really will go with you, but we somehow managed to get him to back down before we left. The next town would be Nijhoff. If I remembered correctly, it was a town of pottery, and there were a lot of ceramics workshops around. Pottery. I'm looking forward to it. It might be nice if I can find a lot of different dinnerware and cutlery in Nijhoff. Let's thoroughly sightsee in this place. He. It's about time to stop for food, indeed, let us. The sun was at its highest point, so it was about time for lunch. We stopped at the side of the road for a break. Food. Food, Dorachan said while flying around, before finally coming to a stop next to Fell. Food, Sui also jumped out of my shoulder bag. Now then, what should I make? Hmm, this and that with all sorts of ground meat, I guess. First up, I needed some seaweed, white sesame, and eggs. I piled some steamed rice into the deep dishes and spread some shredded seaweed on top. And on top of that, 
I added the minced meat I made before, leaving a small cavity in the middle. There, I added an egg yolk before sprinkling some white sesame on it to finish off the minced meat bowl. Everyone ate a lot, so I gave them two yolks each. Oh, let's plate up some of those meat stuffed peppers I made before, too. Food. As soon as I said that and put out the dishes, everyone jumped on them. Oh, the yolks mixed in here make it pretty good. As for this, this. Green container is not needed. That's right, fell. The yolks round out the flavor. By green container, does he mean the peppers? It's stuffed peppers, so it wouldn't be anything without the peppers. This salty sweet meat and the egg go together great. The fragrance of these white bits brings out even more flavor, and the salty sweet flavor is great here, too the sesame makes for a good accent, right? Dora-chan, sorry for making both of them basically the same flavor. I mean, this kind of flavor pairs with rice the best, so it just ended up that way. It might have been good to just bake the meat stuffed peppers and eat it with ketchup. Sui loves this meat and eggs. It's delicious, I know, because Sui loves meat and eggs, right? Isn't the mixture of the egg yolks and minced meat great? Yeah, yeah, seeing you all enjoy this so much makes cooking it all worth it. Looking at everyone chowing down, there's some sort of sense of accomplishment. Now then, I should dig in too. The minced meat bowl is, yeah, it's good. As I thought, the eggs were a good idea. The salty sweet minced meat is rounded out by the mixed in egg yolks. There's no way this wouldn't go great with rice. The meat stuffed peppers are also the same flavor, so that one pairs with rice, too. More. More. Give me more of this, too I served up another serving of minced meat bowl and meat stuffed peppers to Fel and Sui, as well as another minced meat bowl for Dora Chan. Fel and Sui also had several more servings after that. After the meal, we all took a small break while I drank some tea, and everyone else enjoyed cider. Now then, it's about time to go. Indeed. Once again climbing onto Fel's back, we set off towards Nijhof. Five days after we left Dolan. We were making good progress in our travels. According to Fel, we should reach Nijhof before evening tomorrow. We are stopping around here for today. Yeah. The sun was just about to set, so we would be camping here for today. While I was preparing dinner, a merchant caravan with its accompanying guard of adventurers stopped on the road. Then, they pulled their carriages to the side of the road alongside us, and the coachman got down from his seat. Would it be okay for us to camp alongside you? Go right ahead. They weren't exactly in our way, so I didn't mind, but recently this stuff had been happening a lot. Somehow, every time we set up camp, some merchants that were behind us pulled up and camped right next to us. Yesterday, there were even two parties to either side. Well, it's the road leading out from the dungeon city of Dolan, so I guess this happens because there's just a lot of people around. The conversation of the merchants who set up camp next to Makota's party. There really was an adventurer with familiars. Yes. From what I heard, it looks like they were the ones who conquered the dungeon in Dolan. Looks like it. It's not like I don't trust you guys, but it's comforting to know that there's an A-ranked adventurer nearby. Those familiars look really strong, too. We get it already. Of course we'll keep watch too, but emotionally, having an A-ranked adventurer nearby will be a huge load off. I don't think it's a bad idea to do something like this if we have the chance. Talk of the A-ranked adventurer with familiars is a hot topic among adventurers and merchants with good ears, after all. If you want to make a tough journey even a little easier, there's no better way than riding on their coattails. We'd finally arrived at the town of Nijhof. It was probably because of the shiny new A-ranked adventurer's guild card, but even with Fell along, I was easily let into town. It was smaller than Dolan, but it was still lively in its own way. Just as the title of A Town of Pottery would suggest, there were lots of stores selling pottery right on the streets. This is something to look forward to. Oh, there's the Adventurer's Guild. We entered the Adventurer's Guild in the town of Nijhof. Thanks to us arriving in Nijhof faster than planned, the guild's reception desk was empty. If I'm remembering correctly, Google did say that he'd let the guild in Nijhof know that we were coming, right? Excuse me, I'm Makota, when I said that and flashed my ranked guild card, the receptionist lady replied, please wait, before leaving her seat. Yeah, looks like Ugle properly contacted them. After a while, a white-haired, bearded, mountain hermit-like man in his seventies revealed himself. Ho. 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 You are Makota, yes? I heard about you from Ugle and Dolan. I am the guild master for the Adventurer's Guild in this town of Nijhof, please call me Joran. Pleased to meet you. And the same to that Fenrir and the others over there. Joran saw that Fel was a Fenrir in one shot. That means he must be pretty powerful. 
Well, he was a guild master. Pleased to meet you. Now, let's talk in my room, shall we? We followed after Joran. We were let through to the guild master's room on the second floor of the adventurer's guild, and I was leisurely served some tea as we took a breather. Next to me, Dora Chan and Sui, who came out of my bag, were sat. Fel was sleeping in a corner of the room. Now then, let's talk, why don't we? You're willing to take some high-ranking quests that have been sitting for a while now, right? Yes. Well, really Fel's going to be the one doing them. I'm grateful, Sonny. To tell you the truth there's two of them that have been sitting around. One of them. According to Joran, about a month ago, the quarry site for the clay they used for their pottery started being obstructed by a cyclops that had suddenly appeared, and no work was able to be done. Moreover, the three people that were working there at the time had become its victims, too. It would have been fine if the Cyclops left for somewhere after that, but the Cyclops developed a taste for humans, and so started to just squat in the quarry site. There was another site for clay, so it was currently being dealt with by having the ceramics workshops limiting their requests for clay. However, there were already complaints being lobbied by the workshops. Apparently, if this situation continued, there was going to start being problems with their work. This town was said to be the town for pottery, so having their source materials for such work being blocked was bad. And also, the second one is, according to him, in a forest west of town, there had been a large outbreak of carnivorous plants called evil plants. Apparently, due to the large number of them, it was too dangerous for regular adventurers to get close. The forest west of town was a source for part of the town's firewood for their kills, so there had been requests for the plants to be exterminated quickly. The first one, the Cyclops, is a one-eyed giant, right? Joran said it was an A-ranked monster. For the second one, the evil plants are C-ranked monsters, but since there's such a large outbreak, it's predicted that there are evolved versions in their midst. By the way, the evolved evil plants are called giant evil plants, and they're twice as big as regular evil plants. Hmm, <laughs> it'll most likely be fine with everyone, but I guess I should still ask. Was everyone listening? They want us to exterminate a cyclops and some evil plants, is that fine? Who do you think you are talking to? Of course it is fine, Fell immediately replied. A cyclops, huh? Those slow and dull things aren't even worthy to be my enemies. Of course, the evil plants, too, Sui will do it too. Dora Chan and Sui also replied using telepathy. Yeah, looks like everyone's on board. Mr. Joran, which one of the two would you like us to do first? That'd be the evil plants in the forest to the west, Sunny. I don't mind if you save the cyclops in the quarry site until later, since we have another source of clay. Well then, how far is the forest to the west from here? About three hours walk. Three hours walk, huh? Farfell, that'll be pretty much instant. Then, let's just hurry up and finish what we can. That way I can take my time and... Sightsee. Fell, are you okay with doing it tomorrow? Yes, that will not be a problem. Dora-chan, Sui, are both of you fine? Of course. Sui is fine, then, I guess we'll be off tomorrow. Then tomorrow, we will go and exterminate the evil plants in the forest to the west. Ha, huh, already? It's nice that you're so fast with your work, Sunny. Ah, right. There was something I wanted to ask. Um, I have a question. What is it? I'd like to rent a single house to stay in while we're here, is there one? In response to my question, Joran shot fell a glance. One that will fit a Fenrir. Yes. One that I would be able to stay in with my familiars would be nice. There were inns that were okay with familiars, but it seemed like any size of kennel was too constricting for Fell. Fell's our biggest earner, and it's thanks to Fell that my wallet is so thick. Or rather, it's enough money for me to play around my whole life, so even if it's a little expensive, it'd be better to rent a place that can fit Fell. That was the idea that popped into my head while we were traveling from Dolan. If it was just rooms at an inn, the Adventurers Guild could recommend you to any number of them. But if you want to rent a house, it'll be quite the sum is that fine. Yes, I know that already. If that's the case, it would be better for the Merchant's Guild to show you some places. I'll write you a letter of introduction right now, so just wait a little, Sonny. After a small wait, Joran handed over a written letter of introduction. If you bring this to the reception desk at the Merchant's Guild they should accommodate you a little better. Thank you very much. After inquiring into the location of the Merchant's Guild, we left the Adventurer's Guild. We arrived at Nijhoff's Merchant's Guild. Since Fell's around, we sure are the center of attention. Let's hurry up and finish our business. I went to the desk and showed my letter of introduction. Please wait a little. The receptionist at the desk left her seat with the letter. 
After a short while, an older man with a good build and short mustache who looked to be in his mid-40s came over. Sir Mukota, it is a pleasure meeting you. I am the Nijhoff Merchants Guild Branch's sub-guildmaster. Please call me Domenico. I will be in your care. Since you have a letter of introduction from the Guildmaster of the Adventurer's Guild, Joran, normally the Guildmaster would be the one who would take care of you, but unfortunately he is out, so I will be in charge of this transaction. Looks like Joran's letter worked wonders. The sub-guildmaster not only came, but he's treating me really respectfully while rubbing both his hands together. Thanks for being so polite. Well then, to get straight to the point. You'd like to rent a single house big enough to stay in with your familiars, correct? Yes. I'm thinking of renting it for about a week to ten days while I'm in this town. I don't mind if the price is a little high. Domenico, the sub-guildmaster, started confirming the listings by taking out documents from the back. There are three listings that would fit with your conditions. Three, huh? That's quite a lot. Domenico started to talk about each of the three houses. For the first one, it was Domenico's recommendation, and it was a house that used to be owned by a master of a workshop, a 7LDK mansion that is, seven rooms plus living room, dining room, and kitchen. It was also relatively close to the center of town, and also not that far from the Adventurer's Guild. It was a little smaller than the other two, but it was still big enough to easily fit Fell. Since the location of the place was good, the rental fee for this place would be 60 gold per week. What do you even mean, a 7LDK is small? If that's the case, then just how monstrously big are the other two? The second one was a little ways away from the center of town, but it used to be a noble's villa, so it was a huge mansion with a large garden, a 13LDK. The rooms in the center were also each made to be large, and since it was a noble's the decorations had a gorgeous feeling to them. The houses here were all big, but since it was rather far from the center of town, the rental fee would only be 63 gold for the week. For the third, this one was also rather far from the center of town, and it was a 10LDK mansion that used to belong to a merchant. Since this building was rather old, and also even farther from the center of town than the last, it was only 45 gold per week to rent it. From what I heard, out of the three of them, the first seemed to be the best deal. Most importantly, it was close to the center of town and the Adventurer's Guild, and that was enticing to me. Even though Domenico said it was rather small, it was still a 7LDK, so to me it was a huge mansion. For now, I told Domenico to show me the first one that I was most interested in, and if I liked it, I would just stay there. This way. Led by Domenico, we had arrived at the first listing. After opening the gate, we stood in a pretty spacious front garden. With many red, yellow, and pink flowers blooming, the garden itself was a little small, but there was also a water fountain. It's a bit modest, but as you can see, it is being properly maintained. Huh? Did he just say that this was a small garden? It's about two tennis courts big, isn't that more than enough space? Well then, please, come inside. From the outside, the building itself was quite splendid, and from my point of view, it was like a dream house. The front doors were arched double doors, and even Fell could easily fit through them. Guided by Domenico, everyone entered the house. After entering, we were in the entry hall, which was big enough to surprise us. The sense of openness from an atrium was added to the entry hall, and it was big enough for everyone to be able to sleep just here. This is pretty good. Ha, huh, this is pretty spacious, it's great yai yai, it seemed Fell liked it at first glance, and even Dora-chan was mirroring Fell's opinions. Sui was also happily bouncing around. There was a spiral staircase set flush into the wall in the wide entry hall. I'd only seen houses with spiral staircases on TV. I'll show you around. We followed Domenico into what seemed to be the living room, appearing to be 30 tatami large. After that was the dining room with a large dining table that might seat 10 people. Not only that, but the chairs that came as a set with that table had very detailed work in some places and the design looked very expensive. And then, after the dining room was the kitchen. However, the size and equipment in the kitchen called to mind a restaurant's kitchen, rather than a home kitchen. A magic stove, and this place even comes complete with a magic refrigeration unit. The magic stove was the same model that I had, the newest one with four burners. As for the magic refrigerator, it was like a small three tatami room was just turned into one as is. W wow, this place. It's like a celebrity's mansion or something. After that, he showed us the rooms on the second floor, and the master bedroom was 20 tatami large, and had an expensive looking carpet spread out in it. It even had a king size bed with a canopy. The other rooms on the second floor weren't as large as the master bedroom, but each one had a carpet in them that looked just as expensive, as well as a queen-sized bed. 
When it came to houses of this class, of course it would have a bath, and it was about 1.5 times bigger than my bath, with a flower pattern. If I recall, ones with art on them are expensive, right? Noticing my surprise, Domenico said a little boastfully, baths of this size don't come around often, but this is the town of pottery, after all. It's true that this town makes bathtubs, from what I'd heard. As expected from the town of pottery. It looked like all three of my familiars liked this place, and of course I did too. Not only was it close to the center of town, it was also fairly close to the Adventurer's Guild, and having huge spacious rooms like this, along with a massive kitchen with its amazing equipment, was like a house straight out of my dreams. It was a perfect house. For now, I signed a contract to rent this house for one week. Okay then, the fee will be 60 gold. I handed the payment over to Domenico. Yes, I have certainly received your payment of 60 gold. This is the key to the house. If you would like to extend your rental, please do us the favor of coming to the Merchant's Guild. After handing over the key to me, Domenico returned to the Merchant's Guild. Starting from today, this place would be our base for a week. Feels like I'm a celebrity already. Ah, right. It's just about time for dinner, so let's hurry up and try out that kitchen. What should I make? Ah. I should make that. The thing that I held back on making since the smell would be so strong. This house is detached, and if it's here, we're separated from our neighbors, so it seems like it'll be fine. Now that I remembered it, I really want to eat it. I'll be making that for today's dinner. MMMM, a spacious kitchen just feels so good. I'll be making something for the masses, though. The dish I will be cooking is something that could be said to be the food of the Japanese masses, curry. Of course, it was one of my all-time favorites. Maan, I've been wanting to eat this ever since I came to this world. I've made curry-flavored tandoori chicken, but just having curry flavor alone means it's something completely different. I like curry a lot, so I've been to specialized curry places, and also tried curry made by an actual Indian person, and those restaurant curries were also delicious. However, in the end, what I returned to was homemade curry. It's like the flavor of home that I've gotten used to, but never bored of. Or actually, I think curry just really fits a Japanese person's palate, in the end. I'll be making a completely normal, homemade curry, just like usual. First thing is to get ingredients from my online supermarket. I already had potatoes and onions, so I just bought carrots and the all-important curry roux. I bought two kinds, these last couple years, using two different kinds had been my recipe. That way, the flavors become more abundant, I felt. It was just something of a habit for me. The first curry roux I'd be using has been locked in for a while now, and that was the long-selling curry roux with apple and honey in it. This one's been used by my parents too, and I just feel like it's good. I've tried using other curry roux, but I really do just come back to this one every time. And the other curry I use depends on my mood, like a new product or something. Today. Let's use this, a curry roux from G Company marked as premium. This one's got some richness to it, and I like it quite a bit. Considering Fell and the others, I've chosen the spicy versions of each of them. Ah, there's this too. I made this before, and it's both simple and really delicious, while looking through the selection of curry roux, I happened upon a dry kima curry roux from a company famous for their spices. I'd made it before, and it was both really easy and really delicious. It went well with rice or even bread. I'd definitely like to make this to store for later. And so, I also decided to make some dry kima curry. Let's see, the last time I made it, the back of the box said that the basic ingredients were mixed ground meat, onions, tomato, and carrots, right? Let's make it the same way this time, so all I'll need is the dry kima curry roux and tomatoes. Looks like this is it. I checked out everything in my cart. Great, let's start cooking. First up is the meat, definitely the meat. For the homemade curry, I'd be using thinly cut orc meat, and for the kima curry, I'd use bloody hornbull and orc mixed ground meat. Once I cut the orc thinly, I'd use the mincer to grind it up. I prepared a large amount of both types of meat. Then, I started to make the homemade curry first. First, peel the potatoes and the carrots. Cut the potatoes into small bite-sized chunks, and the carrots into ginkgo cuts. As for the onions, have them before cutting them thinly. Start sweating the onions in an oiled pot, and once the onions go half transparent, add in the orc meat, since Fell and the others are here too, add in extra meat, and keep cooking. When the meat changes color, add in the potatoes and carrots and lightly cook once again before adding in water and setting it to boil. While scooping out the lye, once the water starts boiling, lower the heat and let it simmer until the potatoes and carrots become soft. Once that happens, 
Turn off the heat for a while, and melt both types of curry roux in the pot. When the roux is completely dissolved, turn on the burner and set it to low heat to simmer until some water evaporates and the whole thing gains some thickness to finish out the dish. MMMM, what a nice smell. I wonder why the smell of curry stirs the appetite so much. I want to put the curry on some freshly steamed rice right now and chow down, but no, I need to endure. I have to make the dry kima curry. Hmm, it smells, strange. It really does. It's like nothing I've ever smelled before AHH Sui knows this smell. Sui smelled this before, lured by the smell of curry, my three familiars came into the kitchen. Yeah, curry really does have a strong smell. Still though, Sui's got quite the memory. Looks like it remembers the tandoori chicken I made before. Today's dish is called curry. It's a really, incredibly popular food back where I'm from. Hmm, <laughs> and? Is it good? I like it, so I'll say it's delicious, but for you guys, just try it out, and if you don't like it, I can just grill some meat. They ate the tandoori chicken I made before, but this time is real curry. Although I do kind of wonder how the spiciness will go over with them. It smells strange, but I do not hate this smell. I understand, I will try it. Yeah. I'm excited, it's my first time eating this sui will eat too. Dot wait, everyone's already fully ready to eat it? I was going to serve it once the dry kima curry was done, but I guess there's nothing for it. After piling up some rice in their deep dishes, I poured a lot of curry on top. Here. I served all three of them the curry. Mm. This is a little spicy. But, I do not hate it. While saying that, Fell was eating greedily, his face messy with brown. Oh. It really is spicy, but it's good. I like this, looks like Dorachan likes it, unexpectedly. Just like Fell, Dorachan was eating greedily, his face stained brown. It's spicy, but Sui can take this much. It's got a lot of smells and a lot of tastes. So Sui thinks it's good. Sui also likes this. I used some sweeter roux, but still chose the spicy kind, so I was wondering how it would go over, but it looked like Sui was fine with it. I was a little worried about making curry here, since it uses so many spices, but looks like it's going over well. Or rather, it looks like I'll be able to keep making curry from now on, huh? Great. Okay then, while everyone's eating, I should finish up this dry kima curry. Mince the onions, tomatoes, and carrots. Then, start off by sautéing the minced onions in an oiled frying pan until it turns clear. Next, add in the carrots and keep cooking. Once the carrots have wilted a little, add in the mixed ground meat and keep cooking. When the meat changes color, add in the minced tomatoes and keep cooking while crushing the tomatoes. Stop the heat for a moment, and add in the dry kima curry roux while mixing well. Once done mixing, turn on the heat, and start cooking on low heat until the tomatoes lose all their water, making sure not to burn the dish. Oh. This dry kima curry looks really good, too. Mn. Something new? Give me that, too. Me too. Sui too, I already served them seconds of the curry while I was making the dry kima curry, though. I was going to save this for later. Oh, fine. After once again molding some rice in their deep dishes and adding a lot of the dry kima curry on top. Hmm, <laughs> using that as a topping would make it taste better, I think. I quickly got some eggs with my skill. As a topping, add an egg yolk right in the middle. Breaking the yolk, I mixed up the dry kima curry and served it. Here. Everyone started eating. Oh. It is several levels spicier than the last one, I feel, but it is good with the egg mixed in. I prefer this one. So Fel likes the dry kima curry more, huh? Seems like adding the egg yolk was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. This one really is spicier than the last one. But since the egg yolk is mixed in, it doesn't feel too spicy. This one's good too. I like both, so this one works for Dora Chan, too? Seems like he just likes the taste of curry. Thanks to the egg Sui can eat it, but Sui thinks this is a little too spicy so it's too much for Sui. This one's medium spicy, after all. Adding in some grated apples might make it easier to eat for Sui. I'll try it out the next time I make it. Now then, I should dig in too. First is the homemade curry. Pour on some of the spicy smelling curry on top of this white rice, there. Ah, I forgot something important. I bought some vegetables pickled in soy sauce with my skill, and added it to my curry. It's perfect. Let's see, a bite. Oh, this flavor. It's the flavor. Yeah, curry is great. I usually make it medium spicy, but mild is good too. There is no world in which this dense, spicy flavor wouldn't go well with rice. With the pickled vegetables as a palate cleanser, man my appetite just goes and goes. 
after putting down a whole plate in a flash, it was on to the dry kima curry. More. I want this one with the egg in it. Sui wants more too. Sui wants the goopy one. Brrp, I'm good already. I ate a little too much, fine, fine. Dry kima curry for Fel, and homemade curry for Sui, right? And Dora Chan had two plates of homemade and dry kima curry, so he's good, I see. After serving Fel and Sui their extra portions, I served up my own portion of dry kima curry. Let's see. Oh, this one's great too. My egg yolk topping was right on the money. It rounds and softens the dish, it's delicious. Today I just used raw egg yolk, but par boiled egg might be good too. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Ha I totally ate. Even after that, Fel and Sui had more, and both the homemade and dry kima curry was cleaned out. I should have made a little more, I was a little hesitant about how the curry would be received, so I'd made a little less. That was a mistake. Even though I was thinking that putting some dry kima curry in a bread roll to make a curry dog would be a great idea. Ah, putting some melty cheese on top seems delicious, too. Ahh, I should have made a little more of the dry kima curry. After cleaning up the remains of dinner, it was time for a bath. I finally have a roomy and gorgeous bath, I'm going to get in every day while I'm here. Ah, right. Fell, I'm washing you, too. In response to my words, Fell gave a small start. W.Y. It has only been a scant month since you last washed me. I mean, you've been carrying around that smell ever since you ate that curry. It must have sunk into you. After hearing that, Fell started sniffing his own body. Now that you mention it, I do smell that last meal, although it is not overbearing or unpleasant. Right? This house's bath is spacious enough that you can get in, so I'm taking this chance to wash you. Fine. However, I will not get in hot water. Fine, fine. We all went into the bathroom. This house's bathroom was huge, around eight tatami large, surrounded by walls of some marble-like smooth stone. There was also a horizontally long window up in a place where people would not be able to peek in, placed in order to vent steam. And, if I put in some magic here. Wow. It got bright, Sui, excited about the brightness, started to bounce around. Just what I'd expect out of a mansion this fancy, it's got magic lights in all the perfect spots. Of course, there was one in the bathroom, too, and it lit up the place brightly just like a light bulb would, with just a little magic power. From what Domenico said, here too. I inserted some more magic into the top of a faucet near the bathtub. Hot water started pouring out of it. Oh. That's awesome. So there's magic tools like this, too, huh. Once the tub was appropriately filled, I started off by washing Fell. I'm also naked, so it's no problem even if he shakes around and drenches me. Since it hadn't been that long since I last washed him, there wasn't too much tangled fur. I had Sui suck in the hot water from the bath and pour it over Fell. Thanks to Sui's shower, Fell was actually getting soaked. Once Fell was thoroughly wet, I applied the vet-recommended shampoo I bought with my skill and started washing him. SKSHHSKSHH Fell usually asked me to put more power into it, so this time I went strong from the get-go. Hmm, <laughs> you are doing pretty well this time. Ah, uh, is that right? SKRSHSKRSHSKSHHSKSHH. MM, keep on there. Sure, fine. He's itchy here, huh? SKRSHSKRSHSKRSHSKRSHSKRSHSKRSHSKRSHSKRSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSHSH
I also lathered Dora-chan up and washed his entire body, and I did the same to Sui, although it didn't look like the slime would get dirty at all. By the time everyone had rinsed away the soap, the bath had gained enough water. I remembered that I actually still had some of those carbon dioxide infused bath additives that I'd bought before, so I retrieved them from my item box. The bath was large, so I splurged and put in two of the additive tablets. Oka okay, why, let's get in. When all three of us got in the bath, some of the water overflowed. Who, baths are just the best. Oh, it feels so good. So good. Just like always, Dora-chan and Sui floated around in the bath. This bath is nice. It's big enough for all of us to fit with room to spare. Ha, huh, yeah, baths are great. All my tiredness just seeps out of me. I'm gonna be getting in every day while we're here, I muttered to myself. Me too dot. Sui too dot it's looking like both Dora-chan and Sui have converted into bathing believers. While getting refreshed by the hot water and the smell of the bath additives, we all enjoyed our time in the bath. It'll be so nice being able to get in every day. It might be nice to change what I put in the bath every day, now that I have the chance. Oh, there's that brand of water and hot spring bath additives too it might be nice to try those and enjoy the feel of being in a hot spring. There's a lot of different bath stuff being released right now, after all. Let's shop for some different stuff before getting in again tomorrow. I've got more things to look forward to now. After getting out of the bath, I went up to the second floor and looked for Fell. I was wondering where he decided to sleep, and it turned out he was on the floor in the master bedroom. Even though there's a nice and soft carpet on the floor, you know the bed is right there, you could have just got on. When I said that, Fell replied that he didn't want to, because it seemed like he'd fall off if he moved even a little. It's true, seems like he'd fall off if he moved a little. I like my own bed. Give me my bed. So he likes his personal futon. I did as Fell asked and laid out his futon after retrieving it from my item box. Sui will sleep here. With those words, Sui bounced onto the King's Eyes bed. I'll sleep here too, and Dora Chan also landed on top of the King's Eyes bed. Master, let's all sleep together. I was going to sleep in a different room, but now Sui's gone and invited me. I can't refuse like this. And so, we all ended up sleeping in the same room even though we had rented a huge mansion. Nothing changes, huh? Well, whatever. Wait, there's something I've got to do before I sleep. It's just going to be really noisy if I do it here, so I guess I'll move to another room. When I tried to leave the room, Fell asked me, where are you going? I have to go make offerings to those gods. Mm. I see. Make sure you do it properly. It looks like Fell respects Ninrir, that divine disappointment, but you should know that she's not worth it. She's just a person with a huge sweet tooth. And the other gods are unexpectedly really faithful to their desires, too. They're far more worldly than they should be. Well, it was thanks to them being that way that I could be so carefree when interacting with them, although that was probably not a good thing. They'd given me their blessings, too, along with all three of my familiars, so I felt a little indebted to them as well. That doesn't mean I'll spoil them, though. Now then, let's get to offering them their allotted six silver. Is everyone around? As soon as I called out to them, the gods' voices all rang out loudly. Okay then, I'd like to hurry up and listen to your requests, so will the first one be Ninrir, as usual. It's best to hurry up and get these kinds of things over with. <laughs> I've been waiting. Just like you've said, I'm first. Those cakes from Fumiya before were just the best. Of course it will be more. Cakes for me, hurry it up, don't you hurry me. I'll only be sending it to you after hearing everyone's orders anyway. Is it okay to just keep going down the list from before? Let's see. The last time I got her the first 15 cake slices from Fumiya, right? Then next will be. From the cake slice menu, there's only 8 more, huh? Ninrir, can you see the menu? If we continue from before, there's only 8 left. What will you do for the rest? Apparently they're holding an early summer's sweets fair, so do you want something from that? It's a time limited menu, so you'll only be able to get it now. What? Time limited? Let me see. That was Miss Ninrir the Divine Disappointment's command, so I let her see the sweets fair menu. Mahua. A all of them look so good. A all of them, I want all of them. Taking all of these would put her over her allowance. Choosing all of these will be too much money, unless you sacrifice some cake slices. What do you want to do? Mm. Really? I want all of them, can I really not have them, you can't. I can't give you preferential treatment. Mnn, you're so cheap. Fine, prioritize the time-limited menu. 
since I can only get these now understood. I dumped the entirety of the limited menu for the sweets fare into the cart. A white roll cake that used salt, Mont Blancs, fruit gelatin cake, all kinds of cool and refreshing types of cake were lined up. At first I was surprised, thinking, salt and sweets? Oh yeah, that kind of stuff was pretty popular, wasn't it? Apparently having just a little bit of saltiness made the sweetness stand out even more. Using the rest of her allowance, I bought seven more cakes off of the cake slices menu. She's off by one slice, huh? Well, she'll just have to wait for next time. Next is Lady Kisharl, right? Even I started to remember the order by now. That's right. I'd like some facial lotion this time. I'm running out of what I got last time last time. That kind of expensive stuff, right? Last time, it was the cream from the same line, I think. Okay, but what do you want other than that? What about a facial cleanser from the same series? That's a good idea. Let's go with that I added the slightly expensive facial lotion and the cleanser from the same series into the cart. The cleanser was only two silver, so there's still one left, huh? Lady Kisharl, you still have one silver left, what do you want to do with it? I'd recommend some bath additives, bath additives? Sounds good. They smell nice, and adding them to a bath helps take your tiredness away, right? Since there were a lot of different bath additives, and just showing it to her would be faster, I opened up the menu. Can you see it? Yes, I can I recommend this tablet type that releases carbon dioxide. If you just want to enjoy the fragrance, how about this variety pack of herb scents? That sounds nice, give me that, please you can afford one more, I see. What do you want for the other one? Hmm, <laughs> is there anything to help make your skin smooth, if you're looking for that kind of effect? Looks like those are in this section here. There's a lot I see. I don't know what to choose. Which ones do you think smell the best, hmm, <laughs> even if you ask me that? Ah, what about this one? It says it's good for dry skin, and its scent is sweet and fruity, so it smells like fruits. Oh my. That sounds nice. Get me that one with that settled, I added them to the cart. M, next is Agni, right? Yep, it's me. The beer from before was really good. Especially that pack of six. Give me that one again. Other than that, just give me whatever you think is best oh, looks like she liked the beer I picked out for her last time. It should have been A and K Company's premium beers, and also why buy so beer, right? I got a six pack of each. Agni likes beer so it might be a good idea to add some more beer to this, as well. Oh, there's a new Ybisa beer. It was a little expensive, but it looked good, so I added a six-pack of that as well. Oh, a black beer might be good too. I tried adding in the black version of the dry beer I drank from A Company the other day, as well as the black version of the beer everyone thinks of when they think of K Company, and also the black version of Ybisa's beer with the creamy foam as it's selling. Point, and finally, S Company's premium black beer. There's a lot more varieties on top of this. There's quite a lot of domestic black beers, huh? Lastly, I used up the last of her allowance on a Chilean wine. Next is Miss Ruka, yes. The food you make looks delicious, but... I'd rather have Fumiya's cakes after all. Make it the same as Ninrir. I also want the limited stuff Miss Ruka's being unusually talkative. She must really like Fumiya's cakes. Having a limited time menu really does stir interest, doesn't it? Just as Ruka wanted, I ordered her the same thing I did for Ninrir. And lastly, it's the liquor lovers combo. Next is Hephaestos and Vahan, right? Indeed, you are correct right, well then, what will it be this time? The world's best whiskey from before. That one was so good it was surprising yeah, that was my first time with alcohol so good ahh, that domestic whiskey from S Company, huh? You definitely have to get us more of that. One for each of us, got it? Yeah, I want to enjoy one as much as I like on my own oh, looks like both of them are hooked on that domestic whiskey from's company, huh? And what would you like apart from that? Whiskey is all well and good, but there isn't much left, right, that domestic whiskey from s company was pretty expensive, after all. But even so, it was still the cheapest out of this lineup. Let's see. There isn't much left, no. What should we do, blacksmith god, if that's the case, I think it'd be good to get something we haven't tried before. What do you think, War God, that's a great idea. It's always good to try new flavors, then I'll get you to some whiskey you haven't tried yet. Something they haven't tried. I don't really remember, but... Ah, I don't think I've bought this one before. It's a domestic from K Company with a mountain on the label. Have the two of you tried this one before? I asked, pointing to the whiskey from K Company that I was wondering about. 
Let's see. Mm, I don't remember drinking this one, no. Eh, war god, yeah, I don't remember this bottle, then, I'll get this one. There's enough for one more. Ah, this American whiskey with the rose on the label seems new. What about this one? Hmm, <laughs> I also do not remember seeing this one. Right, yeah, we haven't drunk this one great, then this one it is. Hmm, <laughs> they can just barely afford one more of the cheap ones. This American one with the yellow label fits into the budget, and I probably haven't bought this one either. This will be the last one. Do you guys remember drinking this? Yeah, I don't remember this one me neither great, then this is the last one. Then that's it for all of them. I lined up all the offerings on the usual cardboard altars. Please everyone, accept your offerings. After saying that, the items on top of the cardboard altars all disappeared. I heard the gods all running for their items and raising a fuss over them. Ha, huh, it's over. Let's just go and sleep. When I tried to leave the room with that in mind, I heard a throaty voice. Right, you what's up with your level, this is Hephaestus' voice, right? What's up? I don't think it's changed since I haven't fought at all since the last time we talked. Mn, is that right, all my familiars are strong, so there's just no room for me to do anything. Ah, but I'm going to be trying something tomorrow, so there might be a little combat. Tomorrow we plan to exterminate the evil plants, and I had a small plan about that. Oh, I see I see. Do your best, you hear, um, I don't think I'll be gaining any levels just be fighting a little tomorrow, though. Hey wait a second, didn't we all agree to not force me into raising my level? Well, since you're so adamant about it, we won't say anything, but you should still try to raise your level a little. It's your life on the line if. Your skills are dull when the chips are down this voice is Vahan, right? Well. He does have a point. I've been leaving combat entirely up to Fell and the others, but if I can't protect myself when the chips are down, then that's just putting the cart before the horse. Well, just do your best for now. Take care after Vahan's parting words, I heard the snapping sound of the connection being cut. Ha, huh, it's probably about the tenants, but just with the evil plant extermination tomorrow, you know? It's not like my level will raise all willy-nilly like that. Ha, huh, well tomorrow will be busy. Let's just sleep. At that time, in the Divine Realm. Did you hear? War God. Yeah. They'll be fighting tomorrow. Gah ha 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 ha. I wonder how much he'll level up. It's exciting, no. Ah ha 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 ha. You got it. He has that skill that we sneakily put on him, after all. Double experience gain, eh? Right. Gah ha ha. Ah ha ha. Gah ha 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 ha. Ah ha 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 ha. Chapter 6 Request from the Guild Master of Nijhoff. We had arrived in the western forest in order to fulfill our request to exterminate the evil plants. According to Joran, this forest will have a huge outbreak of evil plants every decade or so for some unexplained reason. And apparently, the outbreak this year was especially large, right? If there's really that many it might be best to split into two groups and exterminate them faster. Fell, where are all the evolved ones gathered? They are pretty spread out, but they are more common deeper into the forest. Deep in the forest. If that's the case. It seems like there's a lot of them this time around, so let's split into two groups. Can I get Fel and Dorachan to take care of the deeper parts? Understood. Got it, if the deeper sections had more evolved forms, then it would be best to have Fel and Dorachan take care of those. Sui, you're with me? What, but Sui wants to go pew 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 and beat up lots too, Sui had a powerful skill in the form of Acid Bullet, but compared to Fel and Dorachan, its stats were the lowest. I decided to have it stick with me and take care of the shallower parts of the forest. Even though Sui was the weakest compared to Fel and Dorachan, it was still clearly stronger than me. I was planning to have Sui work as my bodyguard. You can go pew pew all you like. It would just make me happy if you stayed with me. I'm the weakest one here, so Sui needs to protect me. I'm counting on you. Got it. Sui will protect Master, this time, I had something I wanted to try, so I planned to fight. I have perfect defense, so I don't think I'll die, but it's not like I'm used to. Combat, either. I'll feel much better with Sui here. Fel, I'll give you the magic bag. I hung the magic bag around Fel's neck. According to the guild master, Joran, evil plants start to wither immediately after dying. C-ranked evil plants don't leave anything behind, but the evolved giant evil plants are B-ranked, so there were cases where they leave behind magic stones. Fel, Dorachan, it looks like there are a lot of the evolved giant evil plants, so if they drop magic stones, pick them up and put them inside. Joran did say they would pay for the magic stones. I understand. 
Let us go, Dora. Yeah. Fel and Dora Chan proceeded further into the forest. On the other hand, I. Heh <laughs> heh, it'll be great if this works, I took out an anti-evil plant weapon from inside my item box, that weapon was herbicide. My online supermarket had a gardening supplies section, and I looked for it because it seemed like it'd be there. And when I checked this morning, it really was in stock. And on top of that, they even had several kinds of both the concentrated solution type and the spray type. I chose a spray type from among those. It seemed to be light and easy to use, and it was described as, kind to the environment, since it used compounds derived from food. Also, it said that it only affects what is sprayed, allowing one to only get rid of weeds they aim for, so it seemed perfect for the evil plants this time. I tried appraising it, and this is what came out. Herbicide a spray type herbicide from another world. Kind to the environment. What I wanted to test was whether or not this herbicide would work. It's a plant type monster, so it seemed like it would. If it does, it'll become a powerful weapon for whenever a plant type monster shows up. Good Sui, let's go. Yeah. Sui and I headed into the forest. Master a weird one came, it was an evil plant, just as Joran described, basically, a bug eating Venus flytrap that looked like a clamshell with serrated edges. Only it was almost two meters tall, and had vines or something growing out of its stalk that moved freely, and its roots wriggled around endlessly, allowing it to move freely even though it was a plant-based monster. Sui, that's an evil plant. We're going to defeat it. Got it. Then Sui will do it. Pew 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 asterisk Sui's acid bullets hit right on the mark, and the evil plant withered away. Good job, Sui. Ehehe. <laughs> A-H-H, there. Master, there are lots of those wriggly things. Like before coming, following in the direction Sui's tentacles pointed, I noticed ten or so evil plants approaching us. Oh my, that is a lot of them. Looks like it wasn't joking when it said there were a lot of them. A-H-H, there's a lot of them, aren't there? Sui, let's go. Yeah. Sui will go pew pew lots and beat those weird wriggly grass things, Sui, in high spirits, started shooting acid bullets at the evil plants. Great, I need to get in there too, W with my anti-evil plant weapon, some Japanese made herbicide. Take this. SSHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHH
Yeah, I'm fine, just a little tired. Still, it's amazing that you're still fine after beating so many, Sui. Even though Sui should have fought and defeated even more evil plants than I did, Sui still seemed to be full of energy as it continued to bounce around everywhere. Ehehe, <laughs> Sui is still full of energy. Sui can still beat more and mooter of those weird wriggly grass things Sui and I kept beating one evil plant after the other as they assaulted us. Evil plants did tend to gather together, but there really was no end to them. Most likely, I alone probably took care of over a hundred of them. And among those, there were even ten giant evil plants. Even though I just sprayed them with herbicide, I was understandably still tired. When I ran out of the herbicide that I had prepared halfway through, as one would expect, I started to panic. I somehow managed to get over the issue by hurrying to buy more, though. Still, though. Looking around, the ground was laden with withered husks of evil plants. Looking at the sheer number of corpses, it seemed like Sui beat about double what I had to deal with. I looked over at Sui, who was still bouncing around. It doesn't look like it at all, but Sui really does have a lot of fighting power. Hmm? Wait. Master, no, it's nothing. I was just thinking that Sui is amazing for beating so many. Hehe, <laughs> Sui is amazing, yeah, Sui is amazing. Hehe, <laughs> Sui is so happy, Sui happily started to bounce around me. Ah, right, Sui. Can you go find the magic stones and bring them over? The giant evil plants are B-ranked, so there should be some with magic stones in them. Joran did say that the guild would buy what magic stones I got. Magic stones. Do you mean those smooth rocks, right, those smooth rocks that come out when you beat monsters? Evil plants wither away when they die, so any magic stones should just be lying on the ground where they perished. Got it dot, I'm counting on you. I had Sui gather up the magic stones while I took a breather, of course I was tired after today's events. I've been basically leaving fighting entirely up to everyone else, after all. When fighting monsters, you can't lose focus for even a moment. Not only that, but today there were a lot of them, and Fel, my guardian god, wasn't around, either. That really does make a difference to my mental state. Vahan did say, it's your life on the line if your skills are dull when the chips are down, and he really was right. Maybe I'll try to participate in battles when I can from now on, if even only a little. Of course, I'll only be participating, though. If I'm going to be getting in the way, I'll just stay quiet on the sidelines. Master Sui picked them all up, oh, thanks. I took the 16 magic stones that Sui handed me. If there were still 16 when we weren't guaranteed to get one, that meant that. There must have been quite the number of giant evil plants around. They really did just pop up in huge numbers, like weeds. While all that was going on, Fel and Dorachan came back. How was it? Mm, there were a lot of them. Yeah. They weren't strong at all, but their numbers. Also, evil plants gather towards anything that moves. They kept coming and coming, it was almost oppressive how many of them there were. Of course, we took care of all of them though, it looks like there were a lot of them on Fel and Dorachan's side, too. Dora and I eliminated all of them, so there is no need to worry. So there are none left. Indeed. Just what I'd expect. According to Joran, given the numbers, it was impossible to expect a complete extermination. There were still evil plants around even in normal times, so it would have been fine as long as we whittled down their abnormally large numbers. Sui and I beat everything that was around here, are there any left? Wait a second. No, it does not seem like it. Hmm, <laughs> there are no evil plants in this forest anymore. I see, that's good. Then that means we're finished with the request. I felt a little relieved that it was over safely. What? It's already over? Sui wanted to go pew pew and beat more, ahh. Looks like Sui's still full of energy. A-H-H, Sui, there's still one more monster elimination request to do, so you can go pew pew then. Got it Sui will do Sui's best dot. Cyclops, I'm sorry but please be the target of Sui's acid bullets. Ah, uh, Fel, Dora-chan, did you pick up the magic stones? Yes. Of course taking the magic bag off of Fel's neck and checking inside, I found 50 magic stones. Just how many of them did Fel and Dora-chan beat? Now then, we finished the request, so let's get out of this forest and eat. Indeed, I am hungry. Food. Food dot. Sui's stomach is empty, storing the magic stones and magic bag into my item box, I left the forest along with everyone. After having some food, we were all lazily taking a break. By the way, our meal was some of the stuff I'd made when we left Dolan. I used most of it during our travels, but there was just a bit left of each dish, so I just brought them all out. So we had stuff like carriage, hamburg steaks, and gyoza. 
it was a meal full of variety. All three of them were happy with all the variety they had to choose from. It was all leftovers from the stuff I'd made and stored for later, though. Among those, I had some ground meat and tofu along with some rice. The flavor was soaked through, so it was good. Ah, right. As a reward for everyone working hard, let's have some dessert. I want to eat something sweet too since I'm so tired, after all. Everyone did well this time, so let's splurge. I opened Fiumi Ya's menu in my online supermarket. It's gotta be this for Fel. I picked out Fel's favorite, the strawberry shortcake, this time I got a large sized whole cake. Fel will probably be happy with this size. And of course, it's gotta be pudding for Dora Chan. I picked out a pudding assortment meant as a gift. It had custard pudding, caramel pudding, and mango pudding in sets of 4 each, for a total of 12. Dora Chan should be satisfied with this since he likes pudding so much. Thinking of Sui, it really likes chocolatey things, right? So what I chose was a chocolate cake. It also seemed like Sui liked strawberries, so I got one that had strawberries on top. I made it the same size as Fell's, a whole large sized cake. Sui should be happy with this, too. What should I get? I schemed through the lineup of cakes. Oh, that looks refreshing. Good, let's go with this one. I chose a seasonally limited Shiratama cream and Mitsu jelly. After checking out the cart, the usual cardboard box appeared. Take the cakes out, good. Hey everyone, come over. All three of them gathered around in response to me calling out to them. Everyone did their best today, so here. I served everyone their reward. Mm, this is big. Can I really eat this? Fell tried to act like it was nothing, but his tail was wagging furiously. Oh. This is pudding? There's so many, Dora Chan flew in circles joyously. Wah. What a big cake, Sui frolicked around, bouncing all over the place at high speeds. Today, everyone did their best and exterminated an amazing amount of evil plants. So this is a special reward. You can eat it. As soon as I said that, Fell and Sui bit into their cakes. A-H-H, Fell's mouth is all sticky with cream. Sui also happily engulfed the chocolate cake. Ah, Dora-chan, which one do you want? There's three flavors. This one's a custard pudding, this one's caramel pudding, and this one's mango pudding. Yeah, all of them. You're going to eat all three kinds. Of course I will fine, fine. I opened all three types of pudding, plated them, and served them to Dora Chan. So good. It's all delicious, but this orange one is the best. Seems like he prefers the mango pudding, huh? It was decided for me to hold on to the rest of the puddings, and serve them after dinner. Nice, nice. Everyone's eating happily. Now then, let's try this Shiratama cream and Mitsu I got. It's been a while, but this is really delicious. It wasn't too sweet, so I could just keep plowing through it. Colorful fruits and white cream, and also chewy Shiratama dango and sweet agar jelly, along with a combo of red bean paste, black sugar, and honey. I wonder why this is so amazingly good. Whoa, that was delicious. Fel and Dora-chan must have been satisfied, as they were both licking around their mouths. Sui also seemed satisfied, and was already sleeping soundly in the usual bag. Well then, let's go back to town. Indeed. Yeah dot we, who had finished exterminating the evil plants, went back to town. Just like that. After returning to Nijhof, we headed for the Adventurer's Guild. When I showed the receptionist my guild card, I was led straight to the guild master's room. Oh, that was fast. The one who said that was the guild master of this town, who looked like a mountain hermit, Joran. Yes, everyone did their best. For us, something like evil plants are not much of an enemy, said Fell. Fuh ha 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 Is that so? True, it might not be a big deal when you set a Fenrir, a pixie dragon, and a special slime to the task, eh. Joran, that must mean that you've been hearing a lot of stuff from the other guild masters, if you know that Dora-chan is a pixie dragon and that Sui is a special slime, right? Ah, well I did participate in that battle, you know, a little. At least in name. Still though, there really were a surprising amount, even though we already knew about the sudden large growth of them. It seems this time there really were a lot of them. Thanks to that, it's been hard going trying to exterminate them all. So you all ve really saved us by taking this request. You'd need to gather quite a whole lot of adventurers if you planned to exterminate that many, after all. Well, since it was us, we managed to do something about it though. A-H-H, right. We also have quite a few magic stones, although they're all small. Is it alright to bring them out here? Oh, I see I see. Come on, show them to me. 
I dumped the giant evil plant's magic stones onto the table. Sui and I managed to get 16 from what we defeated, and Fel and Dorachan managed to get 48 when I counted them. It was a total of 64 stones. Giant evil plants were only B-ranked monsters, so their magic stones were extremely small. This is just judging from the stones I've seen so far, but compared to stones like what I got from the dungeon, it didn't seem like their quality was very high. They're small, but it's great to have this many. Hmm, <laughs> how about 4 gold for each one of them? So he'll buy them for 4 gold each, huh? I'd expected they'd be cheaper. Of course it was all fine with me. Yes, that'll be fine. Okay then, I'll pay that along with the reward for exterminating the evil plants, so wait a second, won't you, Sonny? With those words, Joran left the room, and came back after a little while. Sorry for keeping you waiting. The reward for exterminating the evil plants this time is 430 gold. And the price for their magic stones will be 256 gold in total. All in all, that's 686 gold. According to Ugal and Dolan, paying you in large gold coins is fine with you, is that right? Nice job, Ugal. Regular gold coins are too bulky and unwieldy, so this is better for me. Yes, large gold coins will be fine. Okay then, that's 68 large gold coins and 6 gold coins. Please confirm it. 1, 2, 3. Yep, that's 68 large gold coins and 6 gold coins. Yes, the amount is correct. Indeed. Sorry, but I'm counting on you for the case with the Cyclops whenever it's convenient for you lot. Sure. There was also a request to kill a Cyclops, right? But even we wouldn't be able to get on that right away. Let's see, it would be best to take tomorrow to rest, and then go the day after at the earliest, I think. We will be going to fight the Cyclops tomorrow, Fel said, suddenly. Wait Fel, what are you saying? Tomorrow. Personally I'd rather spend tomorrow resting, though. Indeed. The evil plants only had numbers going for them, and they were completely tasteless as far as enemies go. Tasteless, you say? I agree. It's true that the evil plants yesterday didn't offer any sort of challenge et to, Dora-chan. Weary fighting? Sui will go pew pew and beat them, Sui, who had at some point crawled out of the bag, seemed motivated. Ha, <laughs> looks like everyone's just full of energy. Looks like everyone's ready and raring to go for some reason, so we'll go fight the Cyclops tomorrow. Ha, huh, that's great for us, but are you sure you're okay going back to back like that, Sonny? Yes, it seems like everyone else is fine, after all. They all just have way too much energy. Well, unlike the evil plants today, it doesn't look like the fight with the Cyclops will have any room for me to participate, anyway. I'll just leave it to everyone else. I see, then I'm counting on you all. Right. And so, it was said that we would be going to fight the Cyclops tomorrow. Ha, huh, they've all got way too much energy on their hands. Let's just hurry up and go home, eat, and take our time soaking in the bath to try and shed this tiredness. I couldn't really be bothered with dinner so I just made yakiniku bowls, which would be fast and easy. Everyone loved this one, anyway. In exchange, I used earth dragon meat for the first time in a while. Just as I remembered, earth dragon meat was really delicious. Everyone happily chowed down. After dinner, Dora-chan, Sui, and I went to take a bath. I bought a hot springs bath additive and used it. It was the milky white clouded hot spring type, it basically had no fragrance at all, but somehow, it seemed nicer to my skin. Hui, <laughs> my muscles that had gone all stiff slowly unwound. The bath sure feels nice. Yeah, it's the best dot. The bath feels nice. Dora-chan and Sui were once again floating around in the milky white waters. Yeah, baths are great. We slowly and leisurely enjoyed our bath to the fullest. After getting out of the bath, I was taking a small break on the sofa in the simply huge living room. I chugged down a sports drink in order to rehydrate. Dora-chan and Sui had fruit milk. This tastes really good drinking it after a bath it's cold and sweet and delicious. It seemed like both Dora-chan and Sui liked the fruit milk, as they were also chugging it down. Mn, that is unfair. Fell came into the living room. Apparently he got impatient and came down since we wouldn't go up. Do you want some, Fell? Indeed. I poured some fruit milk into a deep dish. Hey, I still have pudding left over, right, said Dora-chan. He's talking about that assorted pack of puddings I got for him after lunch as a reward, right? Yeah, you do. Then give me three of them after I plated one of each of the flavors and served them up, Dora-chan dug in, making it look really delicious. I am so jealous, Sui muttered, seemingly envious of Dora-chan. TCH. Fine then already. Hey, give some to Sui and fell too wow, 
I never expected that to happen. Looks like Dorachan's sharing his favorite pudding. Not only that, he was sharing with Fel too, not just Sui who looked like it wanted some. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, Sui and Fel are friends, after all. You're also my friend even if you're also my master, so I don't mind sharing some with you too, you know, hee hee, Dorachan seems all spiky, but he's really a nice guy, isn't he? No, I'm fine. I'm happy you feel that way, though. Thanks. Dorachan must have gotten bashful over what I said, as his tail started to fidget back and forth. I took another set of three each for Fel and Sui, plated them, and handed them out. Here, Dorachan said it was okay to share. Make sure you thank him. Yeah, I, I. Dorachan, thanks, indeed. Thank you for this, Dora. Both Fel and Sui thanked Dorachan and started on their puddings. Dorachan, the pudding's delicious indeed. This one is also pretty good. Heh <laughs> heh, right? It suited my tastes, after all. Of course it's good it's nice that my familiars are so close. Watching everyone is giving me the fuzzies. Oh yeah, the cyclops we're going to beat tomorrow is a one-eyed giant, right? What kind of monster is it? A cyclops is huge, but it is also slow. When I asked about cyclopes, Fel answered. Fel, have you fought a cyclops before? Yes. Several times. Of course, I won every time. He said, as if it was a matter of course. I he won against them, too said Dora-chan. Apparently Durakans also fought Cyclopes before. You know, Cyclops are strong and tough cause they're so huge, but just like Fel said, they're all really slow. So if you attack first and land a really good blow they'll all go down in one hit attack first and land a really good blow, huh? You say that like it's easy, Dora-chan, but normally one wouldn't be able to do that, I think. Indeed, it is as Dora says. Those things are slow, so it is probably best to just attack it first and defeat it before it manages a counter-attack. So in other words, exactly the same as we always do. Just attack first and attack a lot, right? Yep, looks like I won't be doing anything tomorrow. Sui will also go pew pew, yeah, yeah. So tomorrow when we find the one-eyed giant everyone will attack it at once. Is that right, Fel? That's what he means by attack first and attack a lot, right? Indeed. As soon as we find it, we will defeat it. Yeah dot. Sui will work hard, everyone's raring to go, I see. Looks like the Cyclops is gonna go down fast tomorrow. I'm starting to feel just a little sorry for the Cyclops that's gonna take all this violence, since he's gonna go down without even being able to fight back. I whispered a short prayer for a Cyclops I haven't even seen yet. We had come to the excavation site in order to defeat the Cyclops. The site must have previously been a mountain, as the site looked like it had been shaved away into steps. Stealthily peeking into the site. It's there. So that's a cyclops, the cyclops, which probably approached 4 meters in height, was strutting slowly around like it owned the place. It's as big as always, huh, said Dora-chan, looking at the cyclops. However, it is just big. It is still slow. It is not worthy of being my enemy. Let us hurry and defeat it. Dora, Sui. Ah, wait a second. I stopped Fel just as he seemed about to run off. MNN, what? Fel seemed a little dissatisfied at me stopping him right before he was about to dash off all cool. It looks like the Cyclops hide is some sort of material, so can you try to kill it without damaging it as much as possible? According to what I heard from Joran, the materials to be gained from a Cyclops were its hide, its eye, and a magic stone since it's A-ranked. Joran told me that he'd really like to buy its materials, if possible. Without damaging it, you say? Hmm. <laughs> it's fine if you think it's too hard. Of course it is not hard. Understood. I will attempt to defeat it without damaging it as much as possible. I must have hit his pride, since Fel immediately announced that he would attempt to not damage it. Dora, Sui, you were listening, right? We will be defeating that Cyclops without damaging its hide. We are going. Sure. Yeah, when Fel jumped out first, Dora-chan and Sui followed him. I would just be in the way, so of course I sat back and watched. Go on. <laughs> The Cyclops noticed Fel and the others, and raised its leg to try and squish them under its huge, fat foot. Blam, in the span of one breath, or rather, in just a moment, the Cyclops' foot came crashing down. Yeah, it really is slow. Fel and Dorachan said as much, but it turns out they weren't lying. At that speed, it won't even scratch any of them. Bow. Fel cried out, and jumped up after an approach. And he used the Cyclops' arm as a stepping stone to climb all the way up to its head. Snap Fell, who jumped all the way up, 
shot electricity from his front paw, and hit the cyclops directly in the cranium. It was like someone took a powerful stun gun right to the head. Go <laughs> Painfully, the cyclops screamed out and fell to its knees. Then, Dorachan used its small body and quick movements to close in on the cyclops. He got in close, and... Boom, Yahoo! I aimed right for the heart and had it eat some lightning, baby. D. Dorachan, hitting a properly working heart with electricity will. What a heartless attack. G.H. Go, the cyclops hunched forward, clutching its heart in at death's door. Sui is next, along with Sui's voice came an acid bullet shooting out of its outstretched tentacle. Pew the projectile of acid came shooting out at high speeds, and pierced through the cyclops' gut. G.H.H., ah. Thud. The hunched over cyclops, having died just like that, fell over sideways. And the cyclops' disposal is complete. Hmm, <laughs> that was good work. Ha ha, we did it. It's no biggie when we're on the job, yai. We did it, fell, as if to say it was only natural, nodded his head. Dorachan was flying circles with the smuggest look on his face. Sui was happily bouncing around, fast. Still, that was really anticlimactic. I expected that, though. It took some shocks straight to its brain and heart, and died to having its gut pierced through, huh. That was a grand way of dying, but well, when I... Think of how many of the people who worked here were killed by it, I guess the thing deserved it. I headed to meet up with everyone. Wow, nice work everyone, to kill it so quickly. For us, this thing is worthless as an opponent, said Fell, looking extremely smug. Treating an A-ranked Cyclops as worthless, huh? You know, if any adventurer who put their blood, sweat, and tears into ranking up heard you, they'd cry. Well, if all three of them teamed up, it seems like even a huge flying dragon would go down easily, though. And in reality, Fell already did hunt down an earth dragon. According to Elrond, who loves dragons, huge flying dragons include red dragons, and black dragons. Rumors say that they're incredibly violent on top of being S-ranked, but with the team combination between these three, it'll probably be fine. Well, from what I've heard there's not really many of them at all, so we'll probably never meet one though. Now then, let's store this cyclops. Giving the cyclops a once-over. I found a slight burn where Fell hit the Cyclops' head with electricity, and one more on the chest where Dorachan hit it. The part in the gut where Sui hit it with an acid bullet also had a hole around 2 centimeters in diameter. That meant that the Cyclops' hide was basically spotless. Wow, they actually listened to what I said. I shut the Cyclops' corpse into my item box. What now? This all ended really quick, so we could just head back to town. It ended quickly, so the sun was still at its highest point. No, we eat before we go back. I am also hungry. Sui is also hungry. Ahh, is that right? Well, it is about time. Okay then, let's eat here before going back. Wait, we went through everything I had pre made, what should I do? I checked what was inside my item box. There's only some steamed rice. And of course, meat. Rice, 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 meat, meat, meat. Ah, let's do that. What I thought of, when looking through all the meat and rice, was meat wrap rice balls. It was easy and tasty, and perfect for eating outside, in my opinion. In my case, I used Yakiniku Terra's flavoring when making meat. Wrap rice balls. It was simple, and most of all, delicious. This time, let's make three kinds with orc, bloody horn bull, and wyvern meat. It might also be nice to use several different kinds of Yakiniku Terra. If that's the case, I'll have to buy the Terra first. Open the online supermarket. And the first thing I got was the usual long-selling one I always used. This was the only one I wouldn't compromise on. Since making it sweeter would probably fit meat wrap rice balls better, I chose a sweeter version. And also. Oh, this is good. It was a Yakiniku tear from a famous chain of Yakiniku places, and it was also on the sweeter side, so it seemed like it would go well with the dish. It would be nice to have about one more. Oh, let's go with this one. I chose a sweet Yakiniku tear from a maker famous for their soy sauce. I'd tried the medium spicy version of this one, and it was pretty good. Lastly, I got some white sesame to sprinkle on top, and that's all. Now then, let's get to making these meat wrap rice balls. First, cut each of the three meats orc, bloody horn bull, and wyvern thinly. One might end up cutting a piece too thick, or run out in the middle, but that only gives the dish charm. Even as I am. Ever since I came to this world and since I've been cooking for Fell and the others, I've gotten much better with my knife skills. While I was at home, I still cooked, but in the end that was all for myself. Compared to that, 
I've started to also have speed to my knife work. Once the meat is cut, next is the rice. Grip the rice to make the general shape. Since this is for fell and the others too, I make them a little bigger than usual. Once the shape is done, wrap the meat around it. This time, wrap it up completely so that no rice is showing. Leaving rice showing could allow the whole thing to collapse, so it doesn't matter how many pieces of meat it takes, what's most important is to make sure it is completely wrapped. Oil up a heated frying pan, and start cooking the meat wraps starting with the tips on the bottom. Once that part of the meat wrap is properly cooked, start rolling it around to cook the rest of it. Once the whole thing has cooked, coat with the tear, and once the tear is cooked on it's finished. Put the finished meat wrap rice balls on a plate, and lastly sprinkle some white sesame on. Top. He, it's done. As soon as I called out to them, they were already gathered. Here you go. I placed dishes with the meat wrap rice balls in them in front of everyone. I smell the usual tear from when you cook meat. GH. As sharp as ever, fell. W well, I personally like the tear flavor, and it's convenient so I use it a lot. Ma on, I knew that I was using the yakiniku tear too much, but since it pairs well with meat, it always just ends up like this. Anyway, I got some different tear from the one I usually use this time, too, so cut me some slack. Let me see. MM. This is, so you wrap meat around that thing you call rice, I see. Oh, this is fairly easy to eat. And it is also tasty. With those words, Fell started to eat the meat wrap rice balls two at a time. Oh. So it's wrapped in meat, huh? It's great since it's so easy to eat. I like it Dora Chan scarfed them down while saying the same thing. The meat wrap rice balls are served in a very contained package, so it seems it's popular with both Fell and Dora Chan since it's so easy to eat. It's the same flavor as always, it goes great with meat, so Sui likes it, you think so too, Sui? Right? Doesn't Yakiniku tear just go great with meat? Up until now, I've been using the same long-selling Yakiniku tear due to my own tastes. However, I cook meat a lot now, so if I keep using the same thing, there'll be some fatigue no matter what, huh? Now, I can choose spicier things, or even stuff that holds down the sweetness for it, there's lots of different kinds of Yakiniku tear so it might be nice to try them. I can get all kinds through my online supermarket, so let's do just that from now on. More. 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 They were fast with that today. Might be because it's so easy to eat. I cooked up some more meat wrap rice balls for them. This time, I used the tear from that famous chain of Yakiniku places. Here. Everyone started chowing down again. Mn, this one tastes slightly different. Oh, so Fell noticed. I used a slightly different tear than usual. How is it? Yes. This one is also not bad. Yeah, this one's good, too. It's great, and it's got sort of a more savory flavor this one is tasty too. Looks like both Dora-chan and Sui like it too. Let's see, I should try one as well. Oh. It's pretty damn good. It's got a rich flavor. It said that it had dark roasted sesame seeds in it, so that fragrance must accent it nicely, huh? After that, Fel and Sui had several more helpings before mealtime was over. I also made some rice balls using the sweeter type of tear from that maker that's famous for its soy sauce, and it was also delicious. Salty sweet really is just the best flavor for meat wrap rice balls. He, give me pudding. Dora Chan, who finished a little earlier, was the one who said that. Oh yeah, I promised two desserts a day and he hadn't eaten one in the morning yet, had he? Give me something sweet as well. Sui too, they must have started to want something sweet as well, as both Fell and Sui also asked for dessert. If that's the case, let's make it three this time since they've beaten the Cyclops today and everything. Okay then, since everyone beat the Cyclops today, you guys can have three just for today. When I said that, Dora-chan and Sui cheered loudly. Fell also seemed vaguely happy. What do you want? I will have the usual white one. Of course, I'm going with pudding. Sui wants all different ones, Fell wants the usual strawberry shortcake and Dora-chan wants the pudding, and as for Sui, it's different cakes, huh? I opened the now familiar Fumi Ya menu in my online supermarket. So it's three strawberry shortcake slices for Fell and pudding for Dora Chan, right? Hmm. <laughs> There's something called a pudding sundae, I see. Okay, the pudding sundae has strawberry. And banana so let's get that and the usual pudding for Dora Chan. For Sui, I got the seasonal melon shortcake and blueberry tart, and also a chiffon cake with chocolate cream on top. After plating the cakes, I served them out along with Dora Chan's pudding sundae, which came in a glass container that was pretty on its own, so I left it as it was. Here you go. Fell down an entire cake slice in one gulp and only said one word, delicious.
Looks like he really loves that strawberry shortcake. After Dorachan finished with his usual pudding, he started on the pudding sundae. He was using his front paws to dexterously hold up the glass container, sticking his snout into the container and using his tongue to lap up the dessert, while saying, this is great Sui, who loved sweet things, was also happily enveloping the cakes one at a time. It said that everyone was delicious, but Sui, who loved chocolate, also said, this chocolate cake is fluffy and really really delicious. While watching everyone happily down their desserts, I conquered a kin of coffee myself. It looked like everyone was just about done now, so it was nearly time to return to town. It's about time to go back. Indeed, you are right. Yeah, let's go. Once we're back let's get in the bath bath, just like that, we, who had finished defeating the Cyclops, returned to town. Ha, huh, that bath was great. Yeah, baths really are awesome. The bath felt good. After getting out of the bath, Dora Chan, Sui, and I were lazing around on the bed in our bedroom. Fel was already lying down on his futons. After a quick glance this way, Fel raised his head slowly. Mn. Sui has evolved, I see. What? Really? Let's see, since Fel said that Sui had evolved, I tried using appraisal on Sui. Name Sui age 3 months race huge slime level 1 HP 1582 MP 1556 attack 1548 defense 1553 agility 1581 skills acid bullet, potion creation, cloning, water magic, smithying, giganticize blessings blessing of the goddess of water, Rizalka, blessing of the god of blacksmithing, Hephaestozo, Fell was right, Sui evolved. It says huge slime now. Looking closely at Sui's stats now, Sui had a new skill, giganticize, it said. When I focused on that part, the power of my appraisal must have activated, as an explanation popped up. Giganticize. A slime's unique skill to become gigantic wow, that tells me nothing. I wonder how big it'll get when it uses giganticize. I'll need to test this out somewhere spacious. I'd planned to go to the Adventurer's Guild and report the defeat of the Cyclops tomorrow, but after that I was free so I'll just have Fel take us out to a wide open place outside of town then to try it out. Sui, it looks like you got a new skill when you evolved, do you know what it is? Hmm? Wait a second. Ah, yeah, Sui knows. It's like, Sui can become super huge dot super huge, huh? Just how big, though? Okay then, tomorrow after we go to the Adventurer's Guild, let's go see just how big you can get. Yeah, still, a huge slime, huh? Sui keeps on evolving but just what is the end step for slimes? Fel might know. Hey, Fel, it looks like Sui evolved into a huge slime, but will it keep evolving further? Most likely. The last form for slimes is an emperor slime. I have. Also once faced one down, and it was quite strong. E emperor slime. What a s strong sounding name. It has quite the magic resistance, you see. Half-assed magic attacks will not work at all. Not only that, but as long as part of its body remains it will quickly regenerate. Even I had a hard time with it. Ultimately, I put an end to it with my strongest lightning spell, though. It even caused Fell some trouble. Wow. Well actually, he still beat it in the end, didn't he? I wonder what kind of spell is Fell's strongest lightning attack? Whoa, I'm getting the chills just from imagining it. Given that Sui has evolved into a huge slime, most likely its next evolution will be an emperor slime. I have met several huge slimes, only one emperor slime. That is because most slimes get weeded out before then. There really are only an exceedingly rare few that get to evolve that far. That's true. Slimes all start off really weak, after all. However, according to Fell, Sui's already just one step away from its last evolution, becoming a huge slime, at only three months old. That's amazing. Wait, AHH, the other world trash. The trash from the stuff I get off of my skill piles up, and I have Sui take care of it at regular intervals, that must be why. It's also been fighting a lot of monsters, so it all must help Sui level up really fast. WW well, it's not bad that Sui's getting so strong. However, if it is already a huge slime, then it might be hard for it to level up from now on. Huh, really? Indeed. I already told you that it becomes harder to level the higher level you are, yes? Just like that those who have evolved into higher rungs of their own race find it harder to level. I see. In the first place, do we also evolve? Out of all of us, Sui's the only one who's evolved so far. About evolution, do people also do that? No, humans do not evolve. Neither I nor Dora will, either. According to Fell, whether or not someone evolved or not depended on their race. 
people, Fenrirs, and dragon types did not evolve apparently. It seemed like the reason for that is that our forms were already something like a final evolution. In the first place, it seemed like almost no high-ranking monsters evolved in the first place. So, apparently, those that evolve and continue to get stronger are all those who are low-ranking monsters. And Sui, a slime, was originally the lowest rank, a slime. And it keeps evolving, and in the end it seems it will become an emperor slime. Orcs and such were the same, and apparently their progression was, Orc rightward arrow Orc leader rightward arrow Orc general rightward arrow Orc king. Although it seemed the environment also had an effect on how one evolved. I see. Ah, about evolution, at around what level does it happen? Level 100, I believe. It is said that evolution happens the moment one reaches level 100. I see. If that's the case, then Fel, who's lived over 1000 years is in his 900s, so the max level is probably 999, then. Since that's the case, does that mean that the maximum level for you, Dora-chan, and I is 999? Indeed. That is what is said. However. Hmm? Fell's being unusually quiet. What? No, it is just something of a legend amongst us Fenrirs, but it is said that there was one that passed level 999, and got over level 1000. It is said that that one lived over 10,000 years and, tired of the world, went searching for unknown worlds by crossing the ocean. What? Crossing the ocean? Wait a second, crossed the ocean? There's another continent besides this one. I told you that it was a legend. However, no one has seen that Fenrir. What? There's no one that's set off for a new continent or anything. Like Columbus, you know? You will just be sunk by the monsters in the sea, you realize? Do you think there is anyone stupid enough to do that? Ah, I see. This world has monsters. So it's not that easy. Well, it seems that you humans have discovered nearby islands and whatnot, though. Islands, huh? Well, since there's monsters around, I guess it's just too harsh to go into the deep sea. Still though, it wouldn't be surprising for there to be more continents other than this one in this world. Well, since there's no way to get there there's nothing I can do about it, either. Level 999 is still far away, but I have also gained a level. That is why I started appraising the others, because I wondered how they were. A-H-H, so that's how he found out that Sui evolved. Let's see, how is Fell now? Name Fell Age 1014 Race Fenrir Level 922 HP 10,019 MP 9,652 Attack 9,308 Defense 10,020 Agility 9,841 Skills Wind Magic, Fire Magic, Water Magic, Earth Magic, Ice Magic, Lightning Magic, Holy Magic, Barrier Magic, Rending Claws, Body Reinforcement, Physical Attack Resistance, Magic Attack Resistance, MP Efficiency, Appraisal, Battle Boost Blessings Blessing of the Goddess of Wind, Ninrir, Blessing of the God of War, Vahan is amazing a status as always. It's always been ridiculous, so just going up a little doesn't really make an impression. I had accrued some experience in the dungeon, after all. And after defeating so many evil plants, I probably finally leveled after today's Cyclops. In the end, dungeons really are best for gaining levels. I want to go to another dungeon. There are others in human towns, no? After we get to the sea we will go to a dungeon. No, no, don't just decide on your own like that. I'm already done with dungeons. I won't be going to one, got it? W well, we haven't even gotten to the sea yet, so let's just concentrate on that for now. I've got to somehow make that decision on dungeons ambiguous. If I don't, I really will get forced into finding another dungeon city after we get to Berlin. More importantly, if both Fell and Sui have leveled, doesn't that mean... That Dora-chan's also gained some levels. Indeed. Dora's level has most likely also raised. Dora-chan. Wait, he's asleep? Sui's gone too. While Fel and I were talking, Dora-chan and Sui had both fallen asleep. PFT. Wow, that's some sleeping posture. Do dragons always sleep like this? Dora-chan was sleeping belly up, exposing it to the world. His breathing was also heavy, sounding like, FFSSSSS. FFSSSSSS. Ah, he just scratched at his belly. There is no way a dragon would sleep like this. Dora is the only one. Pixie dragons are a rare race, and Dora is most likely considered strange even among them. In the first place, it is unthinkable for a pixie dragon to show itself to a human. At most, those who have seen one have done so only by coincidence. And this one was even the one to approach you. That means that Dora here is most likely considered quite strange amongst pixie dragons. Ahaha, 
Dora Chan's being treated like a weirdo. Well, that's been helping me out a lot, though. Fell, Dora Chan, and Sui make for the perfect tag team, they're invincible. Let's see, how's Dora Chan doing? Name Dora Chan age 116 race pixie dragon level 164 HP 1120 MP 3262 attack 3153 defense 1081 agility 3938 skills fire magic, water magic, wind magic, earth magic, ice magic, lightning magic, healing magic, bombardment, battle boost blessings blessing of the god of war, Vahano, it's gotten a little higher. Must be because he beat such a large number of evil plants. It was kind of amazing how many there were, wasn't it? Although it wasn't nearly as many as the others, even I put down a lot of them. Ah, oh yeah, I wonder what my level is now? It probably won't raise that easily, but given how many there were. Let's see. Name Makota, Tsuyoshi Makota, age 27 job victim from another world level 30 HP 324 MP 316 attack 294 defense 291 agility 270 skills appraisal, item box, Fire magic, earth magic, perfect defense, double experience gain, familiars, contracted magic beasts Fenrir, huge slime, pixie dragon unique skill online supermarket tenant Fumiya blessings blessing of the goddess of wind, Ninrir, small, blessing of the goddess of fire, Agni, small, blessing of the goddess of earth, Kisharl, small, oh. I don't know why but I gained a whole lot of levels. It must be because of all those evil plants I put down. Wait, hmm? I'm not quite sure how, but it looks like at some point I got a new skill. Double experience gain. Ha. Huh. HH huh? What's this? Since when did I get that skill? H hey, Fell, can you try using appraisal on me? I can. Okay, it is done. Do you see a skill called, double experience gain? Hmm. <laughs> Indeed, it is there. Is that a new skill? Yeah. It's a new skill, but I don't know when I got it. Why did I suddenly get this skill? Skills themselves increase or are gained in proportion to our experiences. Something probably happened that lead to your gaining that double experience gain skill. Really? I don't think I've done anything that would connect to that. I turned my focus back to the double experience gain entry. Double experience gain. Doubles experience earned. This skill makes gaining levels easier. Yep, right as it says on the tin. But why do I have it? It makes gaining levels easier. Ah. Those damn useless gods. They all know that I'll unlock my next tenant at level 40, so it must have been one of them that put it on me. Or, rather than one of them, they might all even be in on it. I know what happened. Those gods put it on me. See, didn't I say that my unique skill to obtain things from the other world leveled up? Yes, you did, as I recall. If I remember correctly, you also mentioned that you would be able to obtain more delicious cakes than before, no. That's right. So you see, the next time my unique skill levels up is at level 40. The gods know that, and have been telling me to level up, so most likely those gods gave me this, double experience gain, skill. Geez, why won't they just leave well enough alone? What are you saying? If that is the gods' wish, then you should be obeying them. What? Why am I the one being yelled at? Also, is it such a bad thing to have that skill, that, double experience gain? Rather, Having that makes it easier for you to gain levels so you should be rejoicing. A normal person would probably hand over their own soul for something like that. If you managed to get a skill like that you should be thankful. Ugh, now that you mention it. It's true that if I think about the double experience gain skill, it's not something that'll cause trouble. In fact, since I'll be gaining levels twice as fast as a normal person, there's absolutely no downsides. But still. I just can't let go of the fact that they decided to give it to me all on their own. Okay, next time I send them offerings I'll give them a good talking to. Extra, Makota's village revitalization. It's because you're you that I am asking you this, Sir Makota. Of course, I will reward you for your efforts. So please, please think of it as saving this village, and lend us your knowledge. The one bowing and scraping in front of me was the head of Mirala village. Just how did it come to this? In one of the towns I stopped by before I came here. I had heard that this place was famous for its honey, so all I did was decide to stop by because it was interesting. Stopping by with light feelings since I wasn't in any hurry on my travels or anything came back to bite me on the ass. The reason why the village chief was so desperate as to bow to me had to do with the honey that this village was famed for. In this world, honey was considered a luxury, but this land had always been abundant in greenery and flowers, and along with that came a large number of bees, 
So this place became known for its honey production, it seemed. However, once the Opatrani region that was located in the southern area of this country finally succeeded in their beekeeping, the situation turned around all at once. The honey from the Opatrani region carried the flavor and fragrance of the orange blossoms that were unique to that region, and suddenly became popular amongst nobles. And inversely, the sales of the honey here only plummeted. Indirectly, if one asked a merchant, they would all apparently say, right now, speaking of honey, the ones from the Opatrani region sell. And when it came to recent times, almost no merchants at all would come to stock up on honey. Since they also farmed at the same time, up until now they've somehow been able to survive, but I've been told that if by some chance their crops ever failed or they got a low yield, there were many families that would be driven to sell themselves off to slavery. And that's the village that we unwittingly visited. On top of that, since I bought a huge amount of the village's special honey that hadn't been selling recently, I was showered in attention. All three of my familiars were pretty fond of sweet things, and honey had many uses. And all of that just connected to me buying a lot. In the first place, I never planned to stay here for long. After getting the honey, I was about to leave the next day, but this time the village chief visited me. In the first place, why me? When I thought that, the village chief said, please, teach us some dish that we can use our village's special honey in. This village didn't have any inns, so we had asked the village chief to borrow an empty house outside of the village proper, and apparently that's how I was caught cooking. Not only that, but it was right when I was using the honey to cook. I had to prepare an enormous amount of food for Fell and the others, and I thought that it would be better to use the cooking utensils I was used to and that's why I was cooking in the yard. We were outside the village, so I figured I wouldn't so easily be discovered. At that time, I didn't know that this village was so troubled, and I would never have thought I was being paid so much attention by the villagers. But, in reality there were villagers that saw me cooking. And, having heard from the villagers that I was cooking something they'd never seen before using the honey, the village chief came to ask me that, begging and scraping, quite literally. And that was because, since honey was such an expensive thing, its most common use was to just eat it as is, or if one felt like being really luxurious, they would add it to their tea, apparently. But I was using it in cooking. The village chief, who heard that, set his eyes on that novelty. Our village's honey doesn't taste bad, you know? However, compared to Opatrani's honey, apparently, Everyone in the village once pooled together their meager resources and bought some of Opatrani's honey, and they were all stunned into silence at the taste. True to the rumors, Opatrani's honey had a wonderful fragrance and taste, and it was clearly several stages better than this village's honey, everyone in the village agreed. Given that, the village chief figured that just selling the honey like the village has been up until now wouldn't work, and so he started grasping for some sort of idea to get the merchants to buy their honey again. However, there was no way they would come up with an idea that quickly, so the village chief went to literally every merchant that had a connection to the village to somehow beg them to stock their honey, but he was coldly refused every time. It was at that time that we appeared. And not only did we appear, we even used honey in cooking, not in tea or by itself. And that was how the village chief discovered the possibilities of honey. If we can communicate that Mirala village's honey can be used like that, then I think we can gain an advantage. The village chief explained that by his estimation, the Opatrani region's honey was wonderful in both taste and smell, and thanks to that, the price of it could make someone faint just by hearing about it. Due to that fact, not even nobles could lightheartedly use it in cooking. The honey made in Mirala village was also expensive, but it was only about half so compared to that from the Opatrani region, so one could buy from Opatrani if they wanted to just eat the honey, but from the village if they wanted it for slightly luxurious cooking. Splitting the uses like that lent some weight to the village chief's logic. Also, according to the village chief, there are a lot of nobles that enjoy new things, too. And so, if they were to discover a new way of enjoying honey, there would be many who would want to try it out, and the village chief was expecting much out of that desire. So that being the case, Mr. Makoda, please. Please, lend us your knowledge, the village chief begged, bowing his head so low it was like he was praying to me. If he's going that far, just coldly refusing would be a little. Still though, I can't just teach the village what I made exactly as I made it. After all, I made teriyaki cockatrice using this village's honey. Since I used soy sauce bought with my skill, there'd be no way for this village to replicate it. So a dish using honey that can be made using only ingredients from this world, huh? Well, it doesn't have to be cooking, it can just be some way to enjoy it outside of just eating it or putting it in tea, right? I can think of several things, but I still want some time. Understood. I don't know if you'll be happy with it, but I'll try thinking of some things. When I gave that reply, the village chief started worshipping me, saying, Oh thank you, oh thank you.
No, no, please raise your head. No, this will save Mirala village. Thank you, oh thank you. Eeg. Save the village. You're making too big a deal out of this. And also, I'd really rather you not place so much expectation on me. With the village chief worshipping me the way he was, it didn't seem like I'd be able to talk to him, so I just said, please give me three days, and head. Him give me time to think my own way of something to use and enjoy honey with. Truly, thank you Mr. Makoda, for listening to my unreasonable request. After the promised three days, I went to visit the village chief. All three of my familiars were left minding the house with lots of food to eat. Since this crisis involves the village, I gathered people who are like the headsmen of this place. True to the village chief's word, there were eight old men and women around. Okay. I've thought of several things, so I think it would be best for everyone to try them so I can hear your opinions. Since I'd also be cooking, I had to borrow the village chief's house's kitchen, so we all moved there. Okay then, first is something simple. I'll be making a drink. What I'll need is a lemony fruit that I found here. It was exactly like a lemon, and in this world was used to clean a lot of different things. Apparently it was a fruit off of a short tree, and it was pretty common, in rural areas just about every house had a tree. As for this lemony fruit, I stopped by a neighbor's house before coming here and borrowed some. Other than the lemony fruit, it was just this village's honey and some water. Please wait a second. That's a lemony fruit, right? The older lady looked at the yellow lemony fruit and scrunched up her face. The villagers also started chittering, saying things like, isn't that a cleaner, and, it's probably not poisonous, but what are you even planning on doing with that thing? Uh, just like she said this is a lemony fruit. As you all know, this is very sour, and we will be using the fruit juice as sourness. Of course, it'll just be really sour with this, so we will combine it with this village's honey. The taste is. Well I'll be making it anyway, so it'll be faster if you all just drink it. After mixing together the honey and the lemony fruits juice, pour in some water to complete the honey lemon no, the honey lemony drink. When I tried a little as a taste test, the lemony s refreshing sourness and the soft sweetness of the honey felt good on the throat. Here you go, everyone. I poured it into cups and handed them out to the villagers. They all fearfully and hesitantly reached out for the cups. This is surprising. To think that that sour lemony would become something like this, said the lady who had previously scrunched up her face at the sight of the lemony, surprised. It's got an invigorating feel going down the throat, but the sweetness of the honey is properly there. It's delicious because the taste is so refreshing. I don't think I'll ever get tired of this. The impression of the villagers was all good. Honey lemon I mean, honey lemony was simple to make but really delicious to consume. It was perfect for slightly hot days like this. And lastly will be a meat dish that uses honey. It didn't seem like they were surprised since they'd probably heard that I had done this before, but it did seem like they were really interested in what was going to happen, as they were staring very fixedly. While thinking of something I could make with ingredients found in this world, I finally settled upon chicken ham. On top of it not taking too many ingredients, cooking it was simple since the only process was marinating the meat and then boiling it. First, I'll start explaining from the ingredients. We'll be using the breast of a cockatrice. We will also be needing salt, dried herbs to your liking, and honey. Okay then, I'll start cooking. After taking the skin off of the cockatrice's breast, open it up with a knife and flatten it out so it's of uniform thickness. Then, in order to help the flavor soak in better, start piercing holes into the meat with a fork. Then, take a mixture of the salt and finely ground dried herbs, or handmade herb salt, and rub it into the meat along with the honey, let the flavors soak in for about 30 minutes. Truthfully, it would be best to also rub in pepper, but pepper is far too expensive in this world, so I'm leaving it out this time. Since letting it soak for half an hour would take too long, I simply took out a piece I'd prepared earlier from my item box. Since time is short, I'll just be using something I prepared beforehand. By the way, the piece of meat I just rubbed the herb salt and honey into will be used to fill fell and the others' bellies later. Wrap up the meat into a rod shape before wrapping it in the skin of an orange frog and tying the ends off with some hemp rope. Orange frog skin was something that was used in this world to wrap things. At first, I didn't know of it, but the village chief told me about it when I asked him for something that would be used as a wrapping which was strong against heat. It was apparently the voice sack of an orange frog, a brightly colored frog that lived in and around rivers, lakes, and other bodies of water. At first, I was both surprised and disgusted hearing that it was the skin of a frog, but it seemed that it was thin, flexible, tough, strong against heat, and perfect for preserving food. If that was the case, then since the saying was, in Rome, do as the Romans do, 
I tried using it to make the chicken ham, and although it wasn't as light and easy as normal wrapping paper, it still worked pretty well. Take the meat wrapped in the orange frog skin and, I had asked the village chief's wife to boil some water in a pot already, so I put the flame to low, or rather, I took the pot off of the flame and dumped the meat in. After letting it boil for about 5 minutes, take the pot off of the flame, put on the lid, and let the whole thing simmer down until the water cools off. The heat should pass through the entirety of the meat slowly this way and that should finish the dish. So, this is the finished product. I took out the completed dish that I had done yesterday out from my item box. After unwrapping the orange frog's skin, I started cutting the meat apart. The faint smell of herbs stimulated the appetite. Try it. The villagers scarfed down the meat, seemingly full of interest. This is good. Soft. Delicious. This makes me want some alcohol. Came the positive reviews. It was popular enough that the villagers couldn't stop eating the chicken ham. All the villagers that tasted it gave it their stamp of approval, claiming that with this, they could be saved. The women were also excited, saying that, it's easy to make, let's go try it right now. The men enthusiastically talked about getting the merchants to try it and showing them the appeal of their village's honey. Thank you so much, Mr. Makoda. The village chief gripped my hands with his old and dry ones, and he had faint tears staining his eyes. With this, our village will be saved. Oh come on, you're making too big a deal out of it. You haven't even actually sold any honey yet. No, if they try these, the merchants will come running. That'd be great if it happened. Just like you saw earlier, honey can be used a lot of different ways. I think it'd be best if you all experimented on your own to find different ways of using it. The reward I received from the village chief was two gold pieces. Given the village's financial situation, they probably worked quite hard to come up with that much money. Still, I accepted it gratefully. And, I used all of it to buy more honey. That was probably better for the village, too. The next day, we, who had managed to obtain lots of honey from Mirala village, left said village behind. Half a year later. Makoda, I'm sharing this with you. Lambert, a merchant I had befriended, said this as he handed over a small pot. Inside was amber-colored honey, which gave off a sweet scent. This is honey from a village in the eastern region of the country named Mirala. Some of my merchant friends who deal in food have been pushing it recently, so I tried buying some. I had thought that, for honey, the stuff produced by Opatrina was the best, but the honey from this Mirala village is also pretty good. And it's interesting, I was told a lot of ways to eat this honey. Lambert started talking about all the ways he was told. And among them, the one Lambert liked the most was. Just smear a whole lot of honey on some lightly toasted bread. It's so. Lambert must have remembered the taste, as he started looking as if he was in a trance. I had completely thought that the only way to enjoy honey was to eat it or put it in tea. At first, I thought it was a huge waste to smear it on bread, but when I actually tried it, not only did it feel very luxurious, but it was just the most delicious thing. I didn't remember teaching the villagers about smearing honey on bread, so they must have invented honey toast on their own, huh? Nice. Going. Not only that, but they've got people this hooked. Good job. Also, you're way too into it, Lambert. You've been going on for forever about how good honey toast is. So anyway, it's a really delicious honey, so please try it. Thank you very much. I will. Since honey from Mirala has made it so far away to here, Carolina, that must mean that their village was saved. Personally, that makes me feel a little relieved. 